What was that? You on Twitch? No, I'm doing some dev works on the back end of a customer site, and yeah, then I might stream, but no, not right now. I'm sitting here running space, kind of listening to other spaces, but I had to turn it off for a bit. How you been, man? All right. <clears throat> Cool, man. So much for the Bitcoin ETF. Everyone's saying it's Bitcoin's gonna pump, and they did like an opposite. Yeah, I mean, I tried to warn these people, but you know, they call me a bear. They say I'm fun, and I'm like. Hey man, no one wants it more than me. You know, I don't want it to go down, but I know they have to to sell for them to buy stuff for the ETF. You know what I mean? And it seems like every January, it the price goes down. You know what I mean? We'll have to see what long term. Yeah, I mean. Hopefully, I mean, I don't want people to get wrecked, but hopefully it goes down so more people could buy in or, you know, people can double up, right? Yeah. yeah no doubt. Yeah, we'll still have to see how much capital runs into it over time from, like, the ETF. But even then, it's more kind of, like, um, I don't know, it just seems more that's like the GBT stock so how much capital will flow from the GBT stock to the actual Bitcoin itself, I don't know and I don't even really know much too much about the ETF type stuff, so It's not enough to really care to talk about it. I was listening to like a PNBC space or something, the poly guy. I guess he has been sued by Yugo Labs or something. You gotta pay like nine million. What's that? <clears throat> the poly guy from PNDC is gonna pay like him and this writer rips guy gotta pay like nine million dollars to Yugo Labs. No. Nah. Well I knew I knew something would come out of that, right? Because but um, he has a space right now. I don't even want to go in, man. I'm like, I've been over that guy since day three. He he got into his, you know, stick. So yeah, well, I guess he uh, yeah, he's gonna. Well, seeming like the recommendation is like pay nine million or something, but oh well, I don't know. Another thing I don't really know much about. I'm kind of bullish on runes, though, for the Bitcoin having. Yeah, that's cool. And I don't, I've never seen like, I, I've never seen a having like do much action for Bitcoin, to be honest. Um, like, yeah, I've never really seen a bull market come in because of having. 
if anything, it's a little more like even like more bearish because the rewards are cut in half and it's going to be like harder for miners to make a revenue mm. rather than or to sustain a revenue rather than actually make a revenue on a like 50% reduction in rewards. And Bitcoin's like, what is it? Bitcoin's like got like about 2 million left to be mined or something like that. So. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you were listening to Damien last night, you know, about Litecoin. And, but um, sometimes it, people would like open their minds a little bit, but people follow the what other people do, right? So. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. There is a lot innovative wise. You know, I've talked with. Uh, I'm in a Bitcoin startup lab. So Casey Red Armor, he talked this week in our lab. Uh, he was there. I was in a meeting with him. With Casey Red Armor, he talked a bit about runes. Um, actually, Charlie Lee, uh, Charlie Lee's brother Bobby Lee, was in our session. He was talking the other week as well, and Bobby Lee started the first Bitcoin exchange in China. I mean, he so he sold that off a while ago, and uh, he's doing like metal cold wallet storage cards and stuff. But um, I'm not sure if Charlie Lee is going to be on our session talking between now and March. But yeah, um, Litecoin's an interesting protocol. And actually, Charlie Lee and an, some other people have brought up the protocol for proof of activity, which is going to be how my blockchain uh, will be operating as an, in, a, in a proof of activity structure. But Litecoin's cool. Litecoin would, I think, besides Bitcoin, Litecoin would be like my go-to to do programmatic work on. I'm sure there's like light scriptions and stuff. I don't know if there are, but I know there's like Dotional, Dotionals. I'm not sure there's like yeah, yeah there's inscription ordinals, all that stuff. So that's yeah, what cool. the and you were trying to talk about last night. Um, I was kind of falling asleep. I was listening, but I was kind of like falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes we get pretty boring, but um. No, like the, the the price is cheaper to do it. There's tons of room. It's quick. It's you know, there's all kinds of good stuff about it. Um, but no, like no matter even if how alpha it is and how much we talk about it, it's like no one seems to care. So, but um, I think that there's a lot there. Um, and even as Bitcoin's going down right now, Litecoin's going up. And then the alts kind of come back, and then Bitcoin comes comes back. But um, with these ETFs, I have no idea what it's going to do, you know. But um, it seems to kind of follow a trend. So um, I'm just kind of glad Bitcoin is kind of over. But people will take their money out, and they don't trust the uh, alts, so they, they might go back into shitcoin. You never know, right? So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's not to say like a shit coin don't do well. I don't even know like what I know there's like Shiba Inu that's like a shit coin or something, but I don't know what that does. Uh, I know they've done like a variety of different things in the community, but other than that, I have no clue about like, the Shiba Inu thing, and that's kind of like a shit coin. Um, I think everything like kind of maybe starts with a shit coin if it's not like launching as its own blockchain. And even then, like Ripple, like still like what does Ripple do? Like it's almost like the the shit blockchain because <laughs> it yeah it I mean does she knew, we, don't, we don't know what it does. You know they kind of consider um, a meme coin now. Um, some of the shit coins that are like these. These people bring them out for a day or two. They go way up. They steal everybody's money and rug everybody. You know. Oh well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. That's not, so that's not true. So, that's not true so a this, more so. shit coin is like you got to know ahead <laughs> when it's going to pump rate right, and when to pull out. So shit coining does take some talent, you know. But um, a lot of people get discouraged because they think it's a real coin coming out. They're all about it. They don't do the homework. They don't do their research. They don't, you know. This coin never had an audit. It never had none of this stuff. 
and they're used to buying something and holding it right hot on it and it's not the way they work they they just rug people for their money and but like i said the people that shit coin every day they know but fortunately people go on these shows and they're like oh this coin okay hit the button don't know how to sell it back to weath and this and that and get stuck and it's, it's just kind of a shame but You know, it's, oh, you're talking about like I've seen those. I've seen those like things. I researched it and saw it, like people. There's like emergence of people getting stuck in honey pots or something where you could buy but not sell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what kind of happened to me with all the the first Pepe's. I didn't realize you had it. You could sell it as weath. Um, I couldn't sell it right even as ETH. Here, if I would have sold it as weath, it would have worked. But, um. You know, I sometimes you know that's why you only know, put a couple dollars in, right? Just to experiment and uh, you know find out the hard way, right? So that you yeah, know how to good, do it. That's a good thing to do. Um, unfortunately, there's people that you know put a lot of money into it. Like even me, a hundred dollars is a lot of money. So you know, I hate to see people get wrecked and leave crypto altogether because they're like, ah, fuck that shit, you know. Um, but some people they learn and get better and stay right so um yeah i participated in pepe and i participated in that pond thing but other than that i haven't done anything i just i i i can't like i can't i don't like have the time because i'm stuck developing shit yeah so yeah much. a lot of those, a lot of those kind of shit coins or new meme coins um um you can't go to sleep on it you know the pond coin you know the pond x uh you know mining it and it's like a video game slash gambling site for degeners you know so you know a lot of those guys oh i missed out i didn't get the points or this or that and well here if you use your phone it's quicker it, it acts better i don't know but I just kind of stay away from all that crap because i don't really care yeah um yeah i don't know what i don't really i again like i i kind of had the pond mining from the beginning and then i i just sold at the top and it never has seen that top again uh pepe sold at the top has never seen that top again um things like basie like just just like my friends still have bases and stuff and and like the ape coin and all that and they just hodled it, and they never sold at the top. And I was like, I would have been out of that so fast. I would have sold at the top. Mm-hmm. And if any, if anything, like I think if it was like if I see, I I got asked. I was like, hey, you want to like do bent bases with me? And I was like, no, nah, I'm all right. Like, um, I skipped the whole basey thing. But um, you know, they they're still living off of ape coin and stuff. But I, I um, again, like I just kind of I think I focused on like. Just, Looking at smart contract code, looking at blockchain structures. Uh, now I'm on Bitcoin Startup Labs, and we're building. My team and I are building an inscription tool for um, social inscriptions, and then we're kind of already preparing for runes for rune scaling on the having the Bitcoin. So, I don't know what's going on for shit coins. I know I'm. I've written two contract structures um, because the way I look at it is, and I'm not really here to show too much, but for starting a blockchain, um, I've seen like BNV coin or TRX, you know, they started as ETH tokens. And I saw the whole like thing with the pond and stuff like that. And some of the aspects of pond and, and now I don't really know where it's going. It looks like it's going on a spiral or something. But I do have an idea of people mining tokens um, to have working capital and then people burn their tokens to then in like a stage two, like mine the first kind of premises of a of a coin that will migrate into a blockchain. And then whatever's on mine will just take the unmined amount, pair it to the same amount that tokens were mined with ETH in the first stage one, 
and just pair it to the unmined amount of uh, coin on ETH uh, to Ethereum adjacently on like a, a Uniswap liquidity pool. And the remainder amount is just um, working capital and things like, you know, I go to fly to Hong Kong, I go fly to Canada, I go fly to Amsterdam for Bitcoin Magazine, with Boost Space, I go to Bitcoin Miami, I go to, you know, East Denver, and I just have to do the marketing thing, like the Crayola guys, you know, like part of our team has to stay home and produce crayons and the other part of the team has to go travel and market um, their crayon, so... Nothing's that's changed cool. throughout. Yeah, nothing's changed throughout history. It's just now we have nah, exactly yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah, you know, even if you have a burn mechanism or an airdrop, you know, some kind of difference in the yeah um, combining with ETH. I mean, I hear everybody wants to start there, um, and maybe combine or buy out later. But um, I've seen good projects work like that. Um, I've also seen projects projects not work like that. But um, <clears throat> But um, there's still a lot of projects that have been just sitting silent for a long time, too, right? I've seen come back. So. Um, a lot of it is marketing, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like as far as inscriptions go, I just kind of see the ETH being like so saturated with ETH inscriptions. And, um, and, and now, I mean, I guess you were in the, the, the show the other night with the. Were you on the. Uh, um, on the Bitcoin thing, um, with free wallet. Nope, no, I didn't. I didn't miss uh, that much. Time, I guess. Um, <clears throat> well, like free wallet's not working right now because they're on a fight. <clears throat> but anyway. Oh yeah. Oh, I uh, I heard like yeah, like exchange down yeah. or something. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. I think you're. I think you were in that show. Yeah, I was. Um, again, I was like kind of falling asleep. I was just kind of sitting like <laughs> the day and listening. But to um, I fall asleep. Yeah. That's only fucking up a couple people, but hopefully they fix it, right? But anyway, you know, um, that's why I think it's, you know, and you, you see everybody going over to Solana and doing that stuff. Uh, um, I stay away from but, Solana. Yeah, me too. But, you know, you see a lot of people probably going over there and because um, it was so cheap. But um, that's where I'm kind of sitting on Litecoin. Um because it's an underutilized protocol that's forked off of Bitcoin, you know. Um, I mean, even Doge is forked off of Bitcoin, but kind of like Litecoin. Because, like, I always looked at it when I started crypto, like, it went kind of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't think it gets enough recognition, but you know, I don't make anything off of it out here talking about it, right? But I just think there's a lot, a lot going on there that's un, underutilized and unseen. You would think more people would see it, but. Yeah, I mean, especially with the ordinals. I mean, I understand, okay, yeah, I want to have the first ordinals in there, but, you know, after 10 million, okay, <laughs> you're like, okay, you're just going to keep going. But, um, yeah, what, what my team and I are currently working on is, um, the, a lot of the issue is like, one, we're, we're not focused on like the, the products, like we shouldn't focus on product. We're more focused on uh, customer and their pain points. So our, our customer is like the angel user. So the angel user is like someone who needs to inscribe or is exploring, like, I'm not going to deploy on Ethereum. I'm going to go, I'm going to leave Ethereum. Um, I don't want to, I want to leave a Tezos to, as an artist or like an inscriber um, or a collection builder and go to Bitcoin. So our, our, so like basically through interviews, you know, we just ask them what's, what's the pain points that you're dealing with. And a lot of it is like the amount of steps and the, the like the steps to inscribe. And the second point pain point so far is like the cost to inscribe on Bitcoin. Like you can, you, they, they yeah. don't understand. Like, yeah. And the time. Like just yeah. the time waiting, and so I hear you yeah. there. Um, yeah. So so we're we are, what we're building like a tooling um, has nothing to do with the blockchain structure that I'm, I've been researching and putting forth. 
that's going to be completely different. But for Bitcoin Startup Labs, um, basically March 15th, we have demo day. So we'll be we'll be demoing with a pitch deck uh, or testnet build for oral inscription tooling uh, for VC firms, accelerators, and angel investors through Bitcoin Startup Labs. Um, and, I mean, it could be someone like Charlie Lee, you know, it could be someone like, you know, like whatever venture VC firms. There oh, that's awesome, like that. man. Um, I'm not saying Charlie Lee's going to be there, but I'm just saying like those, those are the type of people, I guess, like look to what we're building. Um, that's cool. And like, oh, that's cool. like innovative. So yeah, if it's we very can, interesting. Yeah. If we can save the, if we can succeed like something in Bitcoin and solve someone's pain point for our angel user for, so for us, it's like, yeah, the time and the cost of inscription. Now the time is not really much. You can really do about that. <laughs> There's no solvent. Um, but the, <clears throat> the cost is like they don't understand if they take a thousand by thousand pn like pixel png you know it's going to cost like a th like two three thousand dollars to inscribe no starving artist is going to be like ah oh, i can do that it's it's fine for like a top tier artist who goes to use our tool and goes all right and like through a social experience um like if we're sitting on here you make a post and you can inscribe it um that's kind of what we're building through like a social app like you can make a post you can inscribe it you can pick your yeah. picture inscribe it but it compressed to compress it to like from like PNG or whatever to SVG. Then you can get something that's like four megabyte that costs like that would cost like five grand, like Bitcoin cost and orderly inscribe down to, you know, 10, 15, $30 at most to inscribe. Um, then. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's what that I kind of did. I, I was like, all right, I'll just, I'll let it take two weeks. <laughs> Pay the minimum. <laughs> Um, I don't need it right away. I just want an early number. Um, but the, the way I kind of did it was I kind of took a, a Pepe and I wanted that exact size um, of the original. So to put the pixel, to get the pixel correct on the ordinal, when ordinal started, it was really difficult. You almost had to like play around to get the pixel like perfect pixel as the the real pepe right as the um rare pepe so i was just hoping that that, that size mattered if anyone ever because you know back when we were doing ordinals everybody just looked at numbers you weren't even looking at a, a piece of art really you know you were just looking at all these numbers and uh, i thought those numbers were important right um so you know that being said I like to think I have that first Pepe as an ordinal. Um, and I forget what number it is, but um, it was still pretty young in the project. So even if I was at 10,000 or something, I thought that was still pretty young. But um, I, so, yeah. but I think I paid two to, two to 250 to do it. And I, I mean, that was before Recursive was out and all these other little things you could do. But um. I wanted to learn it. I just, I, like you said, man, I don't have the time to sit here and mess with stuff. Uh, if anything, I want to just do the art. And right. Be yeah, sweet to just yeah, hand it over better. to somebody and be like, here, dude, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's some of the problem with some of the ETH people and the Solana people, you know, they're just, they're just making, you know, inscriptions every day, every week. It's like, okay, dude, how, how many millions of these things do I need of pixel art, dude? Like, it, it, it just gets boring and Sick. I mean, that's just my opinion, but um, I mean, some of the art out there is pretty cool. But I'm, you know, what am I gonna buy? One inscription or two that I like out of a project? You know, I'm not gonna collect them all. But I'll tell you what, man. If fucking garbage pail kids started doing it, I'd buy the whole fucking set, right? Um, you know, shit like that, like bring back old school projects, but um. You know, when NFT started taking off, a lot of companies did started doing that shit, right? Like, I have the Nike app where I have the first couple um, NFTs, right? Um, and like, your little gas station started doing them, and, um, you know, your sandwich places started doing them. I thought that was cool. I guess it's actually taking off, right? And then the whole NFT thing and, and, and took a shit, you know? So they all kind of just gave up. Um, not that I spent a bunch of money or anything. It was just like, I just, I thought we were on our way. Right. Um, 
and, and it'll come back, right? It'll come back. Um, I just thought, you know, when when commercial places started doing it, I also thought like, all right, everybody's got their hands in this. Like, what's the point of collecting anything or giving anything away? You know, and everyone had to download a different app to do this, to do that, with a different blockchain and a different thing. But they did make it cookie cutter for, you know, everyday people to get rewards as an NFT, which I thought was cool. Um, I just, I really did think it was the future. And I think it still is, you know, when they started building worlds, right? That you could buy land and shit. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but, you know, how many different worlds do you want? How many you think, you know? So it, it kind of goes both ways with me all the time. But um, I'm, I've always kind of been an adopter of crypto from the beginning of not just protocols and utilities, but like, what's this thing going to do? You know, can it do something like, like raise money for uh, wells in Africa, right? Or people conserving water. So it, not all these chemicals go down the stream and fog up bridges and shit, right? Like actual real world scientist shit, you know? And uh, that's what kind of got me into it, right? That these things could actually do something good, right? Do something important. And they all raise money, right? All these boxes, they, they kind of raise money. They have to burn it or do this or do that. Or, or reinvest in the infrastructure or, you know, but if they could set aside money or something to the side and actually do something in the real world, I always thought that was cool. Yeah. The the way I kind of think for, or the way I've participated in things is like, um, it's really good to, again, like, um, at least like fund further teams, like future teams to do building. Um, so obviously, you know, when there's working capital there, um, inject it into like hackathons and invite someone over to our chain, um, you know, for for like mainnet and, and say, hey, we're gonna have a th- hackathon and like have projects come and build um, like EVM compatible dApps on chain and then have certain working capital there that they can earn and be rewarded from. And that brings like, that brings like innovation in. and that so, so like kind of like what you're saying like hey let's build some wells in africa well hey let's let's build some projects on the chain that can solve and, and maybe a project is like builds a project that does you know does something that protocol and then they take their reward and they build some wells in africa so it's like we can build some wells in africa and then you know a hackathon bounty a winner goes build some more wells in africa so I think like, yeah, so as long as we keep giving, um, keep building and keep innovating um, where and like my argument thesis again is like the way I well, the way I've been spending like four years, kind of four to five years, like researching a chain, I was thinking of proof of elapsed time, but I think POA, uh, proof of activity, which is hybrid of proof of work that where blocks are mined and then it's processed into proof of stake where blocks or stakers uh validate the blocks is true so it's like more resistant to 51 percent attack yeah yeah like that um yeah. like i've been really studying cardano's new uh midnight um that's going to be both proof of stake and proof of work and it'll be like a middle i guess it's called dust um so that there's a, a true bridge between everything um I, and I don't know if you heard me talking about it last night, but um, where there's like uh, there's a little bit of a delay, but I mean the guy he hired like forty five people, um, like true guys. Um, Cardano kind of passed it off to this guy, and they take their time, they do the fucking shit right, but like no one seems to care because these people they just want to make money tomorrow and the next day and. You know, Kadarna is a little tough to to flip up and down like that, but uh, yeah. But that's what I, that's what I kind of get pissed off at because um, you know, you got true scientists out there, you got true people out there trying to make it do something right, and there's these just shit coiners, you know, pumping and dumping all day, and that's all they do. Um, 
and not that there's anything wrong with that. They're just kind of to me, they're just kind of like betting on football games, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that'll ever go away. It's it's kind of like some weird like nerve nerve system to the backbone of a of like any blockchain shit coins on the blockchain. It's well, like I mean, like, like you know, I kind of look at the stock market. Like, okay, you got these people pumping these um stocks up and down all day trading right brokering but then you have like you know commodities just sitting there like corn and shit you know orange juice and shit like um doing good things (laughs) but it's just sitting there (laughs) so you know there's a lot of uh comparison right you could look at but uh (laughs) if these things could actually do something good and, and facilitate and bring hype and make money and you know what i mean win 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 i'm always for that kind of project so like you know me sitting on the outskirts just watching in that, that's the kind of stuff i like to watch and get interested in got to follow up on so <laughs> yeah i mean yeah and 99 percent will fail um that's oh, the yeah. aspect of yeah. a lot of this I think that's what the government really wants to get rid of is like the shit coins, right? They they don't like anybody could just do it, which kind of sucks. But you you do have true people out there actually trying to do shit. They just don't know what they're doing. But then there's some people that just do it on purpose, right? So it's hard to tell the difference. But you know, like I told my older buddy the other day, I'm like, "Hey, do it right. Take your time. Get an audit." Get someone else to pay for the audit, right? Um, I think you might have rubbed out there. No, no, I stopped. Someone Facebook me. Sorry. Uh, Um, Where is that? Um, Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, yeah, just... And you could have true things out there actually working and doing something cool instead of just just fuckery, wasting your day all day every day. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't fuck around with my time. Um, I really don't look to waste my time. Um, and when I'm doing something, it has to have like a, a point, especially when it comes to like doing something in blockchain because it takes like it takes like years. I mean, wait, wait, you might as well like the way I look at it is like. Um, I'm here, so I'm digging my grave. Uh, there's like this is yeah, it. yeah. So I have to yeah, die I mean, here, I I'm basically. out here I'm, and I'm doing like I'm listening to these shows and I'm trying to understand each project, even new ones, old ones, whatever. Um, just kind of not doing research, but just kind of like studying. Okay, what are they actually really doing here? And be able to see through the lines really helps. Um, right all right i'm gonna do research on this well you can it's brand new but you got to get on board today i'm like all right i know what this is you know it's just another new another new cult right or another you said shilling and and all this and so i I follow these these guys on twitter um x and they get me to come into the show on discord and i'm like all right how do i get in the show and they're like oh you got to buy a token but put the token things down today but I can get you one personally. I'm like, all right, well, what do you need? He's like, uh, you know, 79 bucks for this token. What the fuck am I spending ten seventy nine dollars to get into your show? Yeah, that's weird. Like, I could see what like if the token was ten dollars back in the day or something, but what do you get out of it? I don't even know, dude. It just felt like a scammy scam to me. But yeah. these guys are very intelligent, so they must know what they're doing, but at the same time, like <laughs> So I, I fucked with them. I'm like, oh, do, would you accept OXBE? And they're like, well, what's that? So I sent them the address of this shit coin, right? <laughs> and I didn't get a reply back. <laughs> but I know the Pepe community coin is going to actually pump a little bit. It'll actually go up. But, you know, they're not trying to be a shit coin. It's actually a community and a, as a dev and a... And a um, an audit and everything and a burn mechanism but anyway you know i was just trying to be you know like nerd them up a little bit backwards um and get a recall but Mm. they they let me into like their text chat 
But now I just want to turn the fucking Discord off, dude. I, I wish I knew Discord better. When it came out, it was a lot easier to use. Now it's just it flip flops you. Like if I hit a link, it just takes me to Discord, not to the fucking link. I don't know. I think they tried to fuck with it to try to be more like Twitch. You know what I mean? Like or something, and it's funky. But I mean, I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, Discord's a Discord's a beast of its own. Um, yeah. I do, do I do build Discord communities for for yeah. This type yeah, of I, used to, yeah. I used to. I used to. I used to have like two shows on discord so you know I, I used to have my own channels right so okay now it's like i can't even fucking get to their sh- you know like i'm like what the fuck is what did they do this app you know but uh, anyway like i said I, i'm trying to fuck around with it. it just took me an hour to find these guys you know what i mean and i'm like it should make it a little more secrete and and difficult and and then still charge me 70 fucking bucks like on, yeah, dude. that's that's stupid. I mean, you can go for free, you know. <laughs> all for a group of three people. Yeah, but, I mean, I've got a Discord with like five hundred people, and like I don't charge fucking cents. It's like you can go in there for free again. It's fucking like ridiculous. I don't even. Maybe they're trying to teach something. I don't know. Maybe then I could be like, is is this information they're teaching? They are like professors and shit. Yeah, they yeah, are like right. professors and shit. Mm-hmm. But I know I blew them away on their space the other night that to the point where they were like okay we're gonna jump over discord now like just to not get rid of me but like make themselves look better i don't know Hmm. and i'm not usually intelligent i was actually going off on like you know you don't really need to be that intelligent you just gotta have common sense and be able to do this 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 and that and um they were like yeah you're right (laughs) you know just use common sense on a little bit um I wish I were would have learned how to code more and stuff and done that stuff. It's just that my brother and my dad done it my whole life. And I just I didn't want to be in sitting at a desk all day, but now I you know, now I'm older, I wish I did. But wish I would have learned a little more. I'm actually, you know, I'm at, I every day I think I I could learn this, I could do this. But um yeah. There, there's a big learning curve and uh, all the tools you got to invest in if you don't fuck up. And, but, uh, yeah, I don't even really get time to play video games. If I could, if I had the choice, like, I just like, it'd be cool if I could just like play video games, but I don't really get, I get like a rare chance to play video games. Like, I love video games. Um, yeah, I mean, I try to play, games. I try to play my Grand Theft Auto just. But without steam and drive over pedestrians with my car as fast as I can, but um, I just gets old because uh, I didn't play them for years, and then I finally got a PS5. I was a little bit, you know, sitting around, but but anyway, yeah. I mean, as uh, computers, I just <clears throat> I was more into the art and architecture, and um, you know, doing scheduling for construction and um you know just drawing prints and learning the prints and doing cad um that's what's up yeah i mean i i just did a lot of the software ends i was really uh, mesmerized by a lot of software not the uh the dos programming that i was caught on you know but Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know much about DOS um, or CAD kind of stuff so much. Yeah, it was kind of, it was, some of it was fun. It's just like, you know, you, you get upset and you had to know keyboard functions and to get do stuff. And like, I remember learning Logo 7 and making little Pac Man and all guys and shit, you know, on apples and shit. Like, that's cool. It was fun, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Well, I had more fun playing with the software and the video games than, than sitting there doing it. Yeah, I'm like right now we're talking, but I'm just like doing the most boring, monotonous stuff, which is padding out the back end of a slider to push to the front end of some industrial product site website for for business. Um, and then I gotta, I don't know, like. I gotta learn how to stop working sometimes.
But I guess work survival is in the right place. I don't know. Uh, on the retrospective, like, you know, like, um, when we're talking about inscribing, um, yeah, if you're interested, when we have a tool done, um, on test, we're gonna put, we're gonna put a test net first, and so see how the people we've interviewed, if they want to test it and they can yeah i don't know if you heard you know um there's some of the guys from pepe community but uh me you know with bitcoin fees being so high and not making pepe's and exchange being down like i, I kind of got artwork sitting there um and, or i don't mind working on artwork just to fuck around and find out right if you want to inscribe some stuff or test net some shit uh hit me up let me know I'll be working on, you know, with audio files. So, you know, just need the parameters of, you know, how, you know, how, like easy. I'm just putting a 20 second song in with a, with a small, um, 400 by 600, you know, baseball card basically. So, mm -hmm. but, um, I, you know, I try to do some visual with some, uh, maybe a little bit of AI in it, but I try to keep it pretty small, but, um, like you were saying, you know, you can make them res higher and shit like that. But, you know, whatever you, you know, you tell me to do, I can try to implement it as I'm creating it. Right. So, um. Um, yeah, I did. I did pin something to the top there. Um, it's not the actual post itself is not what it's. Uh, what, the post doesn't matter at all. Forget forget the post, like what the post is about. But there's a link. Yeah, the who, there. That's your social, right? yeah the 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 i only posted that because like i actually gonna make more posts in there i'm like um but that, that just goes like hey sign up for hoodium but the the post has hoodium.com in it so i mean if you're interested in signing up sign up because we're going to release our tool through that so basically like if you're just making a hoot uh and your hoot is a picture like svg we're going to add a button in there where you just then can just click and inscribe your your hoot um, kind of like how twitter used to be like a tweet um, so it could be like a post. I mean, it could be like a picture, but then you just inscribe it. So we're connect. We're doing that. Yeah, we're doing that tooling, and we're connecting through Xverse Wallet with their indexer, and we are talking about creating our own indexer um, and put it on our roadmap for our pitch deck on March fifteenth to to the VC firms and all the millionaires uh, to to cut a check. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't mind doing that. It, the only thing is, like, I. I just come from a world where I'm not allowed to show anyone my artwork till it's inscribed. Oh yeah. yeah. Because people could steal it and or other things. So like, you know, maybe I could show that process. Like, all right, I'm going to inscribe this and post it at the same time kind of thing. Well, we're also thinking about like, yeah, we're just kind of doing like social, like a, a way for an artist to, to, um, yeah, post inscribe. Um, it could be like a, unpublished posts and then still inscribe and then publish posts kind of thing like that um, yeah and i think that's what would be cool um not that you would be there to sell it but hey this is inscribed check it out yeah um, you well, know was, maybe you, you do so many of them or you do recursive ones or whatever you know yeah we'll have to look into that we're making it really simple right now like dumb simple cookie cutter set for a post like to inscribe and that that kind of like is like for demo day and they go, okay, like we get, you can build stuff, like it's solving a customer pain point um, that can compress a compress an image or a person can put their own image, um, you know, SVG based and is like a social experience that inscribe tool. Um, then we just put on a roadmap that we will do runes. So rune, um, we will but do, it's like, all about, it's all bitcoin based right so yeah it'll all be Bitcoin. well the, the cool thing about runes so the the problem so the problem right. with all the indexers that's why we were talking about our team is also like putting on roadmap to to vc firms that we will explore you know we have some ideas of calling the the bitcoin blockchain itself uh to do an indexer but there's like that's like pretty complicated right now i know there's domo and this guy named domo um and then there's stacks 
and they're building like a contract type thing. They're working with Unisat to build a contract so that the indexer of Unisat and Hero system and even like Xverse, like their indexers are all off chain. So that's why, so that's why I was like, you know, people were asking like, oh, can you build a DEX with Bitcoin? Well, yeah, we could do it. We could do a DEX, but it's so early right now. Um, the, the, the true, the true, in, there's like the, the indexers can be manipulated. So like, um, it's like a BRC20 being traded or like a, an inscription being traded as in like a DEX format, like kind of like a Uniswap, a, a, sorry, a Uniswap or a pancake swap. Uh, for as far as trading like a BRC twenty, would be could be manipulated or a, like yeah, not like kind of messed up because the indexes are all off chain. They're not. They're all like in their own servers. Like they could be like like Unisat right, indexer right. could yeah for calling inscriptions. Well, it's like, I guess could be that, like an um, AWS server or something. Like that stack that bought out experts is also doing leather wallet and all this other shit. I mean, they're really getting their hands dirty or deep into the ordinals and stamps and stuff and, um, yeah they've that's what i was saying to stamps. damien about doing like like corn inscriptions was well instead of doing a recursive can't we just buy like a block and keep all this artwork in there i'm not copying xcp and all that and counterparty but you know just keeping it all together because like if you go to search for a fucking ordinal right now there's you know how many millions of them? you don't even know what you're looking at you don't even know where to like, there's no list like yeah. sort of right they don't even have to organize them they don't have no clue they just keep fucking inscribing yeah um so i just thought yeah like even if you kept it under like sort of a small roof right like okay <laughs> we bought this one like my idea was to make it recursive and just put everything under hint under that main dude so you just search that go through that key right and you see everybody that listed their art under that but you know, and this is what intrigues me, even though I'm not doing it, is just like kind of the science behind it, right? Like the marketing, like, okay, what can you do with this stuff? Instead of just describing everywhere, right? Um, is you know, like, all right, you can list all these baseball cards in a, in a Beckett book, but at least they had numbers that went in order of baseball players. Yeah, they, they didn't really have a number, but, or an order, but, like you think they would go in the baseball teams, right? <laughs> but the numbers, <laughs> you know, but their numbers were just wily anyway. And that's what it kind of reminds me of, right? I don't know if you collect the baseball cards, but on the back, they were usually a number, right? So, I think, yeah, I think they're all, yeah, it's just so I, early. They're just kind of like powerhousing yeah, the, the production right. of. And I'm not trying to stop it or slow it down or process it. It's just like, can we make this a little easier to uh, to find? <laughs> but, I mean, I guess eventually I'll be able to type in Pepe and it'll show the 10 million or a million fucking Pepes that are out there. But that's only if someone wrote Pepe on the fucking thing. All right. Right. You would need like AI to fucking find the thing or something. Well, that we were actually well. That's in, that's interesting to say AI, because uh, today's cohort for the startup labs was um, a guy who's building um, AI type Oracle. It's like an AI Oracle. So I mean, they're, they're discovering solutions for AI Oracles that are like decentralized because everything everything like AI right now is like centralized. It's massively centralized especially the google uh whatever it is um even like this grok thing you know i don't know much about the grok thing on here yeah yeah it's all, grok google yeah. they all have their own you know, yeah. facebook you know they all have their own little AIs. yeah so they're not so they're not decentralized so if we can get like a decentralized like ai type deal going which is have yet to be seen but that was our that's what was our discussion today kind of well yeah i mean was, there's a lot of people awesome. working on yeah there's people working on it um you know, but unfortunately, when you had like free stuff like ChatGPT, they get bought out by micro, you know, sold to Microsoft, whatever the oh, fuck yeah. they did. You know, the shit happens to it. Um, I kind of like Grok because Elon's in charge of it, but at the same time, like, what's he gonna do? You know, so, um, but I mean, he was one of the original guys that invested into ChatGPT as free, right? And look what happened to it. So. You know, I don't trust Google suppressing shit, you know, 
not that Pepe's bad, but they could be like, oh, Pepe's racist. They're for Trump. And like block all the shit for all I fucking know, you know? And it's not, but they might say it is, right? So, you know, you wish you had a big behemoth engine behind it, like like Chad or, or one of these other ones to help you along, but it's like, who do you trust, man? And I really, you know, I do believe in Elon saying like, oh, you're going to, it's going to come down to these fucking four companies. Do you trust them? Fuck that. I'm doing my own. And I like his attitude, but who is he, you know? So. Yeah. Well, but yeah, I love trying, the technology guess, behind uh, the science. Yeah. I love all, all, you know, they're sitting around doing nothing. So, but. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's a cool idea. Because I, I mean, even when ordinals were starting at ten thousand, five thousand, I was like, well, "What the fuck? How are we going to organize?" <laughs> you know, I used to have my own software on DOS where I typed in every baseball card I had. You know what I mean? Typed in the number, the name, the picture. You know, not the picture, but whatever I could. You know, yeah. so I could catalog all my shit. You know, on DOS, dude. Like, what are you guys doing with all these? <laughs> now you're like 10 million plus or whatever. And it's like nothing, nowhere. I mean, I know there's people, there's ordinal places working on shit, but you catch my drift. Yeah. They, there was... Yeah. I mean, the current solutions like Unisat and, you know, Stacks, they, they may clean it up a bit. Um, that's interesting you say that because again, like I shared with you, like we're, we're t- like within my team, we were talking about like, oh yeah, like, you know, we'll have like get out of X verse APIs in their indexer. And basically we were thinking like, all right, you know, we can ba- make base tool for inscribing, uh, put it on test, put test net for March 15th, uh, demo days to, to, you know, accelerator funders and, and stuff. And, you know, they cut checks, you know, here you go. We want, they want equity share into like revenue model. And then we, we scale from that working capital out to be like, all right, well, we'll build an indexer. We'll build a, we'll build it out into an app. We'll build it. Uh, we'll build, we'll do our own indexer to have like a browser plugin extension wallet, uh, like a Hootium wallet. And then maybe that's, that's why like, it's interesting you say that because basically when I, when I listen to you talk like that, um, I hear a pain point there. Like it's fucking all over the place. So when I think like, that's something that that's, so I appreciate your words like that because that's something like, all right, well, if someone says this is all over the place, how can we make it, how can we help create an or an indexer that makes it easy and cookie cutter? So you can have it organized. Like you want your baseball cards organized. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, so like, one of my earliest that, ideas was, thought. okay, if, if I buy, you know, 10,000, like, a block of 10,000, and I say, okay, these, I own these 10,000 in a row, that means I can, I can have people on board and, you know, inscribe to these 10,000 in a row. At least we have, our, like, our little block, right? Um, But even at that point, what happens after all the artists make 10,000? They're going to be like, oh, there's only, you are, let's say, a thousand, so it's limited. So they're worth more money or whatever, or more value. When it's over, people are like, ah, fuck, we need another one. <laughs> you know? So, like, where's it start? Where's it end? Where's it stop? Where's it begin? Um, and you have naysayers like, well, it starts at 10 million or 11 million. Like, why'd you start now? Oh, yeah. You know? um, so, yeah. No oh, doubt. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe. Ah, yeah. There's just so many fucking inscriptions. Um, there's something has to be done, like to like. I think like the the dawn of metadata in the inscriptions is good, but still, like, no one's really using like that sort of like. Oh, let me make sure I put the metadata in. Um, like, uh, yeah, it needs to be more like. Yeah, and that's like when I when I inscribed mine, I only have I have one stamp and one ordinal. Trying to get them in early, right? Mm. Um, I I tried to at least keep it indexed to like the size of the original Pepe, right? Um, 
My stamp is just a stamp, but not really a Pepe, but it's so small, but I did high res it because I, you know, a lot of people just cut, copy and paste a JPEG in <laughs> instead of like getting it to true size. So it looks better, right? That's why you have a lot of these pixelated stamps, right? Because they're just taking this huge picture and like trying to, you know, just basically cropping it down, like shrinking it down, you know, it's like, well, you got to do that right, you know. Which I used to do in Photoshop a lot and stuff like that, but people don't think of that stuff. They're just in a hurry and getting it out there, and like it makes you wonder how many of those millions are just kind of wasted space, wasted art, wasted stuff. I mean, when I try to at least look into the memetics of it, art side of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. Yeah, it's it's just there's a it's so early. Um, that's why a dex isn't like people are like uh, like they're asking me like, oh, well, how about you build a dex? And I'm like, yes, it's like all right, but like, well, for one, like you know, a dex does really well, and then you know what what then? Like, I do a dex, and then all of a sudden, like. You know, SEC is knocking on my door saying, like, you know, the decks we built has had securities trading on it and they find us, you know. <laughs> so it's like the, that, that my thought of like a DEX is like always like kind of like a freaking nightmare um, to build a DEX. I'm open to it, but not for that reason. Um, even though like, Uniswap does its thing. But there was one that like, that was an Ether, Ether DEX. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so like the unit, like SEC and like still hasn't uh, we haven't seen them circle around on Uniswap or Pancake Swap yet, but doesn't mean they won't. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it looked like for a little while they were, and then and then it started looking like they were coming after Cardano. So that's when I got kind of scared because Cardano is the only one out there trying to actually do it right, actually doing their homework. Yeah. Um, and if they, you know, it's like okay. I don't care if you're a fan of Charles or Cardano or not. You got to at least look at him trying to be better than Ethereum, right? Um, since he left Ethereum. <laughs> like that, I think that was his goal. But, you know, a lot of people say, well, he just wants to be known as like a Jeff Bezos of crypto. I'm like, Whatever you got to say, dude. I don't really care. Um, he obviously has a product that you know he's working on and um yeah he wants it to be better and better than everybody's and actually work correctly and this kind of thing and i just wish every every kind of token would kind of go through not what he goes through because he's obviously all over the place but um maybe just had that kind of heart into the project you know like there's nothing wrong with you know getting your stuff um audited by a third party right there's nothing wrong with um you know when they tell us about shit coins and stuff like that they tell us like hey don't fall for these people that burn don't fall these people that do airdrops that's how they get you in and they rug you and blah 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 well it's like well what else are you going to do you know have a, a cbdc with it are you, are you going to do this with it and that's where i kind of go into like you know get, putting wells in in africa like at least it goes to something right um tax free for for the community um like even if it was like let's say like i want to do one for a fire company you know um hey this is going to help fire companies put out fires at your house you know now everybody's invested right <laughs> does that make more sense like yeah it, it, you know even though school buses and fire companies are kind of communist idea it's still the community come together, you know, like Sweden does that, right? With their army, but they're not communists, but you know, your community coming together, they have to put their money together to send your kids to school or do this or that. Um, but at least the money's going to something that helps, right? And does something. Yeah. Um, and I really like projects that do stuff that government's not helping community with or parts of the community that are struggling that can't get uh, funding or like a fire company, right? Um, a lot of these fire companies are going, they're not, they're not their nation anymore. You know, like you have to pay now. 
you know, you have paid firemen, right? Um, especially in New York after 9-11, all this kind of stuff. But in big cities, you need to pay those guys because no one's going to just not work all day and do something for free. But, you know, out, out in the burbs or whatever, <clears throat> you know, there's our volunteers that leave their work True. with their lights in their car and go to the fire, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that around and us too. Yeah. And they don't get paid for that shit, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that around us. Yep. So, but you catch my drift. Like, that's the kind of science I'm talking about. Um, and I, I, I know no one's gonna. I'm not gonna say no one's gonna do it. And, and I know I, if I was driven, if I had the money and I didn't work every day, I'd be driven to do something like that. Um, but I would definitely need scientists and, and developers and um, artists like you, you know, like just to bunch of stuff out. But I'm I'm imagining you're pretty young and and you and you'd like doing this stuff. But when you get older, you get kind of sick of it, right? I mean, look at uh, Jason, you know, the other day. So, oh yeah, yeah, um, he wants I, to go to Vegas for a week. He shuts it down. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I won't. Yeah, I, I won't. Well, hey, um, don't make you don't have to promise me nothing. I know it's recorded. You don't have to say anything. But you catch well, what gonna, I'm trying to say. So no, yeah, I understand. I'll, I will. I will be honest. Like I am. Um, now that I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit over thirty, I am actually kind of tired. Um, I do feel like I'm. I'm kind of tired. I've been in blockchain tech since you know, point, like the kind of late like 2016 and like research and then jumping in in 2017. Um, yeah, did did like the oh, okay, Bitcoin's like digital gold. Then like explored Ethereum for smart contracts. All right, cool. You know, it's easy to onboard because of JavaScript and Python. Um, but then I found the Tron blockchain in a little forum, dusty corner uh, of the web. And that's how, and I jumped into that dev pool and we launched Tron blockchain out of testnet into mainnet. So I'm, at, I'm still in like Tron's like fo- Tron foundation. Like yeah, I mean, when Tron came out, dude, I was really intrigued in Tron. Yeah. So, um, and, yeah. and then it started pumping and I'm like, well, maybe these people are just pumping it because of the name because it sounds cool uh um and then i was like well that isn't right and that's when i you know kind of started realizing that people just follow a name and put money into it all right that's so i actually came up with a couple of projects just for a name Uh and i'm like this isn't the right way to do it i mean it's i'm into marketing and advertising don't get me wrong i've been doing my whole life but Uh and i like that part because i'm a marketing you know, I like to think I'm a marketing genius or an advertising genius, but if I know enough about the stuff, right? But um, I'm like, oh, okay, that is cool. That is half of it, right? Just like selling a company or something, you know, it has to look cool, right? Um, you know, I don't know how Amazon and Walmart look cool to anybody, but in their marketing or advertising, <laughs> <laughs> somehow they make it work. But um. Uh, but you catch my drift, right? Like Tron looked cool, man. And then I started looking at all the memetics of it and, uh, you know, looking in and I was like, man, this Tron can do cool stuff. That's that's actually when I fell, uh, fell in love with Serum. Um, Serum was like this uh, ghost body off branch of, uh, uh, what's it called? And uh, it did all this cool stuff. And I'm like this one's, this one's got to take off. This one, you know, and then I liked Filecoin. I'm like, oh, this Filecoin, I like what they're, they're, they're doing here and i liked all these little protocols and all these little things all these different coins you know e- even ave made sense right but when you go out here and talk to people they're like oh ave is a shit coin you know like fuck them and um you know fuck you know file coin has to file for bankruptcy memes and i'm like these people are just fucked up man these, these things are all supposed to be doing something you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're there for a reason, like not to sound cool. And so like, they're not a shit coin. You know, I call them, you know, an altcoin, but some of these protocols, you kind of were kind of needed in these spaces. Right. And they were kind of filling these gaps. Okay. We need to get money to Sweden quicker and cheaper um, mm-hmm. to fund um, pharmaceuticals or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, we made this this coin to do that. Okay, well that made sense. At least it made sense. 
And then people look at it like, oh, it's, it's not going up. It's not going down. You know, like it's a stock market. And I'm like, all right, it is a company, but like we're trading on the company that as it's working too. It's weird. I mean, the stock market kind of works like that too, but you, yeah. you catch my drift, I think. Yeah, they might be looking, yeah, they might be looking at it like in the wrong way. Um, not to say that they're wrong, but they might be looking at it and like that, like a token might, like a token might not have anything to do with like trying to go up or down or something like as their, their only means. But yeah, just like you said, like they're only. Yeah, I mean, not that it's trying to be a stable coin, but it's not trying to be an asset and yeah, it's not it's, trying to be a, um, you know, that's where I think the government has a, a hard time too placing all these like, well, this one's an asset. This one's that. This one's this. Well, how do you know? If Bitcoin goes all the way down, it's not an asset, you know. Um, well, Bitcoin's a rare coin, so it's definitely not a security. Um, Ethereum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you right. catch my drift. You catch my drift. Because, like, if, you know, if Bitcoin goes down, so Ethereum goes down. So are they the same? Oh, they all went down. Oh, okay. So they yeah. all follow Bitcoin. <laughs> but what are they all? Well, then aren't they all the same as Bitcoin? You know. Well, so. unless something <laughs> flips, unless something flips Bitcoin, then um. You know? I mean, I understand, like, um, you know, the SEC has to go after certain companies, like, uh, all right, they're misusing the money, right. like FTX, you know, um, put, you know, but they didn't go after them for putting all the fucking money into the Democratic Party when they gave them billions of dollars, yeah, then was, took them down actually, afterwards, I didn't even know after that, they though. won. Yeah, that was fucked up. Yeah, they took them down after they won the Democratic Party, took them down to shut them up. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, they only cared when it. They only cared about it when it actually was like, oh, they can actually do something politically. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they did. They, well, I mean, I'm not going to scapegoat. Well, like, I'm that, not saying they're like FTX, the Clintons. They, FTX they, they, they did take them out afterwards. But FTX it did. did drain everyone. So. It did. Um, and and there's some people that you know with uh, XRP that held in there and came back, but um, but you know that's the other thing about okay. You have a white paper, you have your contract, you have, um, you know, you, you got an audit. But now what are you going to do two years later, right? And what are you doing with those funds? Um, where at least I think Cardano can show you where they spend all their money on people well, working on shit. Yeah. And, and he hires, see, hires people. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. And we can um, see, like, definitely Cardano's. Um, I could see, like, Cardano's come a far away um most definitely but you know what i mean like at least he's writing it off like, here i hired all these devs yeah but then you got these people and they saying like oh why'd you get rid of these devs well they got bored of the project and they told me when he were honest so i asked this guy over here hey what are you doing he's do you want to work on this um are you bored yeah i would love to do that okay well come over you know i like the fresh blood i like kind of like what he's doing like bringing in and out of people because if you're bored of something dude i'm not going to ask you to stay here the rest of your fucking life right. you know what i mean on my project or something i want you to go have fun and, and create stuff right that's why i brought you in you know if this is stale to you i don't want you here number one like stay on my project up or number two not being excited to to push it yeah definitely go somewhere else but i'll just bring your buddy in you know um or someone else we know you know it's, it's no bad blood right just keep it fresh and keep it going right because I, I know stuff can get stale real quick and uh you know sometimes you know people find your stuff or stay on your shit out and hurt you inside a little bit and you know like well what do i do now well i need i need to do this and i need to tweak it which which is sometimes really good for a company or a token or whatever you want to call it project mm -hmm. and um but sometimes that could be bad too, because like, oh, I'm really struggling out here. I got, I'm desperate. I'll do anything. You know where, where you know you kind of look at uh, Jeff Bezos. He wasn't struggling to build his book company. He just kept seeing the future, right? Eventually, he got so much money he didn't care. He just got into other shit, you know. Um, but you take another company is like, Hey, we're failing here at Walmart. We, but we got to start selling dog food. And I mean, a lot of dog food, we got to compete with Petco, you know, yeah. um, you know, shit like that. Like we were talking earlier tonight with Jason Williams and uh, Bobby zoo about, uh, and I know I brought up the other night, but about, um, 
the guy that runs Barstool Sports, right? He he built that company, hired the coolest people, sold it. Well, I know the true story. They that corporation went and hired all these executives, right? Well, he didn't have all those executives. So he had all this play money to um, experiment and do new things and work on new things and hire new talent. And, but when the new company bought all these executives, they blew their, their million billion dollars like in a year or two. They burned right? it all, you said? Yeah, on these executives. Oh, well, that's stupid. Right. Well, that's what these corporations do, right? Like, like why do you keep reinventing a wheel, right? Like, okay, we created this uh, widget. Um, but now we're going to, you know, we're going to sell out. We're going to hire 20 executives to make this widget cheaper. Mm. Okay. Now you made the widget a piece of crap made in China <laughs> and the money you saved, you paid to these executives and you actually paid them more to save you this, you know, to save a dime, you spent 20 cents. Mm. Right. You could have just kept making the same fucking product for 50 years and actually made a profit. Right. But no, no, no. You got to make it better. You know, like I said, sometimes it hurts you. Sometimes it's better, right? But you got to you gotta be able to sit back and, you know, look at that. Yeah. I, I, I think that's why for me, like, um, it's going to become very saturated. Like, like Ethereum is, like, super saturated. Solana is becoming super saturated. Uh, Tron, Tron like, like, when we refer to, like, blockchains and what can be built on a blockchain. Um, <clears throat> like, Tron just is bottlenecked by Binance. Um, and that's why I can share like about Tron, like Tron was basically like, yeah, great concept, like you said, but it's kind of like a failure. Like it has not, like, it's not like if you like value should grow, like it's grow, value should grow. Like Binance coin has grown and you now it's grown its chain and stuff like that. Ethereum's well, grown, Bitcoin's grown, but like Tron is what... sat at a dime and it's bottlenecked by Binance because Binance launched this blockchain is the, right. is the largest. I mean, when Tron had its own thing, it was cool. And, yeah. um, you know, that's what I was afraid about when, you know, when Pond was trying to get, um, you know, on the centralized exchanges, um, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, you made it. It means you made it, right? But these yeah. centralized exchanges, these, well, I'm saying what what he what he thinks, what people think, right? Yeah. But when you when you get sold out to a centralized exchange, they buy so much of the coin and try to sell it back to you. That's when it drops, right? And then it just sits there and puddles. You know, um, that's why I really don't like centralized exchanges. Like, 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 like I love Coinbase, but I hate it, right? Because like Coinbase owns, I think, the most Bitcoin. I'm pretty sure they yeah, probably, something like that. Yeah, I think they own like three quarters of it or something. You know, like something retarded. So you can imagine the other coins as well. Like, dude, they can they can uh say uh yeah we didn't own that much and it goes down one day and goes back up the next like i don't trust this fucking company that much you know i'm sure they're being watched but you know what i mean yeah a lot of ones and zeros for someone to look over <laughs> but you know i i don't like when they when they buy up uh, a, like it helps a coin, right? Like, oh, right, they're buying, they're they're buying all these coins. Oh my god, that's great! But now that number stuck at that height, and if it goes below that, they're you know they're not hurting. We are, right? So, in in a way, I I do kind of like shit coins that are decentralized. I just wish I knew if I could trust them, right? That's why I want an audit. That's why I want. Mm a background check on this shit before it launches like you know it, it costs money for that shit and um you know if it's a dream of mine to, to set up a coin yeah well, we're gonna go fucking ten thousand dollars for a third party audit just to launch a fucking shit coin like most people are gonna say ah fuck it and just launch it i'll just create another one if it fails you know kind of a attitude well more of an entrepreneur i'm not like that you know yeah, what I mean? No, I, I don't. I don't agree with like. Oh, it should just fail. I can start another one. Um, yeah, I think. I think like again, like kind of like how I'm sharing. Like the only reason I'm thinking and and putting forth, you know, blockchain structure, is um, not to reinvent the wheel. Because let's let's face it, EVM is is great. 
uh, proof of work is resistant from 51% attack. And, um, you know, and it's, and it's got, yeah, and I it's like both of them. Yeah, yeah, so I like when you mix those together, the, very, the very Charlie, intelligent. Yeah, so the Charlie Lee theory is, is well, that is a lot less work for you, but <laughs> well, the, 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 well, so like that's that's just it is like why, so then I'm, I'm like, well, why even like make a blockchain? Like, why do I want to make a blockchain? Like, that's that would be like my number one thought, like, yeah, like the, for people to ask, like, why would you want hey, to that? Was one of my that? dreams to create my own blockchain, and, and I have maybe six different coins tokens blockchains i want to make and um, <laughs> not not together just all separate ideas that, that would actually do something like we were saying with science earlier but yeah, um that's cool. but at the same time like hey i'm gonna come out here and i'm gonna push this um and no one's gonna care no one's gonna read my shit man you're just yeah, gonna no buy or sell it or dump it right so Oh, like one, Who knows? one of my my favorite ones I wanted to create was called um, Destro Destroyer mm. Destroyer Coin. And yeah, what it was going to do was not only was it going to burn itself, but it was going to destroy everything. <laughs> 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 like uh, any money you give us to buy this coin is going to destroy that Bitcoin or that Litecoin or whatever you traded. That's like, it was just going to destroy everything. And it would eventually implode on itself and destroy itself. Hmm. Um, and, and I thought that was my most fun coin I was going to come out with. Um, yeah, it, it didn't last forever, but none of these shit coins do, right? So I thought it was just like a cool, fun project. <laughs> and I just burn all these fucking coins for nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I just thought it was funny, but like watch it pump just to destroy coins. Like I just thought that was funny. Um, like it's just funny. like you're putting your fucking money into a fucking gaming machine, um, and that would probably be the the the, the picture of the photo, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, just the science behind it was just it's the destroyer of coins, right? It's the destroyer. It's it. It's all it is. And, and people will go, well, "What's it do?" Uh, it says it in its name, dude. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, well, what's the point of it? Well, what's the point of any coin, dude? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was kind well, of just a play on yeah. play on joke on words on on a joke on words, right? Well, we're still um, not, and I still might still... do it one day, but yeah, well, and we're yeah, and so we're still not even like completely like sold like Bitcoin's gonna make it, um, and yeah, I guess like my main point is like for thesis of like why would I put a blockchain? Well, it's definitely not to reinvent the wheel. Um, it can improve upon some things here and there, like, like how I, like how, I, like the concept of Tron. So what I would take from the concept of Tron is bandwidth. So yeah, if you can, if you can freeze your tokens, have a proof of work and a proof of stake model, but you can freeze your tokens for, you know, like on Tron, you freeze your TRX for three days, you get free bandwidth. So you get free transactions. And if you expend your bandwidth, then it starts to cost like a little bit of TRX, um, for, for fees. But if you, so if a, if a company needs to like, like a, so if a company needs to like, or if someone, if someone small, like wants to do like microtransaction, um, and they want that free bandwidth, then that yeah, makes yeah, sense. You're to, ordering to something across country or across another country and yeah. you, you can freeze it for three days. Hey, fuck it. You know? Yeah. So, um, so if you don't and care, I understand that, yeah, like I said, every coin that. has something cool where it used to, right? Right. Um, so I would bring that bandwidth model over to over to a chain consensus um but that's what we were kind of talking about the other night like it doesn't really matter what token you put it on if you make it plug and play people don't know what's happening behind the scenes and do, do they really even need to know you're using litecoin or tron or, or cardano or any yeah, of these things much. right um they just want it to, to function and plug and play you could tell them it's anything but yeah. I, don't, I don't like lying but you, you know what i'm saying like do they really need to know? Hey, if you really want to know, here, read this whole 85 page documentary, <laughs> you know, but white paper. But um, but you catch my drift. Like yeah. it seems like these Ethereum people like they, they can't get into Bitcoin and do uh, um uh, X chain and counterparty and stuff like that. And it's like, well, you learned how to do it through Ethereum and there's all these steps. You learned how to do it Solana with all these steps. And someone had to talk you through it or you worked your way through it. Why couldn't you do it with, with the original blockchain? You know, why couldn't you do uh, it with a Litecoin chain? I think I it think is a little different. 
well, I think they become lazy. They've become so lazy to be exactly. like, oh, it's got to be like, I've got to all have it done for me. Like, exactly. Um, yeah. They, they, they become, and there's no one there to walk through it. It is kind of gate capped. Yeah. And you know, they, the bitch, yeah, so they get the like coin. anxiety. Like the <laughs> ordinals, like the ordinals took off because they had someone going here, do this, do that. Like there was a whole lead army. Um, yeah. Why couldn't they have done that with the other stuff? But, yeah. um, Unfortunately, uh, we're kind of paying for it now. But if you spend enough time, you'll figure it out. But they don't have the patience to spend enough time. They're they're so no like the easy no. But they can so sit like, on a show all day, talk it up, you right. know. Yeah. Buy in, lose everything, and start over on another shit coin. But yeah, they don't have time for that. But I do blame. I'm um, not your generation, but like maybe the next one. But um, <laughs> yeah, I blame the generation. I don't blame them. I blame. Like the the Instagrams and the TikToks of the shortening of uh, extension spans, right? Like they can't watch something for more than fifteen seconds. They're like they're done. Like you can't talk to them for more than five minutes. They're like zoned out, you know. Um, where you know my age, like our extension spans were shortened as well, but not as bad. We weren't down to fifteen seconds. <laughs> You know, video shorts basically is what does that. Whipping through your app, like oh, whipping through your feed, finding the next content to tweet or or to Instagram or to TikTok or whatever they do. I didn't grow up with that shit. Right. I sat on a fucking video game, and if you died, you started from the beginning. It started all the fuck over through fifty six fucking levels. Right. <laughs> there was no save button. Right. You know what I mean? But in Zelda was the first game I think I could save something on. I could actually save a level. Like, oh, I made it to level two. I can save it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, unless you were on a computer, like, you could save shit. But um, definitely not the original Nintendo and shit. But no. Nah, you catch my drift. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah, Mario. Mario's like my go to. Um, yeah, Kong. yeah. There you go. Yeah. There's no save. Yeah, there's no save. I mean, if you get to if you get to the level, you can like kind of go, but then yeah, you got to start the right game over. Um, I mean, I mean, even PlayStation One brought out memory cards. Oh, I was man. all over that shit, man. I had to have like five fucking memory cards like, for Metal that. Gear Solid and shit. Yeah. Like, oh, I gotta have fucking memory cards. I was, it was awesome. The first Metal know. Gear, like, I didn't get no fucking memory card. There's some excellent, awesome technology. If you ever want to watch a documentary on the first Zelda game of how they actually saved the game without being able to save, right? Um, even though it's 8-bit technology, right? Like, the way they they got around shit with hardware was pretty, pretty fucking impressive. But they were, you know, coming back up with back then. Yeah, um, yeah, that and the music. Like, all that 8-bit music. Like there was a guy that sat there on a fucking keyboard and a MIDI <laughs> yeah. and all these instruments and computers and programs to make that fucked up shitty music. <laughs> so it would fit onto that fucking, that little chip, right? All right. Like, yeah. like you, you think, oh, we've come so far, but we're, we're still making everything micro. Imagine this guy back then. I had to make the music micro, the video <laughs> micro, like everything micro just to fit on this big chip you know think about like the first computer the first calculator for texas instruments was a warehouse first calculator it was a fucking warehouse think about that I so, imagine. yeah and the, the and the government the, the military needed that that calculator you know you go back um the first like those old punch cards when people used to punch in the work it was created by um, Bill Gates' dad, IBM. Hmm. The fucking count the Jews that they slaughtered in Germany. Uh, it's pretty fucking weird, dude. Like, your first computer system with punch cards, basically, was invented to slaughter people. It's fucked up. But yeah, Bill Gates is fucked up. That's why IBM's fucked up. Um, I'm more of a Sperry Unisys guy. That guy actually was pretty cool. Well, Bill but, Gates has like those 
those apples now. Like he's all like invested into like food. And he's got these apples where you can't wash off the sticker and the sticker has like these chemicals on it. Well, they they were laser printing shit on oranges for a while. But yeah, I mean, the dude is fucked up because he went and bought all these fucking American farms. Like, well, why is he buying farms? And he wants us to eat crickets, right? Like, well, why is he buying all these farms? So here he, he believes in carbon, not neutral, carbon decomposing or something where you actually chop the trees down and bury them in the ground so that that carbon can't be released into the, into the atmosphere. Right. So you're telling me the trees that actually accept carbon dioxide that you're saying is the bad stuff. You're now burying not to release carbon dioxide. You're fucked up. That's why, like, you're, all the plants are already dying. These people are so fucked up, man. Yeah, it sounds fucking weird. He's he, the problem is he's way too intelligent and just wants to fucking kill and murder everybody or something. Like, he's not a philanthropist. Well, there's, there's not, some. Well, I was just, it's like, I don't go out too often, but there's some like, I was listening to like the radio, it was like the like the Christian Bible radio, and this preacher guy was like saying like. Yeah, and if you go to this website that's been launched by like uh, Bill Gates and so and so, it says right on the website, like you will have nothing and you will be happy. And and he's like talking about reflection of like you know the government systems aren't really geared towards like you know like freedom of even religion. Um, that they're gonna like kind of be like you're gonna have this one world kind of order type thing. You're gonna have like a monetary like universal type of income. And you won't you won't even like really be able to drive a vehicle. Like if you're gonna drive a vehicle, like it's gonna have to be a point. Yeah, I think like you're I think you're actually thinking more of uh Mr. Schwab. Some weird Bill shit Gates, that was but Bill Gates is like on board with him. So yeah, but, yeah if you look up it, Schwab, yeah. yeah, if you look up Schwab in the WEF World Economic Forum. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, something to do actually, with that. Yeah. Yeah, actually Elon Musk went there and they tried to him to pay ten thousand dollars to be there and, and wanted him to talk about a new world order currency and he said and he brought him up and he actually said actually i think every country should have a different one because if one of them fucks up we're the rest of the countries are still fine yeah. we, we made it this far with this many different monies why would we want all one if one failed we'd all fail and they all just looked at him like it's the fuck off <laughs> yeah, like, like he's definitely a high up on the fucking order of being killed by those guys but um that's why i, I kind of do like fucking elon actually uh, and buying twitter and fucking making it freedom of, of speech like you have all these people bitching and shit it's like okay there's some racist fucking people on here but that's their fucking right but that i'm racist but i'd rather know who these fucking people are than hide them in the dark dude I mean, that's your freedom of speech, man. But mm. I don't like racist people either, but you can't shut people up. Yeah, no, yeah. no, maybe. Actually, there's... You, well, that you, it never ends. You could say, I'm racist for saying that. Yeah. Actually, there's You know a guy, what I mean? Where does it end? Where does it yeah. end? There's, there's a guy on Joe Rogan, an uh, African-American guy, and he was talking about how he would go into, like, places, and he would sit down with, like, a Ku Klux Klan person, and try to just like talk with him, and some of these people will actually like talk with him, but and like he would get an understanding of it. So I guess I guess in that regards, like yeah, like I'm not, I don't believe in racism. It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's like a waste of your fucking time to to hate anyone. Um, but maybe if you just like saw that they did have their freedom of speech, um, you, maybe you'd understand like um, how, what how not to be. <laughs> I guess I could put it that way. Well, that's what's fucked up too like i mean look how many comedians actually look into that shit almost like a journalist just to make a joke and they're not allowed to say the joke anymore and they're not racist right they're just saying they're just saying something that we all know is true but you can't talk about it i mean you might as well be burning books yeah you know you might as well just be shutting off everybody's mind um i like to think too you know with the freedom of speech that enough people will have freedom of speech to shut that other person up or change their mind rather than the other way around of shutting that dude up and him getting worse and like going out and 
making it worse. You know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, no, that makes that makes sense. Three sides to every coin, right? Right. But um, yeah, with with Bill Gates doing this fucking crazy shit, the WEF. That's what I'm really scared about because once they do this fucking ETF, and the government gets involved and says you can do this, the next comes the CBDC, the New World Order coin. And you will only be able to buy coins and tokens through us with our CBDC. You know, I mean, like our money's already digital. Everything's still a debit card through the bank. Like it doesn't really exist. You know, you get paid direct deposit. You get, you cash a check. Like it's in your account. You pay for everything online. Once in a while here and there, you need cash. You know what I mean? But for the most part, everything's digitalized anyway. Yeah, banks don't even have to have cash. But they have to make it CBD. Yeah, anymore. yeah. you, you want to go take out $400 out of the Mac machine? It's like, nope. Fuck you. Yeah, but, um, a lot of banks don't have cash anymore. Yeah. Um, it's but um, you catch my drift, like, and, and they'll say, oh, Bitcoin's bad. You know, like what Lauren, um, what's her name, said. Bitcoin's bad. There are people buying drugs with it. People have been buying fucking drugs with cash <laughs> and coins since it, it was yeah, invented. Who, who since said Roman that? days, dude. Someone said that recently. Elizabeth like, Warren, dude. St- yeah, bitch. she said it, but there was some other guy on like oh, uh, sure CNN, other people say CNN yeah. who said it recently. He's like, oh, they're still just for like. Well, we tried to free yeah. Ross, dude, because he didn't know people were fucking selling drugs and guns on there. He just made it. He just tried to decentralize something. Mm. But, you know, I mean, even Elon was like ahead of the game. I mean, he's the one that created PayPal. The first digital thing to do shit on eBay, right? Instead of sending people fucking money orders and checks through the mail that would bounce and this kind of shit. He's pretty fucking smart, you know? He kind of created it. It's digital money, right? Yeah. That's why they really persecute him, you know? I mean, sometimes I think he should have never sold it. But he got bored, man. He moved on to whatever else he wanted to do, man. You know. Well, I think he, he almost like went bankrupt, like because when he took the, he took the money from PayPal, I guess like bought Tesla, and then did the SpaceX, and then almost like flopped completely. But then like kind of just broke even, like on a like. You know, but the R and D he did in that amount of time for an electric vehicle and brought it out and fucking mass produced it without a fucking factories and seen like these other companies are like what the fuck how do we even do that so i give him a lot of props but yeah he did prop yeah. himself up with a lot of marketing of just believe in me kind of a thing you know which i think this world is kind of missing but um not to stick up for the guy or bash him right i'm just saying it's kind of what we're missing man entrepreneurs like that you know like, like a henry ford kind of person right Yeah, I mean, um, while you're here, Keck, um, make the next fucking assembly line. Uh, I mean, to yeah, I guess like to continue like saying to be honest, um, I actually like, I my my first thought was like, what what I want to be, and like this this like uh, person came into our school in like kindergarten and was like. You know, you can be an astronaut, and he was like, this guy was like an astronaut, like he was a person like who went to like space station and shit like that. And um, I was like, when I heard that, and he was like, talking, about it, I was like, that's what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be an astronaut. Um, <laughs> obviously, we saw how that went, but uh, because I'm like, not fucking. Well, you know, it's like right nearly impossible <clears throat> mean to be I... an astronaut, right? So yeah, uh, it's I mean, like it one out of five hundred that actually even get into it. Well, it's um, like. It's like it's a lot of physical shit, right? Right. Because I um, wanted to fly a plane, right? Yeah. And I wanted to, I wanted to go in the Air Force. I want to fly a plane. Well, I'm six foot four and didn't have twenty twenty vision. They're like, well, we need other people to like fix the planes and shit. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. I just want to fucking fly. Yeah, they're always and trying they're to like, steer well, you that ain't like, gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, they told me before I got in, you know. I'm like, well, I, I should have took the fucking job fixing planes. I'd be rich by now, but. You catch my drift, you know. I, I grew up wanting to fucking 
by a helicopter and shit like Murdoch from 18, but whatever. Yeah. No, I mean, I just, I just built rockets. I just built little like rockets. Well, that's, and shit that's like how that. I met Elon Musk. Um, I was at a rave. Um, he was in the college in the city I grew up in. And, uh, I actually have his first video game. Um, that he created when he was really young and it was that the company was actually called rocket science that's cool i didn't know i was hanging out with Elon at the time he was just sitting there on the computer and we're all partying and i'm like who's this guy on the computer oh he's the dude with the video game and the t-shirts mm-hmm. you know and he was just sitting on a computer coding all all night <laughs> like he didn't mm-hmm. even look around me um but it's funny how you see him playing video games you know he listens to techno like it's kind of funny but i actually want to make it into a, a one-of-a-kind nft where i sell the video game with it and have him sign it but um i gotta go through all my c uh old floppy disks and cds and see if I, where it is you know that's cool the t-shirt i end up using as a rag oh man <laughs> but i think i still have the rag like well, it's all still, dirty and shit but it'd be cool to go with it some, right yeah it's got some value there <laughs> You had to sign that shit too, man, right? Like, uh, this comes with the NFT one of one inscribed it on uh, Doge. <laughs> you know, I mean, something like that. It's signed by Elon. Um, and he'd probably end up buying it. I'm sure he has a copy of his shit somewhere, right? Like, he didn't get rid of his shit. I'm sure he has fucking PayPal shit still sitting there or something. But, you know, who knows, right? Yeah. I mean, like people like Jeff Bezos, they have their they have their space come. Actually, he's stepped down from CEO of Amazon, but like he's still now he's all focused on like the space engines and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I but, mean, um, he um, he did he did go to space in that fucking rocket himself. So, yeah, I, mean, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for that, <laughs> and I was all for his science when 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 he started. Um, but at the same time, I don't think I'd hang out with the guy like I'd hang out with Elon, but um, or Zuckerberg for that matter. <laughs> Um, but the did you see the the newer South Park? Uh, no. I, again, like I don't get much time to do shit. But well, I, you should watch I heard, this I heard about, okay. I heard about something. They did something. Well, I'm a, or I'm NFTs like a, or something. Well, I'm a carpenter, right? Like a construction worker, right? Yeah. I'm a kind of a handyman, right? And this whole episode is about how all these fucking people can't do handyman shit. So they're hiring this, this handyman and dude's like, oh, I'm busy. I got to go put a toilet in for this lady. And he's like, well, I'll pay you 200 bucks. Just fix my dishwasher. And he's like, well, this person already gave me 200 bucks to go over there and hang your gutter. And he's like, oh, here's 300 bucks. He's like, ah, I can't do that either. I already promised them. And by the end of the show, these fucking two handymen that were in the whole town, are launching rockets against each other going to space. <laughs> they make so much money to an any event, dude. But so it has like a lot of the truth behind it. Like nobody wants to do nothing. But then the two richest people are going to space. Like, dude, you just got like I can't even explain it. It's just fucking awesome to me as a handyman. Like I wish that was the way for me. Um but but it is true. Like people call me like uh oh, this fucking bolt fell out of the screen door like we well, use a fucking screwdriver and put it back in you know <laughs> ah, i don't have a screwdriver you know or something you know something stupid right i forget what the episode is called but it's like one of the last episodes um like features whatever they call it i think you might have to who or something to watch it but this is uh is kenny still dude, alive? You, <laughs> yeah i'm sure but um but dude you know they make fun of the shit just like the simpsons do like right so I think it's worth watching. It's funny, dude. You'll be la- you'll be laughing out loud. When's the last time you did that, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I know. Probably would be good. Like, I get well, sometimes, like, I I just keep up like on these social sites. Like, you know, I don't try to keep up. But at the same time, like, not that I want to be a comedian or anything, but. Sometimes just being social aspects of keeping up on stuff and and playing a video game here or there or watching this here and there. Yeah. Um, you can kind of stay up to current events. Sometimes you watch the shit and you're like, fuck it, even reference it or make a fun of. But um, sometimes just staying up to certain current events, like at least you, 
it, it builds a different part of your brain. And then when you go back to work, you have this extra structure that gives you an idea or something. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're firing different neurons and it might help you later on something different. That's why they tell you to stop looking at the screen and go outside. Right. Or, you know, Basically do like, this, uh, de-stress. do the opposite. Right. Yeah. It like frees up these neurons from firing in the same order every time. I think like it's, it kind of reminds me of like, yeah, like, flushing out the cells like water yeah, something like drinking that. a lot of water like water fasting actually like, regenerates cells because you're not dumping it up like you know being like bruce lee and not just learning karate learn them all that way you know how to block each hit right mm. kind of thing he was on drugs but... too though <laughs> wow hey drugs have done good things I think it killed him though. In the, in the long Take run. every album, every art, every musical artist, and every album and every tape you ever owned and burn them. Because every yeah, fucking right. one no. of them was fucking high on drugs. Yeah, that's no. from Bill Hicks. I forgot. Yeah, that was it. He said that. Um, no, yeah. Uh, cool. I think cool. I think the cool. I think the constructive method of of exploration like that is is a is a thing to do um, if you can handle it. I mean, at least. <laughs> Like Terrence McKenna, like type handle it, but um, yeah, it is a, it is a thing to do. Um, I I stay sober these days. I just, I've had too much. Hey, me I've too, too, man. Much. I've been sober. <laughs> I've been sober for a long time. Yeah. But um, you know, sometimes I look at it like, all right, I'm I'm coming to work at your house, and um, I'm putting in um, I'm taking out a wall and putting a new wall up or some shit, right? And I don't have to explain to you what I'm doing, but I like to, I'll be like, look, I got to do this and this and that to do this so that your fucking ceiling don't fall down. <laughs> and I got to do this to right. And you'd be like, give a fuck, dude. That's why I hired you. Just do it. Yeah. But at the same time, like if I didn't say any of that at the end, you'd be like, why not fucking just pay all this money? Right. Well, I explained to you what was going on. You know what I mean? Oh, and right, some people right. can't handle that explanation. So if you're building something, right, and I don't want to hear it, like, well, I don't give a fuck how you built this fucking thing and what you had to do. <laughs> yeah. Does it work? Can you get it done? Right. And then, you know, if you don't explain it to them, they'll go, well, why the fuck is it a thousand dollars to do this? Well, do you want to do it? No. Well, then shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know? I mean, so sometimes, like, kind of thing. I try to find that, that middle ground where I, I try to explain half of it. Maybe closer to three quarters so they don't bitch but at the same time get it done correctly right yeah but so that at the end when i hand the fucking bill or whatever they say oh i understand now thank you so much that yeah if anyone else would have done that cheaper they my house would be falling down <laughs> right you see what i'm saying like oh i can hire this electrician for 200 bucks or i can hire a real electrician well, it's your fucking house burning down. Like I'm an electrician, but you, you catch my drift. You know, I could hire this dude to do the plumbing, but my house could flood. You know, um, I always like that line from uh, Tommy Boy, where he says, "Look, uh, I can stick my head up a, a cow's ass, <laughs> but I'd rather trust the butcher." <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a perfect line, right? But Tommy Boy is a funny movie, man. It is good. But, you know, these, these little lines and, and just getting your brain outside of that shit, right? And, and being a different perspective that when you come back into work, you're, you're, you're motivated again, you're amped again. Um, and maybe you have a different light. Like, you know, sometimes you take a break and you come back, oh, that's it. Instead of staying up for two nights thinking about it, Forget about it. Go do something like disc golf, or then you come back and you have a fresh fucking start, right? You're like, ah, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, totally. Um, Something that just kind of motivates you to keep going. So, I think I think for me, it's, I don't, uh, yeah, but I think I think it's a variety of things: taking care of family, going outside, doing some Muay Thai work, like kick kickboxing on a bag or something staring yeah. at the tree you know yeah me me it's disc golf and, and creating a course um, come up with ideas and 
it's also my exercise. It's also I'm uh, tree bathing or um, yeah, forest bathing. Forest bathing, and uh, yeah, it's cool. also um, you know fresh air. It's also uh, communicating with friends and stuff. Getting out there. Um, I mean, there's a lot of aspects to it, but uh, without it, I wouldn't have been able to stop drinking and get off drugs years ago. Um, That's good. And uh, well, that's good. I'll yeah. need a chiropractor, nice. dude. That's my chiropractor because I kind of do this like run up and throw, and I yank it like real hard, like it's cracking all my back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's kind of my chiropractor. I mean, I can get injured very easily, like which I have when I started, right? But now that I got it down pretty good, it's 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 a lot more. Um, minimal but i know i push that but you know i also draw and do art but my I have carpal tunnel from doing all the art and construction all these years right and uh but man does it help my back like if i don't throw once a week i'm all cranky my back hurts i'm all cramped up you know what i mean it, it kind of yeah. is my chiropractor. Like, I got to go out and just stretch. My buddies make fun of me. Hey, well, why are you running up and throwing and all this like, happy horse shit? Yeah, it's to help my footing. I don't need that speed. I'm six foot four. You know, I have all, I'm, I have the length to get it. I just don't want to stand there. I want to do this run up, X step, throw, and uh, helps my back. It helps me align shit. Um, I used to be in the more other sports, like fighting and all that shit, and BMXing and all different muscles, skateboarding and yeah, I mean, surfing and all racing. that. BMX racing was fun. You know what? You know what's the most fucking exercise I've had in the last twenty years though is laser tag. <laughs> if you go with your buddies, you go play laser tag and run around like shooting and shooting at each other and shit it's fun Dude, yeah. you'll be fucking breathing heavy within five <laughs> minutes if you're doing it right like not just sitting there hiding you know what i mean i think i'd be a concern i'm like wearing like the sweaty vest of someone else was swearing it and then like and then like oh, they I don't got, have the I've vest got, like, anymore it's just like a it's like an x safety belt kind of thing oh really i went to this place and like like nah, they, I guess it the depends past months and, like it was like a yeah it was like a vest and i was like Man, I feel like I'm gonna go home and have like COVID the next day. <laughs> yeah, you gotta take some spray and, and an extra shirt or something. <laughs> right, like dip it in formaldehyde and then wear it. Wow, or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the place the last couple of times I went, it was just like a simple strap. But uh, that is kind of funny. They used to have the the big Nerf vest and shit. I know what you're talking about. It's like more of an old school one. Yeah, and this was recently. Yeah, it was like, dude, I have the original laser tag that came out. I remember those. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I have like series two. I, I found the gun in the vest. Easier yeah. worth money, but I just hang them up like my Nintendo Power Pad. Fucking hung up on the wall. I'm like, why'd you hang that up? Well, I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> it's worth money. I don't fuck it. I found. I found a. I remember finding one, like in a tag sale in a box, like different. Yeah. Yeah, the laser, OG laser tag pieces and yeah, yeah I've been watching uh on YouTube I've been watching lately uh like fine like he I guess he sells shit on eBay but he does these finds at like um like um Goodwills and shit right yeah. Liberty Thrifts and shit and here like these video games and DVDs are worth money which I already collect VHS. I have all the toys, all the old shit. I do all the flea market, all that shit, right? Like I, I, I like to think I know what a good find is. This dude's selling like certain DVDs for like thirty bucks, a hundred bucks. Like I'm like, damn, wow. dude. It, it's just it's interesting to watch because that's I don't I don't watch cable, man. I just have fucking YouTube and shit like that, you know, Netflix shit like that. But yeah. You know, I watch all my crypto shit. I watch all my drum and bass shit. I watch, uh, you know, all my carpentry and construction and ponds and plumbing shit, you know. But, and I watch my reptile and, 
hmm. frogs and terrarium stuff and but they just some you know youtube is a lot different it's not like you just go look up shit how to fucking fix a pipe anymore it's like there's shows and shit you know what i mean like it's cool i watch all my disc golf because disc golf ain't on fucking tv man yeah you on youtube gotta watch, i still gotta watch something about disc golf oh yeah dude i think you'd like it your age and no matter where you live, there's there's people around you who just don't know it. Well, I guess someone, someone like folks were telling me about someone who started a gift a disc golf store, and like they did really well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I wish I had a better store here in my town, but I'm friends with the guy, and I can't tell him. But it's a big investment. Just like like let's say you go with a company, you buy all these discs. They only send you a certain amount and all these people come in and buy the same disc and you're stuck with all these, these other ones. So it is a kind of like baseball cards, right? You buy a pack, one card's worth something, <laughs> you know, the rest kind of sit there. But, um, like for instance, like I'm starting my putting league, uh, this week for disc golf, um, at my firehouse. I tried to have it last year, but with COVID and everything, people were weird. But um, hopefully this takes off because the you know this time of the year, people just it's cold, it's wet. They don't want to be in the mud and throw and shit. So putting league is like perfect, right? And uh, it just gets everybody together and they can work on their putting skills because putting is kind of like half to three quarters of the game. Yeah, you might be able to drive to the basket, but can you make it in? <laughs> so, you know, it's it's half the game, right? Like putting in regular golf, I guess. But, but um, as much as I love to onboard you, I usually tell people at least go out and try it. But you know, yeah, go was... go with, go with one of your friends on Facebook or somewhere does it. Go with them. Um, yeah, I see the course. I see the course. It's got well. There's a driving range near me, and they open up a disc golf, a golf course like right across the yeah. street. Yeah, because they have but they own like the plot of woods out there. So it's like may, all, may, like, these may I ask you where you're at? I'm in Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah, Massachusetts has a lot of cool courses, man. Yeah, I'm like around like I think it's like maybe like two hour drive to Boston or something. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy lives up um, right near uh, one of them states. But yeah, I mean, there's beautiful fucking tree line shots and yep. hill shots, and uh, it's oh, beautiful up there. Yeah, there's a lot of tree, yeah, good trees. A lot of good hiking. Appalachian you know, I'm, trail goes I'm in here. I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Florida, Myrtle Beach, and Pennsylvania. Like, yeah, everywhere is different. You go to Nevada, there's high winds, no trees. Like, you know, Southern California, it's weird. Northern California is different, right? It's just different everywhere, but um, just getting yeah. out, being with your friends, it is ninety percent of it, right? I just, yeah, I as much as I love it, I'm not becoming pro, but at least I compete in my local tournaments and stuff, and have fun with my buddies. And I could win money, but I'm not there for that, right? And there, my chiropractor saving money there. <laughs> <laughs> The money I'd spend in chiropractor, I buy plastic discs. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you get the perfect uh, snack, crapple, and pop. Just uh, throwing the disc. Yeah, basically. Nice. All right, just, like just, I said, you, you get all those other things out of it. Just finish this building on this person's site. Glad I'm done. There. I really wish I could do like. A crypto coin just for disc offers. It's really tough. So my buddy's dying discs. And I was going to make like Pepe discs, right? But all of my Pepe friends, maybe three of them fucking throw discs. So it's like, oh, why am I making this, you know? Mm. Um, but Damien had a good idea. Like, hey, you come to my tournament, you can win NFTs. You know, so I can make NFTs for disc golf. Um, and I'm sure there's some that exist out there. It's never really took off. But the one guy that's pro, uh, Ricky Waisaki, 
when he accepted his deal as a sponsorship through Dynamic Discs a year or two ago, part of his bonus to, to join was like $100,000 in Bitcoin or something like that, or $50,000 in Bitcoin, or whatever it was, right? Cool. Which was kind of a lot of money back then. Um, and I thought, oh, this will push it forward a little bit, you know? But after the the bear market for two years, like kind of died out. But yeah. just like I said earlier, I thought NFTs were the future when fucking Bucky's or um, you know your your local gas stations or CVS or whatever the fuck Walgreens were doing fucking NFTs. I'm like, oh, it's all over. This is it. Yeah, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks. Like I thought this was it. This is it. No, and they all like just kind of. That was more like the they all just kind of disappeared into nothingness, you know, yeah. like Homer going back into the shrubs. <laughs> I, I but, mean, um, for me, yeah, the way I looked at it was like when I saw like Starbucks being like, we're doing NFTs, I was like, oh, that's like cringy. Like I thought like, yeah, yeah. as much as no, it was cringy, it was also <laughs> beneficial to the real NFTs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of yeah. how I looked at it, but. Yeah, no, but at the right. same time, you're like, oh, now my NFTs are going to be worth nothing because there's NFTs everywhere. Yeah, they I'm like, wait like a minute, no, no, these Starbucks original NFTs, NFTs would right. be worth more. Nope. But you know, when you're doing fucking eight yachts and shit, and dumb fucking monkeys and whatever the <laughs> fucking pixel NFT shit. Yeah, that's where people started making fun of the JPEGs and shit. Yeah. And I like when you go to when you go to foundation and actually look up real fucking graffiti artwork or real fucking artwork. Right. Different NFT, dude. <laughs> you know? Even my Nike fucking NFT, like it's a 3D fucking sneaker. You know what I mean? It's real. It's like a 3D fucking picture. It's not basically like a foundation kind of thing, but sure, that's that's on me. But so is just some fucking board ape that they all look the fucking same with a different hat. Come on, man. True. As much as I wish I owned one, I don't. Um, yeah. I didn't so, know which hat to buy. Right. <laughs> well, well. So for me, like the the thing I the thing I think like about like NFT is like like the only like wow kind of or have like work within the nft part is um because if if you're gonna have a game or build a game and and you and you utilize like you know like i, I have fortnite skins but like I don't right know, right fortnite, and, that, and that's what my, everybody I has a my, good yeah I lose right, my like correct. i lose my like skins and like fortnite right. or something so i'm mean, just kids putting thousands of dollars into this shit yeah, and I can they have wipe my, the I server. Can have my, I can have this character hacked. that has right. right. I can have this character with the metadata that's poured yeah. into the game, and those are the traits. Right. No, you got um, nothing. But the game, you, the bro. game, yeah. But the game should still like operate for people who don't have NFTs to still have the same Web two compatibility as Web three. That's the way I look at it. Otherwise, like, yeah, you're right. Other than art, I don't think I think like Board API Club is like. I don't think you, I don't, I don't think I'm not seeing it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not seeing yeah, like, I, mean, I, I know they're building a metaverse. They got all sorts of money to do it. I think they will always do their thing or something, but it doesn't mean like, you know, it's gonna, that's like, there's not, there's going to be something else that succeeds. Uh, over I, what, I definitely whatever. believe you with the video game part, even, yeah, you know, even a PS five will backport a PS four or PS three game. And you could still have those skins, right? Well, the um, guy did the guy, the uh, this Trevor guy or something. He's doing like the Bitcoin Pizza Ninjas, and like you know, you have music, and and they're all like on Bitcoin, and you know, your hat's gonna change to like a Christmas hat, and then it's gonna change to, like a Halloween hat, and then but they also like downloaded like every single like. NES game or something like early NES game on the Bitcoin chain. So if you got a Bitcoin Pizza Ninja, you can play the games on the Bitcoin chain. Um, you know, so I well, think there's, that's there's all kinds of backdoors. Like even with um, you know, uh, rare Pepe's and um, fake Pepe's and um, 
thanks like you turn the card over and there's a video game or there's a video or there's a comic book or there's you know there's ways of just attaching stuff uh with chase on through um um well they don't like to use the uh the a uh it was afp um but they were using uh our zone or our sorry man i'm on too many software names uh-huh. Uh-huh. anyway there's so many fucking software names i, I forget them all but um uh-huh. you know there's what you know they just don't they want it hidden so it can't be hacked so they, you know they try not to use an http or https and stuff uh-huh. but you know there's ways of not just creating that card bigger on that chain but adding stuff like you see um my boy's new bitcoin audio he put a whole album on there hmm. um cool. I, I really want you to check it out just because not because of the it's a rap you know not that i listen to rap i'm a drum and bass guy right hmm. but i just want you to look at the technology of it what's possible to attach to this what he did with the art the video and the audio pretty amazing so That's i'll cool. link it up i'll link it to you here in All a minute right. in yeah, a second cool. but um <laughs> he was actually in the show the other night he was the one that brought up uh elephants walking on the grass <laughs> his name's uh kane mayfield oh, i don't know if you heard him kind of yelling in the show i've heard him talk before okay yeah. <laughs> He's definitely a character, but um, that's why he was so pissed off because he just came out with this card. Huh. And if if it's affecting anybody, um, it's kind of him because <laughs> he's like, like he he came out with it right before, um. I want to post it to your space, but at the same time, not that he's going to be pissed off, but just market it for him a little bit. So I'm just going to post it to your yeah. comments here. But but yeah, just do your homework on this, right? So check right. this out. So he's going to have a, and this is like, if you buy a card, you can burn it and make an album later off of this card, right? So I'm not going to be in series one, but hopefully I'm in series two or three um, with my new album that I've been, I'll be working on just for this card, this new nice. card. Um, like I said, I'm not much of a hip hop fan. I, I listen to cool Keith and beastie boys and stuff like that. And, yeah. You know, maybe yeah. some um, Wu Tang and shit, but um but what he did with, and he's not much of an artist. He's not much of a, a, a computer guy, but he got his friends to help him because he's, he's a rapper <laughs> and he did this fucking awesome project, video, audio. It's on the, it's on the blockchain. Um, and he fit all of it in on this JSON. Nice. And, uh, if you own this to like i bought it early so if i I bought it like i get this token that i might be able to do something else with right like it's just an extended version which is cool he also made vinyls that if you bought so many you get one for free right he went out to uh uh, scare city and sold it and then went to emblem vault right okay so he was pushing all these different i mean he was all over the place and in a way he did he did his homework and he did a million things for the pepe that hasn't been done in that way even though skrilla did albums and all the there, there's actually bitcoin audios going way back um but it's just the way he went about it was beautiful um and usually i like to bring them up and actually talk about it 
but he, he goes off on these tangents and uh he's funny but that's just the funniest motherfucker you ever heard but like after the first month he was kind of sick of talking about it <laughs> and not that he was trying to show himself or, or sell himself or anything but in a way he kind of had to a little bit but i mean i bought it and it's already doubled the price or tripled the price so but um bottom line i just want you to do the homework of what he did behind the scenes on this and a lot of people did, didn't know he did um ai visuals video but when you watch it you'll you'll see you'll see it um, cool, and he's man. kind of an old school he's kind of an old school rapper which is kind of cool too like you're kind of paying homage but that reminds me of biggie a little bit a couple other guys nice but um the homework in the in the science project is what he did behind the scenes <laughs> and the people that helped him right putting us on his skates on and you know attaching all this to a fucking blockchain you know old school technology with pepe so um and with fake Pepe's, you have to have so much fake ASF and burn this certain card just to do one and a lot of homework. Took him, like he said the other night in the show, I don't know if you were sleeping, but yeah, it took me two years to do this son of a bitch, you know, like, and I bring it out, Bitcoin goes up, and then you guys fuck me like this when I'm trying to sell them, right? So, I mean, he, he, a lot of us didn't make one because of the high fees. This time of the year or this time of the run right mm. but he just happened to come out with it like a month ago so in a way like they're fucking him you know what i mean he's like why couldn't you do this three months ago <laughs> why couldn't you do this from three months from now <laughs> you gotta do it right fucking now and he tried to say it the nicest way possible but but mm. it's it's pretty cool what what's avail what you can do with the technology on the original blockchain you know blockchain of counterpart counterparty and xcp and how you know and and i guess the reason they're fighting right now like you were in the show the other night is because of the ordinals right you're just clogging up all everything and free wallets just having trouble with that and all those servers and people fucking scamming, spamming people, and I think I think we all know he just wanted to go to fucking Vegas and not do any work for a couple of weeks. But. <laughs> <Be stressed. laughs> Which the guy needs to do, but like even Porkchop said, you know, a lot of that software he wrote when he was young, a lot of it's probably useless now. It's just blocking shit, clogging shit up. It should be kind of restarted, redo it, fresh start. And that's when Damien was bringing up, yeah, AI helping them do it and um, making a node just for ordinals. So it would kind of stay out of the way of Pepe's and all this other stuff. But there was a lot of great ideas on that show. I don't know if you want to listen back to uh, I did hear that, that show, yeah. but but like you'll hear Damien or me in Damien's show, or you'll hear all these cool ideas that people love. It's work, and you know how much work it is. Oh, yeah. I, I don't do that work. I sit out here on the outside, like oh, I'll draw that up for you. <laughs> I'll help <laughs> you uh, market that. I'll uh, I'll tell people about it. You know, uh, I'm good at that. But um, when it yeah, when it comes to sit there and and doing my own data list and 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 um cardano nodes and paying every month and they get bored and fucking fuck this and walk away and pay all this money like, yeah yeah i'm done you know um I but i love like... your idea you you know fucking hit a fucking button i make a fucking ordinal yeah any chain yeah. I, any chain i want or your chain or whatever it is no, it'll be a, well, it'll be a Bitcoin. No, well, uh, well, yeah, no, uh, whatever. Blockchain, blockchain things, is, it's like still like planning thing, but no, as far as like tooling, um, well, that, you, you're uh, the you're the guy that works with Bitcoin, right? You're actually like on the forum or the, the 
know, what you said, you, you're doing homework for them, you, you, you're on their board or something like that, right? I mean, a you're actually helping them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know that part of Bitcoin core, like those developers or anything. Like, I'm not doing anything like that, but no, but you're like on their committee or yeah, Bitcoin startup, whatever it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, um, so I mean, I appreciate all that, you know, and yeah, sometimes I do wish I could get you to come up and talk in, in my buddy's spaces and stuff, but. I don't know if they're ready for that. And, and last couple of times they put you down because your name's fucking that. But how was I? Um, I don't know. I, I must have gone over my fucking head. Well, you tried to explain to Porchoff. You understood, like your name's Keck. It's not. You're not Lord Keck. Avoid Damien. Fucking hates Lord Keck. Mm-hmm. But anyway, because well, well, he was a card that was divisionally portioned into dust. He didn't like that. I still so don't like, understand. Yeah, I still don't understand like what that meant. So when I make, like, let's say I make a Pepe and I make fifty of them. Yeah. And I only sell ten of them. I'm holding the rest. Let's say I decide to burn thirty of them. Now there is only twenty. The value starts to fluctuate, right? And it'll okay. explain that on X chain of how many are available, how many were burnt, how many are dead, oh, cool. how many are owned, how many, what they were sold for, and when. All that shit, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if I said I did all that, but no, um, you only own 150th of that one out of 50. Like I made it into dust, like fractionalized it all. Mm-hmm. So all these people fucking bought this card thinking there was one out of 50 mm. or, you know, eight out of 50, whatever it is, but no, it's only a one fiftieth of that. <laughs> it's all fucking yeah. fractionalized. Well, that's yeah. how they made this fucking keck. Right. So it was a Pepe called keck. So it had nothing to really do with CAC. It was just happened to be this card that this guy did that fucking fractionalized the shit that pissed off my buddy. <laughs> oh man. You know what I mean? So, yeah. he, you know, he's very, uh, he sees in this shit. Like, Oh, it's all about CAC. Fuck, fuck CAC. New, <laughs> new star Lord text the shit because he wasn't fractionalized. You know what I mean? There's a couple other cars that are fractionalized like that. Um, and I thought the science was cool. But the way they sold it and didn't tell you was fucked up. So all these people kept buying more and more and more to get, and they could uh, never get a full card. Basically, it's like the text infinite, like a play. Basically, <laughs> and the more people tried to sell it just to get rid of it, get it, it made it worse. Yeah, it's just like a, it just compounded fucking interest all over. Wow. So I can see why he hated him. But I, guess I don't see why he should hate, have to actually hate you me. unless he thought you invented it. <laughs> uh, I mean, someone. All uh, right. No, I mean, I guess to get rid of Keck, someone would have to actually literally get. I know you murdered. came into a show. In I was the and yeah, uh, I was and really, he probably uh, went off on on you, and you didn't realize it. But no, well, he they he like I, I no, he made like a donation of like Pepe community, and like I put that into people's artwork and. Um, on Tezos and stuff, and try to get them over to Bitcoin and XCP. And, um, so, you know, I mean, K Mayfield was really into Tezos. He, he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, he kind of, I don't know if he left that or he's still in there uh, or not. But. There's still a Tezos click. I mean, I, I, people, there's core people in Tezos like back in the day, like four years ago, trying to get me to go to Tezos. Hey, I go I was, back. Like when Tezos came out, I thought it was awesome project. Yeah, awesome there stuff. Are people, yeah, there were people who were trying to get um, me into Tezos like four years ago, and I was just like into. Tr- I was doing stuff in Toronto. I was like, I'm not. I just I don't can't. like. I just don't like any project anymore because yeah, <laughs> people do it for the money, not for the project. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's why. Like, you know, it for me, like, it makes sense. Like, yeah, build a blockchain, but and like, you know, have working capital and like raise working capital, but um, again, like, I wouldn't think why am I going to do a blockchain? There's no fucking point. Um, right to, but right. there's but there I is got a point. six of them sitting here waiting to go right exactly for for 10 years six years but there is a point to blockchain i just sit here that that can be quantum resistant because 
that's that's the way I look at it. Like Bitcoin with its elliptical curve, and you know, with uh, you know, but Ethereum. if I sit there and tell everybody, come here to this, it's quantum reserve, it's fuck. No one's gonna give a fuck. It's it's bright. They're like, uh, he's showing his shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, well, I, yeah, just like you yawn. That's why I fucking feel. Yeah, but no, I was just, I actually just finished like building out this person's website so i actually sat back and like did a stretch and yawn for once but um that's cool i used to do my own websites and shit actually yeah, got a, for like an industrial actually got company. Make a couple of new ones yeah there's one for an industrial company that's uh does yeah, like sometimes, theatrical some, sometimes they're easier but um no nah, i mean the thing is like yeah uh i th- i think um I think it'd be cool, like not re again, like like you said, like not reinvent the wheel, but the but the years I've like jumped in here, like all right, if I can make like a melting pot, like chain, then it makes sense. And that's what like, my other boys are kind of working on too, like cross chain, melting not cross, pot, not cross chain, but I don't, I'm not really savvy with cross chain, but unless you yeah, really absolutely have tough. to. Well, this guy <laughs> wants to make yeah, a wallet a and shit. I'm like, oh, do, man, do, a, do you know headache. what the fucking taxes like non tax like. You don't even know what the fuck you're doing, dude. You want to be taken down like XRP? Go ahead, dude. <laughs> um, but the same with the coin, right? Like, like I'm in the art, advertising, the marketing, the functionality, the it's science. Tiring. Yeah, it's tiring. Um, and now I need a dev. I need a fucking advertiser. I need all these things. And they all want a piece of the pie. And it's like, well, then you, just... you bring it out and people go, what the fuck? I think Solana broke at one point too. Oh yeah, dude. They they just re- hit the restart button. They <laughs> yeah, shut the whole man. fucking server down and rebooted back up. Oh, that's like unheard. You lose of. all that Solana and you start over and they were still going at it. Well, wow, that's unheard of. I, I didn't really realize that. But yeah, not like Yeah, they like just a... turned the fucking server off and turned it back on. That's pretty funny. You hit the restart <laughs> button, dude. But people had so much money, they made so much money, they just bumped it back in, dude. It was like that doesn't what? sound like that doesn't even sound like a real blockchain. No, it, it's like insane. A, I mean, it's actually pretty cool. Like there should be a fucking documentary about it or some shit. Yeah, that does sound fucking funny. That sounds like some Monty Python crap. <laughs> it does, dude. <laughs> and there was people that got wrecked and still made it back. Like I'm like, well, what the fuck? How is this even possible? But hey, I just hope no one gets wrecked, right? Like. I just don't want you to expect that that's going to happen anywhere else or some shit. But. No, I mean, like, well, I mean, Ethereum had the Ethereum Classic hard for it because of the DAO hack. Yeah. That was a, that was a huge mess. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? There was a contract recently that was the ERCR, like, refund contract. Yeah, did you see that? It was... They, um, they locked up, like, a hundred something million stuck into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but like, wow. It's not it's, funny, but like, they don't back up their shit. Well, it's not that. It's that they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Like, let's go right. try. They didn't do anything on testnet. It's like they didn't really. They had they had dev developers who were like, I don't know shit about it, but I think I know. And then they fat fingered it and like fucked it all up. Um, so well, it's unfortunate. And like I said, dude, just, it's just unfortunate. do your homework. Do your they homework could, and take your time and do it right. Right. And get it yeah. audited and double check your shit. Um, yeah. you know, when, when there's only 10 lines of code on a, on a coin that does great and you make 84 codes, <laughs> there could be a possibility of an error, you know, oh, yeah. um, or something you missed, right? A back hole or something, right? A back door, or, back door yeah. um, and getting it audited by a third party. And, and they say, yo, we found this. These people are like, they can't wait a day to launch this shit. Whether they think they need money or whatever. Or, oh, I already got the hype. I got to jump now. It's shit coin season or whatever it is. Right. And I see Charles fucking Hodgson over here taking three years to do a fucking little project that should have took a month. He's double checking his shit. You know what I mean? And no one gives a fuck. They're like, oh, it's taking too long. <laughs> well, Ethereum, Ethereum was built in a year. Right. Uh, well, he was on like, that team. 
Yeah, yeah, and like he, I think Vita, I think Vitalik was just found like a boost space, kind of like what I'm planning on doing. Like he was just like, oh, I'll sell you these, I'll sell you this much Ethereum token. That that wasn't even actually like real Ethereum. Like there was nothing there. But it was like right. we'll, they'll like we'll like rate you know we'll sell it at thirty something cents a piece or something like that yeah. and I was like if you know I can get it's this much for Bitcoin yeah. and he yeah. you know he raised like a cool thirty three million over no some I remember back when he came out and I should have bought into the shit I didn't I was a retard but but I had yeah, to go through it, all these processes to get it just same with Bitcoin like but the way he built it was like you know it makes sense and everything's you know it does what it does. But the scaling of it has been like painful. Like it was supposed to be like four years ago that yeah. we had proof of stake, and like that was yeah. And he tried to just, fork you know, that; and it didn't work. And, yeah, so and was, that caused the price to go down. And that's when I started kind of getting into it and uh, like really into it. And um, but I remember like when that shit came out, dude. I was my boy was in Cali, and I'm like, dude, I'll just send you a check of two hundred dollars. Buy mm-hmm. me this shit and send it to my wallet. Dude yeah well you need this wallet and it's not working right yet oh <laughs> you know shit remember, like that dude yeah i remember metamask like the actually one of the yeah, developers metamask in, sucks so yeah, fucking bad well, one of the one of the developers of metamask like lived like a like a in my in mass here in massachusetts nice. for a bit and then i was nice. talking to i was talking to kamar and he's well like, it he depended was, what phone you had too right like i was working on a phone well this was before like metamask had yeah the mobile yeah, it was, it was a computer the, right it was just the browser so i was, no, I was doing to, fucking desktop on my fucking shit because uh-huh. it was more secure than my fucking like yeah. when i ran when i ran my dos program just to run data list and shit um if you didn't update it or you updated it too quickly like it was always failing i had to check it every fucking day just to check my wallet like i was pissed i was pissed well, yeah so so one of the guys like uh uh Kamarik, um he was he's there's there's three devs who the core devs who built metamask and like i was talking with all three of them because i found i de- i was deploying and, and writing like solidity code in certain contracts and i deployed like uh like a btg like i was like kind of like trying to f- philosophize a theory on um smart contract roll-ups of uh real like real gold and like uh diamonds and stuff where you could like track it to like a qr code if you were doing like nice. basically basically i was thinking of like okay so um an armor truck shit, yeah. yeah like an armored truck puts gold in a bag or precious assets in a bag and they check it out with an actual scanner and a qr that's like in, embedded on the bag yeah. and then it's the, like oracle the, does yep. yeah but like the funds are like ledgered on the blockchain just as a ledgering system right 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 um and, and like eth is the gas to do that so I was like, okay, so I, I made a contract called Boolean Troy Grain, like BTG, which was the same, like BTG was a fork of Bitcoin early in the day called Bo- uh, Bitcoin Gold. And um, it was one of the forks of Bitcoin. I, remember I don't know. That. Yeah. So like, but when I, when I deployed it and, and like I embedded it into MetaMask, uh, it showed the entire market cap of fucking, of like Bitcoin. Right. Um. So it was like showing a value. So I, I kind of like, exp- I found like a, in like an involuntary exploit and i told them about it and they're like oh that's not, like thanks for pointing out to us because like it was showing like you know, yeah well people look at the liquidity and all yeah, that kind of shit like and a, it's all fucked up yeah yeah i was showing like a value on my on my meta well, people still do like that as a, hack. a trillion they, like trillion dollars <laughs> yeah they, they oh we'll combine <laughs> funny, this man. with that yeah we'll combine this with that and it looks like this and yeah, it's it not funny. you know it was funny but they fixed that but, so they fixed but, that after i brought it up to them yeah yeah, but I mean, they fixed it, but at the same time, like other people, you could, uh, you take your own risk buying this own coin. That's all they uh, did, right? So, you know, you, you go buy anything on, um, I call it Unicron, uh, Uniswap, or, um, you know, any of these places. Hey, you want to be early on a shit coin, you got to buy it, regardless of what it's going to do. That's how I got the the trx i bought the erc20 on etherdex and i used I lost fifteen hundred dollars of litecoins i traded it for a fucking pepe like 2.0 or 3.0 or something uh, um and i've been waiting for it to go back up like when am i gonna take five hours fucking back out you know um hmm. but here i could have sold it on weave i was struggling the whole day like i can't sell it i can't sell it back why can't i sell it there was no so- contract there was no nothing to tell you. You know what I mean? 
That's when I learned, oh, okay. I thought I was pretty good at shit coins, man. No, I was rugged, you know. And I learned the hard way, you know. And now, and now when I'm on spaces and shit, and people are like, oh, why can't I sell this? I'm like, well, you call yourself a shit coiner, dude. Like, maybe you should learn. Sell I guess it I as we really go into that. Um, don't want to sell it as we because it's under W E T H. It actually says on the fucking decks W E T H on it. Like, I, yeah, I'm a retard for sure. <laughs> but I didn't realize. I just thought it, you know, I could sell ETH as we, you know what I mean? And fuck it now. Well, a lot of people did the the safe moon thing. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have that with certain coins, and uh, I learned the hard way. But you know, I'm on a shit coiner guy's show, and he doesn't know that. I mean, I think yeah, that's why yeah. he has a little bit more respect for me now. Like, like even you, like you know, I'm you know, I'm not the best at this shit, but I kind of make sense. I kind of know some stuff. I don't know everything, but like, fuck, you're still here talking to me. Um. And maybe I'm kind of new, but I've been studying it for years. I just, you know, it depends if you're at it every day for that many years or, you know, you, you fucking go to work every day. You come home and fucking take a nap and fucking pass out, eat dinner and fucking, oh, what's what the market do today kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, even though I've been in it for years, like I'm not in it every fucking day. Like these people that don't go to fucking work and have a show every day. You know, I know, now right. I try. Now I try to go on a show every morning and night with how my earbud. A, how do they make any money? I don't get it. I don't, I don't know because they don't know what the fuck they're doing, and how the fuck do I know more than them? It's like it's fucked up, think, and I'm not even they... a trader. I'm not a fucking uh, financial guy. I'm not saying to buy this or that. I'm not. I'm just on the outside looking in, dude. And it's like I get a lot. I mean, I learned so much in the past year. It's like it's hard, but only because I'm at work. Where I'm not really working right now, but I'm at work or going to look for a job or whatever. Yeah. And um, I just put my fucking earbud in and listen to shows. I just do my research, right? Yeah. I'm like, well, what do these guys talk about? I look at it. I follow them on Twitter, see what they're about. Maybe go to their website very carefully. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And, I mean, you told me about this uh, Hootium a while ago. And even though I might not like the name, I, I like the idea. But I don't fucking know you from anybody. How do I know I'm not going to get hacked going on your fucking thing? I need a new phone. I need, you know, VPNs. I need software. But I got nothing to lose, so I don't really give a fuck. But at the same time, like, I want to support you, but it's like, how do I even do the homework without being secured? Um, how do I, you know, you have no one else in here. Um, your name's Keck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I take the I take the position of like Satoshi kind of like deal. Like if you don't really have the time to understand or like trust, then I don't have the time to really nah. like waste trying to I'll make blame you, dude. Yeah, I don't fucking blame you. I can I, I can really anything, care less. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. I could care less too. That's, that's the thing. Um, you're doing your homework <laughs> and you're doing build. your science and you're doing yeah, your I thing, still, and I'm very interested and I like to learn and just follow along. And um, um I, I think I think I think I don't. I'm not here to get ahead on a fucking coin. I'm not here to. Right, yeah. you know, make a million fucking bucks off of something quick, like well, my there's other nothing buddy. Wrong to make a million dollars. No, there's nothing wrong with that, but I I want to do it legitimately and um, scientifically and legitimately. You know, my bo- you know I could have fucking made out the other day and I didn't because I don't I just don't trust the guy. But and he tried to get me in early, right? And I'm like, oh okay. Mm-hmm. So you're just trying to cash checks, man. I, I don't like that. Yeah, that that sounds weird. The one thing I don't do is I don't try to make anything of anything. I just chill. Um, and I continue yeah. build. And so if someone says, well, what you got like, how like it's almost like people come here and they're like, why aren't you trying to sell me on it? Like every other space. I'm like, cause I'm here building. I really don't have time to try and sell you on something. I can talk about it. I can share about it. If you don't understand it, I really don't have to have time to like sit for three hours and help you understand it. If you well, that's what we try to explain to my buddy too. Like, yo, you can't fucking talk Buy it. You know, just hire an advertiser. <laughs> yeah. Someone, you know, someone to go out and talk about it. And he's like, oh, I picked Benji. And, and before I can say no, even though I'm a good marketing and advertising guy, he, he didn't explain enough to me to even sell a product. Like, I'm not going to go sell a fucking pizza pie that's made out of rat poison, dude. I don't know. 
Um, yeah. And he's like, and the other guys are make funny. Oh, Benji can't do nothing. Well, the fuck I can't, but I ain't going to do nothing without something like at least audit the fucking thing. Yeah. You know, sense. you don't, I mean, I know it costs money, dude. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. like at least I can go to people. Hey, it's fucking audited. Yo fucking audit by a third company. Yeah. Well, you At know, least I have yeah, that to go yeah. off of. Well, you, you know what I do um, for like contracts is I actually brought a developer over here uh, from another country into the U.S. and um, and I, I he went to college and stuff and like I helped him get over here to the U.S. and then he and uh, I think he's he's still doing he's still doing like now he's like teaching like university and things like that. And ask you uh, what country? But he was but he had but he actually worked for a Solidity Smart Contract Auditor and he's got a certificate. Oh, nice. He's got he's got a backlog with him. So he was doing Solidity Smart Contract Auditing. So he would so I just had him and like we became friends and so he audits my contracts. And so, so when someone goes like, Oh, did you spend 10 grand on an auditor and an audit through this uh high class like certificated like audit? firm yeah. i go yeah. i go no i have an in-house well, auditor. well those auditors I, can, I, have shit. A, I have an in-house auditor and you can go yeah there's about, auditors go, miss shit dude they just hand that right. to, to anybody at the just, office, yeah the, so. the fucking audit firm is just hiring right. someone who i just right. brought in it was exactly. so different like like if you had three different audits <laughs> I, I, trust I, think, a little no, more. I think i think like <laughs> i think smarter than than like more no, I, think I hear smarter you. how to like expend but, less but at least if you're gonna house right right if you get a third order and you pay the money, at least it looks like something. Not just a shit coin boom. Well, I just have a friend who people can vet and actually can see his backlog and talk with the company who he audited for right, right. And like his but, credentials and then like you know, I don't you have come to, out and go I say um, I say thousands and thousands of dollars. These actually. guys come out they, they come out with a coin and worry about the rest later. Oh fuck. And that, I think yeah, I you know, I, I mean, think you can, do, you can do that, but like that's not really but that's what Ethereum kind of did, right? Like we'll worry yeah, about it later. I mean, just... that's what Charles is so fucking pissed off and left there, you know? Uh, like, yeah, uh yeah. he wanted to sit there and do this stuff right, and he's like, nah, 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 we got this. <laughs> and, and maybe Ethereum is right, maybe Vioc is right, but uh, um maybe yeah. he needed that jump start. And, and, yeah. but you, you catch my drift. Now he has to all it, this yeah. fucking programming to fix and yeah you can't fix it yeah yeah it's hard to scale it um even and, in satoshi the, like there was no auditing in satoshi's like vision well uh, you know that's the jokes you see right like he created it and fucking bounced <laughs> <laughs> he's like no some, some some guy like put out but it's like, some... kind of primitive technology like it is, yeah. you're it's trusting the next 10 fucking years on an etf on a fucking primitive technology like it's pretty funny <laughs> when, when there's way better technology <laughs> it's um, like bitcoin could be the biggest meme coin of them all actually at the right end of the day. <laughs> right right when you think about it um but he's kind of our lord and savior right like, but right so we, um, you, you don't fuck with the god but you know, I also think it was invented by a guy that worked for DARPA. So I don't know. I think I, it was just I, that. I think it was. It's weird because if you look at it, it was like that. That one guy died, um, and he was really core connected to it, and he had like the yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the original conspiracy theory. Yeah, yeah but then, so, but then, like within miles really away, like the actual theories. right, and then so within like a few miles away, in like the same region, Japan, like the guy so uh, Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto was also a is also a, a a scientific engineer, and like he lived like within like a few miles from the guy who who died, and they sent each other like he sent he sent him Bitcoin like he's right, fucking, right. So it does it, it doesn't surprise me that the guy's like no nah, I'm yeah I'm Nakamoto, but and like, it makes I, it makes sense I have nothing like, to do with that, and like he's just like saying it, but like, it makes so sense funny. like you know we came up with all these memes um about hillary and she says it's russian well yeah we sent it through servers russian servers to back to here <laughs> like like there's so many back doors it's funny but um you know and you can blame it on anybody right but yeah. you know when i watch the original i'm a conspiracy theorist so when i go back you know if i recall this correctly um the servers were at a cali in nevada the darpa was positioned right in right outside of nevada and they backtracked a lot like 
the servers back through and it came basically out of the dark of fucking office mm. not the office the email server uh. through the original anyway um i kind of believe in that original thing because before bitcoin was big that's what the conspiracy theory was and they backtracked the shit right they don't talk about that shit now nobody does they're like ah oh, that's false this 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 and that but um I still kind of believe that because anyone that works for DARPA is that fucking intelligent. Number one. Um, number two, DARPA had that technology before all their servers were invented. Right? Like all before all that shit was invented. And number three, I think DARPA wanted to, they do social experiments. They do scientific experiments. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that the perfect fucking experiment? So there's my my top three, but yeah. it is the fucking top experiment when you think about it. Fucking awesomest top experiment I've ever seen, next to chemtrails. So, I mean, DARPA's done a lot of cool shit, but fucked up shit. You know what I mean? Like that we don't even know about. But what we know about. You know, chemtrails, robotics, and all this shit that they've been doing, like, they're all fucked up. Part project, all of it. Yeah. Um, speed rail trains, you know, all of it. They were way ahead. And they hired the best and the smartest. And if it came out of their fucking server, <laughs> um, and if and if it, if it did take off, they would have killed them. Does that make sense? Like you can go down those different rabbit trails, but I, I try not to follow that part. I just follow the part where it's, it was kind of anonymous, because <laughs> DARPA must be anonymous, right? Mm. And it's still an experiment. It's still a fucking experiment to this day. Maybe it was to push CBDCs, right? New World Order. We don't know with the fucking DARPA. Uh, well, the government pays DARPA, right? I guess I don't look into the conspiracies as much. Um, well, you know what DARPA is, right? It's not a conspiracy theory. They exist. I've, I keep hearing the name, but to be honest, like I just, I just haven't really, I guess I haven't cared enough to really look into like what it all, what it all is, what it, other than like, yeah, there's so many like conspiracy theories around it. It has something to do with like, you know, black swan events and shit like that, which I just don't really completely fully take the time to, to make myself understand. Maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm naive or foolish for such, but like, I mean, I, as long as I have like a, well, it's like, like maybe I should like, you know, have a Faraday cage for my devices, but like in case they like, Oh yeah, for sure. A, but I mean, a, I don't, do I don't follow these collapse, fucking black but, swans, white swans. I don't yeah, follow any of that I shit. Really know, yeah, I don't um, know either. I Is just, a I'm damn, a conspiracy theory at heart. And whatever makes sense to me, like common sense wise, I kind of grip up into my my brain and say, okay, this is possible. And why would they do this? Okay, this makes more sense. And that's all I keep. You know what I mean? I kind of throw everything else out the window. The, these black swans, white swans, all these kind of things for the market to go up and down and all this kind of other shit and omens and all this keep the i keep the the stones out of it you know i keep the fucking energy stones out of it my yeah. body's really into that energy and and the chromatic fractals and shit like that and i'm like the opposite of that so i'm kind of looking at it not i know the government's 50 years ahead 50 years ago you know what i mean I know they have a light bulb that lasts forever. Edison's bulb is still burning to this day. You know, they make a light bulb that you have to buy every year or six months, right? But they have the element for one that lasts to this day, forever. They made a battery that lasts a lot longer, right? Um, they have combustion systems and people that run fucking cars off of water that they fucking killed, shot, and bought the fucking patents to and suppress all our technology, dude. Just to make, you know, they're still making money on fucking windshield wipers from the dude that invented it. How do you do that when he patented it? And patents only go for four years. We were talking you know, about that. We were talking about that today. That, uh, yeah. 
uh, this the guy who's doing this Oracle AI part part and like dude he had like he was in the video and he had like screens in the back with all this like you know binary code like floating through it and stuff shit like that like um like I don't know what he was running some sort of server based and like you know screens everywhere but he was also like talking about how like and he he's raised like you know funds through VC he raised like he was talking about how like they he raised like through VC firms like a bunch of money. And to build out like a protocol for buying and selling real world assets on the blockchain. And then they were doing their thing and more VCs were funding it and they were working and he had working capital and the government actually came and shut it down. Uh, they did it like a cease and assist or whatever, uh, because like, they don't want, they don't, they're like, no, we're, we're going to be doing something like this, but it's not going to yeah. be today. It's going to be like yeah. whatever year it needs no, to be. They've that, been doing it. They've been doing got, it for a while. Yeah, it's like we've got and, like a whole like book of like the rest the right. way life is gonna go for like the next like, eternity. Right, right. I don't right. know what it is. And, I mean, you look at you look back at Napster, right? There were people downloading songs that were way the file was way too big for a song, right? Yeah. Um, and you think, well, what's on that fucking what's on there, right? You think they'd be scraping for more free music, right? Back then, you didn't really have much on your computer. So what the fuck were they scraping? Right? Oh, we just want to shut you down? No, no, no. That's what they did. Like, oh, we just want to fucking end you. Why wouldn't it scrape for more music? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like if you were smart, right? Like, if I was scraping, like, oh, I'm going to scrape your JPEGs for all your por home porn. At least I could sell it in China. It wasn't even scraping for that. Like, what are these people scraping for? Back then, there was nothing on your computer except for music, audio, video. Like, there was nothing on there, you know, in the 90s. You know what I mean? Like, whenever fuck master was. Um, so they just wanted to shut you down. They just wanted your IP address so they could steal more bandwidth. Um, like, all of it was just kind of stupid when you think about it, right? It was just hackers fucking around and what they could do but you think they would have been smart and just like all right i can i can grab this fucking guy's playlist that guy's playlist and i could have hundred thousand more songs tomorrow even though people were downloading every fucking song there was you know but anyhow you catch my drift like sometimes there's just players uh there's you know good hackers bad hackers and um some hackers just want to piss on your parade or whatever but um yeah uh it's a shame what our service security our service security has to go through today regardless of crypto like just anything like why are they hacking fucking people's shit you know well, it's, it's well, they have their hacker. own camera yeah i mean if, it you, is. if you're a good if you're a good if you're a good person and you go like work it for, is like, a, but you know like work for you know firm, you like, hack find into a someone like these people are hacking into these fucking uh home um cameras and talking to their little kids like that scares the fuck out of me oh no that's that's gross no um i think i, I was more pertaining to like being a hacker green, and, green hat yeah yeah well, yeah like, even like even maybe somewhat like well i'm not i don't really believe in white hat hacking but you know if you find a vulnerability or something and no, we need it, that. We need yeah. that. Well, yeah, and there's have, good people the, out there. Well, white hack hackers, they'll like they'll like find a vulnerability and they'll kind of drain it somewhat, and they'll be like, ah, like, and I'll give you this much back, but here's your exploit. That's what I like about your show, man. It's me and you. Yeah, um, they can listen back to this, but they can be in here right now, taking information out. You live in Massachusetts, uh, okay? You know, and, and they can go back and do this and that, and, and that pisses me the fuck off because um, they have nothing better to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, you need, you need certain hackers, whoever did that to the fucking SEC fucking holder on Twitter has some fucking balls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I laugh, but it's not funny, dude. Like, I don't like Gensler, but who the fuck did that has some fucking balls and then dump the Bitcoin at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was the same dude, you know, the same group, whatever. Uh -huh. Um, but they have some fucking balls, dude. Because if they find that dude, he's fucking, he's done. 
you know? Um, at the same time, I think that sh- kind of shit needs to be done. Um, you know, as far as, you know, you're Mr. Gensler on fucking Twitter, you should have 2FA when you fucking post it in October. Um, and number two, if you didn't have fucking 2FA on your fucking Twitter, um, and, and I said this in the show the other night, and they didn't want to even fucking hear it because they're fucking retarded and dumb. I'm like, if if it were to come out that the SEC filed for an ETF and it's it's available, why the fuck would Gensler tweet it first? Wouldn't it be the SEC that tweeted it? Does that make sense to you, Bill? I, I again to me like all right, all right, all right. I Maybe think, I gotta I back think, up a little I bit just so you can just... get on the right page. Well, I, I heard about like the whole thing. Even I, though I never... he heads it up, even though he heads it up, yeah, we're not waiting for Gensler to tweet something, <laughs> right? Yeah. We're waiting for the SEC or the government to say, okay, it's all good. So why would you believe Gensler's fucking tweet before the fucking SEC, before any of the government saying, okay, go ahead? These people went off a fucking whim of his stupid tweet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this dude isn't God. Y'all fucking hate him. And I don't even follow this dude. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yeah. for speculation, you should just common sense for you. Right. Like, right? Would Gensler fucking tweet that before the SEC tweeted it? Or the government would tweet that? It doesn't make sense, does it? No. He's not the fucking president of the United States and, and gets to tweet it. Like Obama or or Trump or somebody. I think he almost likes to, government. I think he almost likes to piss off like the crypto people, but he also likes to piss off the government itself. You like, know, he was a fucking because, crypto teacher, right? Yeah, he was that's a teacher. A, that's just it. He like, was a professor. Just, yeah, so he's just kind of like pissed off all around. <laughs> oh <laughs> so yeah. Just like so, maybe he. So it doesn't surprise me. Like, you know, one, yeah, his his account, maybe SEC's account got hacked, and like I don't really know. But like you know, at the same time, like maybe he's just like, oh fuck it, <laughs> like, like, like he's you just know, he's, like, he's like the number one fucking troll, but he doesn't admit it. Yeah, well, <laughs> he caused the industry. You know, he cost millions of people. Like uh, they're going to investigate under an investigation under themselves. But um, at the same point, like the people that fell for it, I'm like, well, why would he tweet it before someone else? And they couldn't answer that. Yeah. They got pissed because they want it so bad. They had their blinders on, right? They want it so bad. They don't care. And number two, oh, you call me dumb. And number three, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> you believe the fucking fake shit, but. And, and then they come out and say, um well uh, the SEC wasn't hacked, it was Twitter. So then Elon has to come out and say, well, oh, it was it was compromised. The Twitter was comp- compromised, but he should have had two FA on it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Did they have two FA? Oh no, we have two FA. <laughs> there was you know, there was jokes out there saying like it was his well man. Because you know, you know Biden doesn't tweet, right? Like he has people there to do it for him. And I guarantee against where has the same thing, right? Did they really imagine this kid that, that imagine account? this fucking kid that tweets his shit like, ah, oh, just put it out there. Sorry, sir. <laughs> 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 you know, like I wanted to make a tweet like that so bad, but or a uh, meme, I should say. Oh, he, but um, yeah, that's that's like it's like the that's hilarious, like how the SEC um, is less competent than. What, what, it no, is. I, I saw, it, it's I saw super someone, competent, dude. What was that? What the was the that? stuff what is was... made up on purpose. It, yeah, it's made okay. to look. Everybody looked dumb. Him looked dumb. Everybody looked dumb. Um, it's on purpose. Well, yeah. No, the SEC does it. Does their job? Yeah. When Benji's right smarter business, than but... these people, something's wrong. They're obviously being dumb. What what was it? Someone made a someone made a tweet about it. I forgot what everyone was saying. Like someone made a tweet, and like everyone else made like the parrot tweet of it. But it was like I forgot what it was. It was about how the SEC, um, 
I don't know, something about like the SEC like says like crypto is the biggest risk, but like the SEC caused like a bigger risk by like having their account compromised. When, whether it was on like, whether it was on purpose or not. Like no offense, but the like Biden since he's been in office before he was in office sent so many fuds. Um, the government has been trying to do fuds, and I swear they do it just to like practice. Yeah, you know, let's see if we can fud this. See if we can fuck with this. And in a way, this was their last fuck, fuck, fuck with it. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like this is our last fud, fuck with it. Let's do this. Let's do. It. Oh, we were hacked. You know. Mm-hmm. Because once the ETF takes off, we're not going to fuck with it anymore. Yeah, maybe this, it was just this like, is our last fuck with. Maybe, and then, can... and then all of a sudden the shit tanks, and people are like, "What's going on? It's supposed to go up." I told these motherfuckers, if there's going to be an ETF, if there's going to be all these things, they need the price to be way low to buy in because. Technically, yeah, they bought in before, but they're not allowed to use that as their new ETF. So they need that price as low as possible to buy in, then sell it to make any money for themselves, low end or other people. And not only that, like an article came out from a guy that actually worked there the other day that said, I should have reposted, but it was so long, people would be like, whatever. Um, the people that work for the SEC and have to do all these things have to learn all this new stuff. They're already understaffed. They're already, they had, you know, even though they might invest in crypto and know a lot, there's still all these training programs that how to deal with these ETFs. Mm-hmm. And you're talking over 10,000 people that work for the SEC that have to work with these fund managers and everything they have to have training classes they have to do all these things like it's going to take years years not to having years <laughs> yeah. um just to train people how to do this shit on one etf and they're talking about 11 12 or whatever it is 10 whatever it is and i kind of saw this coming like dude if they want to do this, they're not going to sell Bitcoin at 50000 and up for the rest of our lives when they know they can fud it. They know they can get this down to where it was. No fucking way. I mean, Anyone you think, in there. You think, you think you're talking about fucking keep... BlackRock? Yeah. <laughs> that owns the world is going to fall for this shit? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Well, the GB, the big thing. We'll get the GB, that back down to fucking ten, dude, and that's, go that's boom, was, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was kind of. That's what I was kind of wondering. Is like they, you know, like BlackRock has enough money to buy all the Bitcoin in the world, um, and like really easily. But like so, so like um, <clears throat> so for the GBTC stock, you know, it's just like the Wall Street tycoons and all of them that hate Bitcoin. Just like laughing their asses off, future betting against it, and then like kind of liquidating it and watching it go down the rails on all the degens and be like laughing their ass off the whole entire way while Bitcoin crashes down to like the value of a bar of gold. That wouldn't surprise me. Well, I was told to buy um, but, stocks well, they could, in, well, they could. into micro. I was told to buy stocks in the micro strategy and Coinbase, and this is in the. Uh, uh, yeah, because they're still this is do... being recorded. I gotta say, this isn't uh, advice or whatever. The fuck, yeah. but I was told to buy MicroStrategy, Coinbase, and some other ones. They're already invested in Bitcoin, right? Yeah, oh, that's all going to go up too. That's going to go up too. I'm like, yeah, that's true. If it goes up, but in the back of my mind, every January it goes down. Okay, it goes up during Christmas. It goes down in January, February, whatever. And then all coins kind of pick up, like coin kind of takes over. But anyway, I'm like, okay, so you're going to say this is all going to change because of this ETF. You're all pumping it. And you, hey, look, you guys pumped it. You made it up to 47,000, whatever. Pull the fuck out. And, and it's, I don't think these people are pulling out. 
I think it's someone else, a big whale. And, and you're letting these ETFs come in and, and pull shit. But notice they didn't say an ETF, whether or not BlackRock and all these people, let's say they bought in at 10 grand. Are they allowed to sell that same Bitcoin as their ETF now, as their holdings? Mm. Or do they have to buy in now and, and, and ETF off of that? That was my biggest question. And I was ready to ask Jason Williams and all these people, but they wouldn't let me talk. They wouldn't let me bring it up. That's the biggest thing, right? Of the SEC saying, okay, BlackRock, you already own 10% of Bitcoin. You're allowed to sell that. Or uh, you can keep that, but whatever you're going to ETF, you have to buy from now on. That makes sense. Like in the in the fucking final wording, that ETF, and, and there's what ten or eleven companies as well, right? So I don't even think BlackRock was accepted yet. And I and I brought up that conspiracy theory. Like, notice they're bringing out all these other companies before BlackRock, um, to make sure that they're not favoriting BlackRock. Mm, yeah, there was a big uh. Dispute and, there, and, yeah. and I know my conspiracy theories can make too much sense, and I don't want you to believe it, but I'm definitely going to put that question in your head, right? Not to trust anybody, not to trust any of these guys, especially BlackRock, right? But oh, we're going to let these other people go first, so it doesn't look like we're favorite BlackRock. But are they allowed to sell what they bought two years ago? Did they buy stuff two years ago? Are you going to disclose that? What did they already own? Like all these questions, right? No, these guys are just headstrong. ETF's coming out. It's going to surge. Okay, I believe you. It will eventually for whatever. But what do they own? What did they buy? Are they allowed to use that? Or do they have to buy now? Yeah. Three questions. That would alter the fucking course of history. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I don't have one of those answers. Yeah, I don't have one. We'll, we'll, I don't have one of those fucking answers. But maybe maybe people might think like my statement here is like illiterate or something. But I'm going on the most intelligent fucking spaces yeah. asking this question, dude. And everyone's quiet. Oh, you're <laughs> fun this. Oh, well, you're... No, you're fun yourself, dude. Maybe they just answer my really. fucking three questions. Yeah, no Why really is knows. Benji the, the most intelligent person here? This is fucked up. Yeah. Maybe because I didn't fucking put all my money into it. Like you fucking retards and you just want to fucking say it's doing the best. So everyone, more people buy it. It's just fine. Okay. I'm not here to fun. I'm not a bear. It's yeah. a fucking simple question that no one could answer. Well, because they haven't gone to school and college and shit for all this shit. I mean, neither, black... dude. It's just yeah, common sense. Well, it's but just... they don't... I think they're more wrapped into, into, like, just talking about absolutely fucking nothing. And then they get... They go around and circle. Well, that's why like... I like your show, dude. I wish you'd do better. And you know what? Me being in here, I should have had fucking peeps coming up in here. I don't know whose other two people were earlier, but... Yeah. Usually my you know pork chop or someone will fucking roll up in here or cane just make fun of me, you well, know. I'll, but I'll keep doing spaces like every other day or every two I days. I try to something. come in with you, but I I actually have fucking real conversations with you, dude. Not with these other people, but um I think people in other spaces are just, they're just kind of having fun. So I'm not even sure if they're actually like they're like in it because they're in it, but they a lot of my it. peeps. They're, they're drawing like artwork. A, they're drawing there's artwork. That. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, and, but, and they just listen. Yeah. Well, then there's but people lot, like who are but like Devesta. Like, my boy Devesta should be in here right now on pork chop and shit because. But I think they're in some other show with Kane on YouTube or something. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't even know. But, um, well, I, I know I'm holding you up. So no, if you want to go, you I can go. I would love to invite you to another show, but I just don't see nothing. Um, and even I mean, Damien and the best in Port Job, they put me to sleep a lot of times. At least we have yeah. fucking interesting 
conversations. Like I tried to have um, Damien go a little bit because he was asking me questions, and I think it pisses him off that I have interesting things to say. Um, and he has to go off of that, but at the same time, like. I was in the show with him last week, and he's like, oh, Benji would like to talk. Benji's here. He could talk about disc golf. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, you know I love fucking talk about disc golf, dude, but what the fuck's that have to do with the, chi- you know, price of tea in China? But, you know, it was like, so I just brought something else up and blew his mind away. And then in the other show the other night, he's like, well, I don't know where you guys are getting your information. Basically, meaning me. <laughs> and here, like, you know, I'm in all these telegrams and, and people we've wanted so many telegrams and spaces that we just mute shit. And I was like, well, you mute this shit, but if you go in the notifications there, you just gotta fucking read the shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So someone kind of backed me up there um with that, you know, like, hey, there's a fucking and then all of a sudden he's in there ratting me to fuck out on a live fucking recorded space about a dude that can fucking kill me because I talk shit on his coin. I'm like, oh, fucking great. So now I'm kind of watching my back <laughs> on the fucking telegram. Like, is this guy fucking pissed? Did he listen to the fucking show? Did someone else and tell him? Like, I was like crazy people. I'm really sweating. No, this dude's fucking crazy. Yeah. I, I think, I think, but, I think, um, People are like legit, like have like. I, I think people have gotten He's like some, crazy. Yeah, I think I think this space is like really like played a mental toll on people. <laughs> oh, dude, it's it mentally fucked me up because you figure I I started coming in on Damien's show in July, I think. Bitcoin season, right? And then he had a show for like six weeks or something. And I was on every day, and then somehow I was hooked. And then when he stopped his show, like I didn't know what to do. I went on other shows. I started doing research. I started doing this. Started having my own shows. But dude, I met, I met so many fucking cool people, man. Like What's you, this? you know. I met I'm on a morning show with fucking what's his name every morning. Um, I just I like I'm hanging out with fucking Brooklyn Brawler every morning, dude. From what's, wrestling. Who's, what's I, I listened to this one space and I was like completely like lost. I was like, this has like nothing to do with anything. But the the title's like <laughs> crypto or something. And oh, I, you should see guy, me in those spaces. Oh, you but, should see me in those spaces. Dude, you would that, love it. if you just follow me around the spaces, dude, you'd crack yeah. the fuck up, dude. I go macho man on people, like I was crazy. Yeah. Well, was, was one guy who kept talking about his fucking elevator and like no oh, that's bobby zoo yeah I, so I had to, like, we I'm, i was in the show earlier i had to stop listening because i was like i gotta stop listening no <laughs> like, nah, no dude fucking the, like i i'm like i'm like i'm like letting him no, jason williams jason williams the most richest dude that owns the lambo and actually owns the fucking most expensive pepe ever made is on his show every day and he's yeah. went off on him like um, even though he has an elevator, he has no off button. If he gets stuck, if he doesn't close the gate, he's stuck. If he doesn't have a cell phone, he's stuck there. Like, um, there's it, one thing having an elevator in your house. It's another, like, he, like the fucking thing fails. Um, he's like, and I'm very rich and I could have it maintained every day, but, uh, I'm not going to get stuck without my cell phone in the fucking elevator. I just take the fucking stairs. Like he was busting his balls. Like it was funny. So, um, as much as um these people brag like we dude, they bust each other's balls bad um and they're millionaires and and there's people like me that are scum um to them but dude um like jason williams said like i don't if you're not within the first like four rungs of the space i don't acknowledge you and i made it to like the third or four, fourth rung so when I come into space, like he sees my fucking face. And he followed me in the beginning and stopped following me for some reason. You know, people follow you to get followers and it's not following you. And yeah, Bobby's like, I need him to fucking follow me. But 
only because I have questions for them for, for like real epic things. I'm not there bugging them or zapping them or selling anything, so I don't really care. But they see me in these spaces, dude, and they see I'm right up there with them, and they're like, he's not even a speaker. Why is he right next to me? It's because of not just the algorithm, but of what I've been doing the last year. Um, like I said, I go to work. Uh, I try to go to work. I don't work, but I try to go to work. I just put my fucking ear plug in. I go into a show and I ask to be a speaker. And now I come in and like, do you want to be a speaker? Or I ask to be a speaker. And I'm right up there. Cause they're like, they, they want content. And I might not sound interesting on your show, but in these shows, dude, like usually I go to fuck off. Especially if I'm pissed off when I wake up in the morning or at night or, um, and, and it's not the market pissing me off. It's these people. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I'm definitely, you know, and not that you should be doing that, but I would like you to, to, to delve a little bit into more disc golf, video games, shows, um, spaces, and just, get out of your fucking realm a little bit to go back into what you're doing you know well, I, to, I know i talked to you about that earlier yeah no i used to i think like about three years ago basically like every day i had about like 130 150 people a day on my space um and i was doing um shill your artwork spaces so i had like tons of artists here like crystal hefner follows me like all these big bitcoin magazines uh, like uh, yeah, NFT, yeah, yeah. all these people nft nyc they all follow my account here because they know I was like who I am and like what I was doing, and then I and then I went on to like when when Goblins launched, like when Goblins and FT launched. Uh, yeah, another my, one. Old, a lot, my boy Porkchop's really been into Goblins. Yeah. Yeah. So like that was all cool and fun, and then uh, and then when but then another one called Trolls launched, like Trolls Town WTF, and I I started scrubbing their code and I started watching their wallets and they're starting to you know um, be really kind of fucked up with the how they're moving things and their code was trash and their mini interface was like trash and i went up into their space with like 400 people up there and crypto has bola the little guy you know the little boxing guy um was up there also and right when he was sitting there all these people were sitting there i called him out on all their shit and stuff and then and then like i got attacked by like several different people in the way of things and they could they could but the thing is like they could they couldn't answer like my my yeah. question well it makes my, sense like that. that makes sense why so I got my account, I, yeah this was when like x was like twitter and i got my account yeah. banned like this account i've had since yeah. 2018 yeah people I, they, they got it yeah they got it, it blah, blah, blah. yeah they got it suspended and i got it back, well that so. makes sense why why you're quiet now and i so respect really, that yeah so because I, I was very close to the only thing is they couldn't report me, they couldn't report me for anything because i didn't yeah other people would come in and make fun of me and shit, and I just let it happen. Well, there was so like that a, I didn't get banned. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I let people fucking bash me. Right. Well, there and was now like, I have the problem of I let people bash me, and now they do. And, right. But well, I, I you know, yeah. um, I don't let it hurt me, and and I know the true people that know me know that it's not true, and a lot of people stick up for me, like yo, stop fucking picking up on Ben. But, yeah. um, but at the same time, like. I'm not gonna I'll restart a new one. But you know, people are like, why are you called Benji? I'm like, well, there used to be an old Benji that was hardcore. And um he got he got done and I was like, I'll be the next Benji, sort of. But a funnier Benji, a macho man more version of Benji, but um not as hardcore as, you know, swearing and being racist, that kind of thing. But I'll be fucking funny and um, but people will remember it and they did, you know, it's just the name that you know, most people will call me Benny <laughs> or Ben or Benji. And no one calls me Benji, but my grandma, you know what I mean? So it's just funny to hear my friends call me Benji. I'm like, huh? Are you on Twitter? What the fuck? <laughs> like no one ever called me Benji, but, um, are you going to be on for a while? Because I would love to invite Damien in here right now. Because he's uh, going to fuck off right now. What's he going off on? 
Litecoin. Like coin. Oh. just being retarded. Yeah, that coin's cool. <laughs> Litecoin's... Honest tweets. No, don't honest tweet. But yeah. Well, like, um, Litecoin's, but, uh, like, Litecoin's pretty good to day trade, to be honest. But it, unless um, you want to end the space, like, um, why are you probably people? No. But it's up I mean, to you. It's up to you. No, I'm not. I'm, I mean, whether people want to go here or not, it's up to well, them. Otherwise, I'll just... 1 a.m. where I'm at, so... Let's put it this way. If there's no talking here, I just mute the mic. And I just go about my what I'm doing. Um, that's all. And when someone talks, I hear you. Doing, I hear you. Uh, I'll talk about whatever. I mean, yeah, and I'll talk about, like... I mean, I, we don't have to talk about blockchain. Um, I'll talk about, like... You know, I make carpentry as well. These guys will come in... Oh, I love talking about that shit, man. Yeah. Nah, most of my boys will come in and just make fun of me. You, but... you ever hear of Yankee Candle Company? Yeah. Yeah, they're right near me, actually. Yeah, so like I, or I did, where, I, like, where I grew up. Yeah, I did business deals with them, um, and I made like a bunch dude, of. Dude, they were rockets. big for a long time, and then they they took a big hit. But dude, they were making ten to twenty dollars a fucking candle. Oh, they still are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, so, the flagship store is right here and where I, near where I live in Deerfield. But and, yeah, um, but so where's that at? What state's that? Mm. yeah massachusetts yeah so like i have all my mm. rocking chairs and like benches all over their flagship store like my mom was like really into longer burger out in ohio um boys bears i think was made somewhere and then mm. oh, yankee candle so yeah but we we the us in pa that was local when i was growing up you oh, know to go to local shit there's i used to go to but, um, camp in pa yeah, I used to go to Woodward uh, Skate yeah. Camp. Yeah, that's where I used to go to. Yep. Yeah, I skated in BMX there. Yeah, I skateboarded. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to be pro, but it didn't happen. I still skateboard here, man. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, my boy Damien, like, well, he fucking hurt his shoulders, so I don't think he does it anymore, but um i hate to get him back on a board but that's where i'm at like i, I can't afford the health insurance because snowboard or skateboard and surfing anymore but you know i was out there boogie boarding this year um he's in my my nephew had a boogie board without a board <laughs> mm -hmm. um i never surfed but i definitely did snowboard and solemn race yeah snowboard. yeah i was always you know east coast or west coast anywhere i could surf and snowboard but I've always been BMX uh, since day one and then skateboard number two. But, um, you know, I you know I can drop in right now. But if I yeah. fucking, like, I got a longboard and my granddaughter is going nuts. Yeah, oh, I got to drive this. Oh, I got to drive this. I'm like, no, 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 longboard's different than a skateboard. Yeah, and I, I, freak, I freak out because I don't want her going down a fucking road, dude. All right. Yeah. I, and, you know, I'm a grandparent, so it's fucked up. Like I know I I went downhill on a regular board, but on a on a fucking long board, like you're cruising. <laughs> so I'm like, no, 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 you don't leave here. <laughs> you you ever hear um, of uh, Skaters Island? Yeah, I, I grew up in like near Philly, so I was like in FDR Park and oh nice, um, you know that area. So yeah. Love Westchester park. and stuff. So I was wanting to I mean, Love Park. Oh yeah, Love Park was awesome. Uh, we get kicked out of there every day, right. but uh, like that was when I was a kid. Um, we didn't give a fuck, and we'd skate off, come back. <laughs> um, but yeah, when they put Love Fucking Park in in Tony Hawk, dude, I was like, I died. That's I what's fucking that? died, dude. I'm like, you put my fucking shit in your fucking game, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> like, I like I wasn't so in love, dude. Um, because like even when I went to raves, I take my skateboard to the fucking rave. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm fucking skating love when I leave here, bitch. You know, in the middle of fucking night, you know. So, you know, just fucking tail sliding out the fucking end of the bench quick, get the fuck out of there, back in the car. Like, that's what I did. Um, that's what I was asking. I, if you if you heard I used to it. take a truck to raves, and he'd be like, "Why you bring a truck?" I'm like, well, I got skateboards and BMXs in there. Like, we're going here, we're going to Penn's Landing, we're going to fucking listen to techno, drum and bass, and fucking skate these rails, dude. We're going to fucking BMX off all the fucking things, um, off the balls and Penn's Landing and shit. So, Philadelphia was really fucked up for me. Um, 
you know, a lot of times we would go up to Brooklyn, New York, and go to raves up there with Frankie Benz and shit. And I couldn't take those items. They would just steal them. They would just fucking bash me over the head and fucking take my shit. So, um, Philly, like they say, Philly is tough. Yeah, I can handle Philly, but New York, they 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 fucking beat me with my own shit. So, um, Philly was nice <laughs> <laughs> compared to New York, but uh, I think New York's um, like sinking underwater or is going to. Sure. So my boy Damien is here. Um, I know we were talking some, some cool shit earlier um, about new projects. Yeah. If he wants to... <laughs> What's up, Damien? Um, I was about to say, like, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, uh, when they put Skaters Island in there, um, that was cool. Yeah, that was the I, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I used to, I would go to Skaters Island all the time. Like, my parents would, my parents would drop me off at Skaters Island. And then they go to new, they go to like uh, Newport, Rhode Island, to like to whatever they do out there. And then I'd spend like the whole day and like into the night, like at Skaters Island, just skateboarding the bowls all day long. And like then until like they're ready to shut down, I get picked back up and like go back the next day. It, I was sad when they shut the whole place down. They had a nice park there, so I'll just go play the video game. Same. Yeah, I remember. It um, was like that was like a metaverse. That was like a metaverse to me. Like I go to a, I go to a place. I'm skating in this place. I go back home. I'm playing the video game. Like skating in the same damn place. No, I I took my parents there. Like, well, we gotta check it out. And um, I take them there, and they see these two. In the air, um, skateboarding seven feet in the air, and they're like, um, maybe you can do this next year. You know, I'm like, no, 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 there's no next year. I have to do it now. Like, here's half the money. You said if I got half the money, I could go. You front the other half. And back then, it was a lot of money, but back then, it was only like 400 bucks. Um, and I'm like, it's a camp. I'm not going to church camp or this thing, but it's a camp. You know, I can go. And uh, they're like, even when I took them to like, like 12 foot half pipes at, at parks they'd be like uh, hey, you can do this next time mm-hmm. you know because they they look at these things and they're like you're gonna break your bones like they love me that much like nah, yeah, maybe next time like no there's no fucking next time i'm doing this right fucking now you know you let me on a six foot pipe that looks safe but a six foot pipe is actually more dangerous than a 12 fucking pipe like they didn't understand that. You know, they just see this big monstrous thing and think it was dangerous. And I'm like, no, the six foot pipe is where you fuck yourself up, dude. It's a bit of a tighter ramp. It's actually tight. right. Yeah, it could be right. Faster. Like, yeah, I could slip yeah. out and fall, fucking break my neck. Like, a 12 foot pipe, I, I could slide for fucking 10, 10 years and be fine. Um, But they didn't understand that. They didn't understand our physics like that. I was bowls. I was just a bowl and park skater. So yeah, I mean, I grew up, you know, a magic skate park with fucking macadam and concrete bowls, and um, yeah. that was my favorite. Um, and I'd take my bike and my skateboard, and people were like, Ooh, "What the fuck? Which one are you?" I'm like, I'll fucking do whatever one you want. If like, I actually had two boards, one with uh, roller wheels for you know downhill board and uh, one for the pipe you know so one for the uh, bowl and and i would be there constantly cleaning out the fucking pool of fucking sludge and po- and water i finally get it clean people would be like good oh, it's still wet at the bottom I'm like oh fuck you'll get your fucking mom's hair dryer shut the fuck up dude i just cleaned the whole fucking this thing was three foot fucking full of water of sludge I remember cleaning it from the top. It was filled. <laughs> you know, these people, just, they show up. I'm like, do you know how much fucking work I did here? Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. But um, that's what we did when we were kids, man. If I couldn't go there, I'd make a jump. I was making dirt. I was making dirt ramps with a shovel before I... I, I was a landscaper. <laughs> like, I was, I was making 
tracks and jumps. I would go to super cross, like motocross fucking places and fucking fuck the lips up so we could like jump it with BMXs. And uh, the, the motocross guys would come in and be like, yo, why'd you fuck up the lip? Because they couldn't go higher or whatever. I'm like, because it would kill us on BMXs. I just kill the lip. Um, it'll be back two runs. Like, just do two runs with your motorcycle, your lips back. You know, I mean, I just needed it for an hour or two. And and they go, yeah, right. And then they, they fucking rip through it. And they go, oh, shit, you're right. All right, we'll let you go. As long as you keep rebuilding our ramps, you're allowed here. But then I had other BMXers that come in there and fucking destroy the cores and whatever, and and it fucked it for the rest of us. But you know, I I travel with my BMX with a fucking shovel in my hand. You know what I mean? So kind of remind me. We used to build jumps out in the woods, and then we'd leave school, go do jumps, and there's fucking a right, field. dude. Have a Colt forty five. Look at Jay. Yeah. Um, we, we used to, well, there was this bull field, and there was a bull in the field. Well, you're a lot so younger. Maybe you didn't have a Colt 45. But. <laughs> so we'd, oh, I know what those are, but no, nah, I didn't really. Uh, so we like, we'd jump, we'd jump into the field and like run out into the field, and then the bull would start running at us, and we would try and get back over the gate as fast as the, the like wood fence gate thing. Ah, uh, fuck, as we, as possible. We, we didn't do my that. Friend, my friend we, got we, hit. My friend got. My friend got like. Yeah, we <laughs> we'd fuck with the he fucking. He was trying to jump um, over the gate and like. With the electric fence, and, right, we'd fuck with like, the dude with the electric fence. Dude, he went fence. flying. Oh yeah, I hit electric funny, fence dude. going like fifty miles an hour on a BMX and broke it. He left a fucking line across my chest and. uh like I didn't see it. <laughs> uh, it didn't really hurt me, but like, man, that could have flung me off my bike and fucking kill me. Like, there were so many times. They, our parents, did, our back then, dude. It's all that fucking back then, though, dude. Waters. Our parents didn't know where the fuck we were. Just be home by dinner. Uh, there was no cell phones, page. You know, like, nothing. You can't like. It's like you can't. It's like our children can't do that shit anymore. This world's so like. It's just all demented now. Like we used to, yeah, it's yeah. like '90s. Like yeah. we would, you know, I had my tape player, I had my skateboard. I'd be like, I'd, I'd even like get back up when my parents fell asleep, go back out at one in the yeah. morning, just skateboard yeah. all around town. Yeah, skateboard, like, you, um, camp like, out, hang uh, like, buds, and yeah. But there's just like there's like a girl's house. No, uh, it's just these dudes can't even text a girl, you know. Um, no, nah, you, it's like you had a. I don't know. I don't want to go into the. Yeah, no, no, no doubt, no doubt. Gender or gender theories these days. No, I'm not going into that, but it's nothing's the same, man. Yeah, dude. I mean, sometimes I look back, like, yeah, my my life should be a movie, should be a documentary. Um, all the crazy shit I did, but I try to forget it at the same time because of what I'm dealing with now. It's like people they don't want to hear it. They don't want. They don't understand. Um, I'm sure you and Damien do, but. You know, even when I bring up like an old video game, like, oh yeah, I remember that. That was great. I can connect with that person at least that they were at the same time period. But they have totally different experiences. They were, you know, even if they were in the same fucking neighborhood, they had totally different experiences. But um just to me that connection is fucking awesome because these kids have no fucking clue. Just like when my grandparents made fun of me that I had no fucking clue, right? Um, but at least, at least I got to hang out with my grandparents every day as a babysitter, and I'd, I'd yell at my mom and dad like, "Why the fuck do I got to hang out with my grandparents every day?" Every day? Like, well, they're not going to be here forever, and we want you to, to know them. Yeah, yeah. And now yeah, I, I look back, dude, and, so, and that's yeah. why I'm into wrestling. That's why I'm macho man, dude. My grandfather took me to the fucking wrestling matches and I got to see fucking me and Mark, which is Undertaker and, and all these people. And um, I thought it was fucking weird that he watched it, but it, it's that's the time I spent with my grandpa going to car shows. I mean, he was retired, so we went to car shows, flea markets, and wrestling, dude. I mean, that's what we did. Um, I was a kid and he was retired. You know what I mean? But um, 
people say, oh, you're fucking gay. You was wrestling. No, nah, dude. It's like the, my, my last part of my grandpa. And he was the coolest fucking DJ I ever met. And I wish you guys could meet him, but um, maybe you can one day in heaven with me. But um, it was the coolest dude ever. Nicest guy I ever met. And uh, sometimes I, I attribute that to a lot of me. Right? I try to be a nice guy. I try to be nimble. You know, this kind of thing. So, but. Yeah. My, gran- my grandmother taught me a lot, man. As well, uh, nice I know, grandma. Remember. Grandma would wake up bitching, and we'd be like, "We're watching <laughs> wrestling." <laughs> well, my my grandmother was more learn. like, yeah, "It's a sandwich," was, you know. But um, go ahead. No, my, well, no, I was just saying, my grandmother was more like the like the the male like figure kind of because she grew up on a farm, so she was always like, you know, yeah. Like, well, that's what my grandparents had went, ten fucking kids, man. They all grew up on a fucking farm, and yeah, yeah. She had like you know she had like sturdy hands and went through a war and stuff. And no, she was but, a um, shit, man. She had ten she kids while me, he was in while he was in Vietnam yeah, and World War Two, well, dude. And she taught me throughout my life, you know, as did my both my folks, but like she taught me a lot. And so the biggest thing she taught me, and this is why, like you know, like why I sit here, like. If I'm gonna build something in this kind of industry, it has to make sense. Otherwise, I'm not gonna fucking waste my time. And it, I I see so much shit that's like a waste of time, and uh, like that people are involved in, and like they're like, uh, oh, like I f- I do feel bad, like they're like you know losing or something, getting locked in to all these like fucking whatever it is, and like basey and whatever the fuck that's going on. And, um, but like the reason why I say that is because the biggest thing my grandmother taught me. And this is why I was like t- sharing how I was involved in in the Tron blockchain startup, and like you can still watch me. I'm like in the Tron Foundation interview videos, like on their whatever videos on the YouTube, their YouTube and shit. But um, I was building over there, and my grandmother started passing away, and so I went to go see her, and she had like stopped eating, and she didn't. She looks like frail. And it's actually my my the rest of her like family like wouldn't even touch her without like gloves on and stuff because she had like pneumonia. And I went right up to her, and she just like put out her. I put my hand out and held her hand. Like that's like the first time like anyone really held her hand. Fucking right, dude. On. Fucking and right, she, dude. I did that with my grandpa, man, when he was yeah. dying of cancer, man. Like yeah. I feel you, dude. Like I feel that going for my blood right now. Exactly what you're saying, dude. And, I and feel she, you, bro. That is awesome. Yeah, and so she sat up for, like, the first time, and, like, I got her water, and she drank water for, like, the first time in a while, and she kind of, like, choked on it a bit. And I talked with her, and the thing she said to me, she's like, are you still you still doing good, like, working, making all that money in that million-dollar uh, technology? And I said, yeah, yeah. And then, so I talked with her for a bit, and I went back to work because I was, like, building a seed-to-sale ledger um, for um, ledgering cannabis growth on the Tron blockchain. It's still running to this day and like dispensaries use it and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I remember it's, you talking about yeah, that. Yeah, free open source and shit. So I was like, I went back to walking that and I was just like saying, like, I just gotta finish this, this line of code. I just gotta finish this line of code. I'm gonna go talk to her more. We're gonna talk about our lives and shit. And, and I just gotta, and I was like so wrapped up into like working and for absolutely fucking nothing. Cause then my mother called me within two days. She said, yeah, she passed away. And I freaked out. Like I freaked out. Yeah, I, man, get, I, fr- I, I freaked out. My grandma, my grandma died on my birthday, dude. Um, I didn't get to I say didn't have a, I didn't I have a birthday would... party. I didn't have. Yeah, but they knew. They fucking know it, dude. Yeah. They fucking know you loved them, and um, won't ever forget that, dude. Yeah. They know you loved them, dude. And um, yeah, you're gonna make me cry, but um, they know you loved them, man. And and uh, to keep that with you um for energy and 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 they live with us dude. you know everything's passed down genetically as well um and i think that's you know where you might get along with damien here um with you with your skills and your and your spirit dude. um damien's a fucking awesome spirit i've probably met my whole life and uh he always brought me back to fucking face um when i was down or up or whatever he always brings me back to base and without him i don't i don't know where i'd be but um not knowing him very well that's a lot to say i don't kiss his ass or nothing but dude he always brings me back to base and uh 
with with the fucking shit you're doing with technology and shit and um your spiritual your spiritual kind of essence other than keck um i think you guys would be a perfect fucking fit but uh, damien do you remember like this dude's name is keck he's not lord keck right i i can't help that my parents actually gave me that name no <laughs> I don't think how many times I don't think how many times I tell him this that he would know. <laughs> the only thing I changed is the middle like part is the actual ETH symbol with three stacked bars. But I might change that because I'm like kind of like breaking away from ETH to be honest. Hey man, Litecoin man. Um, I love Litecoin. Yeah, dude. It's just a forgotten technology, man. It's like a fucking ruin, dude. I think yeah, people I gave it a bad rap. Dude when but, charlie lee sold all his holdings was like yeah moving on like everyone's like what yeah, like, you're yeah, supposed yeah. to be there like the guru for the rest of your life and he's like no why would i do that like you, you know i'm a fan of, of cardano and and litecoin and you know i grew up with these you know um it's just like just oh, so on it really pissed me off but like i was happy for some people but there were all the east people jumping ship I'm like, well, I thought you were East people. You couldn't jump over here. You they're couldn't jump ETH over people. there. They're not East people. They're they're not East Maxi. Exactly. Exactly. They're, not, they're like they're like they're whatever's just, trending, fucking Maxi. They're and whatever's the easiest, there. right? Yeah. Like whatever, blah blah blah, yeah. wherever they's at. Solana's a pain in the ass, guys. It's like painful. You know, it reminds to, like, me of watch. people of fucking. They remind me of people of patio furniture. Oh, the fucking <laughs> Azac chairs in. Let's make them out of plastic. Yeah. Yeah, there's no we can't way. afford a real Azac, so let's get a plastic one. Okay, I understand that. But what about the fucking Amish people that make real fucking a Azac? Like, cool shit, man. Out of Trex. It's totally different. It's Amish and it's Trek. <laughs> it's not even yeah. Azac. <laughs> nah, fuck that. <laughs> we're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go teak wood. And we're not going to stain it, and we're going to let it fucking rot in our yard. Yeah, some balsa wood. What the fuck? <laughs> At least put teak fucking oil on it. What's All that? Right. What the fuck? You guys didn't even do your fucking homework, dude. That's because that's 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 Home Depot can like afford to like pay a factory to like do a kit. And yeah, and, Man, it helps that, just... and, and, then, and then people spend paint and like shit. And, you know, paint department. Like you said, like Walmart has to sell dog food. Like, you know, like you you can't have the Amish selling the furniture. Home Depot's got to sell the furniture. They can sell more paint and teak oil. It's all uh, it's all centralized. Yeah, you're older than I am, so you probably know better than me, right? Yeah, well, when I was growing up, you know, people coming out of Vietnam, um, you know, we treated our hemp rope and rope and wood with diesel fuel. Because that's all they had in the army, right? They actually mix like a third of paint with diesel and paint the fangs, right? They used it for everything. But if you dip fucking any kind of rope, boat rope or anything in diesel, it'll last forever. Yeah, it stinks. It fucking fucks up your hands. But that fucking rope will never fucking disintegrate. Back in the day, they made out of hemp that lasted forever. But we stopped doing that, right? Is the fucking most retarded thing I ever heard. You know, they make a fucking hemp that's 99.9 .9 fucking percent THC free. You can't get high off of it. You can make everything out of it. But so for some reason, it's legal because of the two pot process of fucking processing paper through phosphoric acid. But even in the 90s, I still repeat that to this day, and people go, what? They don't yeah. understand, yeah. Yeah, the reason your fucking shit's illegal right. is because of Mr. DuPont and his fucking retarded family that are all in bread. Yeah. But they that's wanted, my they fault wanted to make somehow. money. They they figured out a better way to make money than hemp, and that's so they had to outlaw the hemp. Yeah. But yeah, I mean you, you do your research, you fucking understand history a little bit, it repeats itself. Well, it's done fucking repeating itself. It just went fucking full retarded and no one knows nothing anymore. Not cursive, nothing. You yeah, can't read noticed, the fucking constitution. Nothing, dude. I noticed they don't teach. We just went straight as, retarded yeah. that Joe Rogan is the fucking voice of reason. Like they it's don't. fucking retarded, dude. Oh man. When did Benji He's... become smarter than most people? That's fucked up. It's I, just fucked up. Yeah. 
Oh, I noticed they don't teach cursive in school anymore. I noticed that. Um, it's kind of messed. Joe Brogan's got a lot to say. I think he's good at listening to people. No, no. I mean, he does smoke a lot of DMT, from my understanding. I, I can but... go. I can go both ways. He never looked at Toad. So until he looks at Toad with fucking Mike Tyson, right? Then I'll stick up for him. But yeah, I mean, he he said he fucking did all the other shit. He didn't do what my boy Damien did, but he he tries to pretend he did. Um. I wish I, I to, could do that, yeah. but I know I would probably, probably have a heart attack, so um, I got to watch. You know, I mean, I yeah. just smoke a lot of cigarettes and shit like that, mm-hmm. and I have a high risk, but um, I would love to fucking do that. I've been on plenty of fucking UFOs, uh, rides, um, so. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I stay sober nowadays. Um, I, I've just eaten, like, way too much acid um and like mushrooms yeah like i said i've I've been on i've been on way too many ufo rides to uh, account for um but yeah i've been sober for a long time we used to just we used to just soak it in like sugar cubes and like 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 uh, yeah that was the best till gel gel tabs came out and then um i started turning around and seeing purple um i I knew that's when i was done (laughs) <laughs> well I, I went over i met some shamans like my and my wife and i couldn't conceive and then we met these catholic shamans from brazil and they they said well one like my wife had cancer and so they had to get rid of that and the doctors wanted to laser off all the cancer and like offer uterus it would scar it and make it so that they said you're definitely not gonna have children and well, so like we ironically these brazilian shamans uh from uh like an area about like four or five hours from sao paulo and they were in the united states and they had this frog poison called combo and so they they treat it for like they use it for like malaria but they also use it in santo daime and the daime church is where they're where they're out of uh, and the Santo Daime was from their master Irino, and his his father was Catholic, and he uh, was a rubber tree tapper from Africa, and he's and he <clears throat> so master Irino. Nice, yeah. Those guys are. Yeah, he was drinking ayahuasca. True masters. Yeah, he was drinking ayahuasca, and he saw he said he saw the Virgin Mary in the forest, so he started you know having the hymns of La Foresta, and so the Santo Daime, the Holy Church. Of, they stop. They stop stripping rubber off of trees because of that shit. Oh really? I didn't know that. But, yeah, um, yeah. Well, so they so they sat with us and they had us drink ayahuasca all night, and then they were blowing hot pay up our nose, which is like a powdered like herbs and like like a, some sort of tobacco they grow, and like and then they put these what's called sananga in our eyes, and we went blind for like twenty minutes. So we're like we couldn't see. We're on we're on ayahuasca, having like all these visions, and I was like, and then like that's happening all night long. And then uh, they're singing Hint, Santo Dino. Yeah, they love, the they love fucking up white people. Um, so they, and then in the morning came sunrise. And like, I'm I'm like holding like a fire. Like we're outside and like, I'm trying to do all this stuff. There's like 40, 50 people there. I'm like hosting like a, like a Native American, <laughs> like church type fire. So I'm sitting there running fire in the door because we're in a big teepee on my friend Mayor's land. And uh, so all these people like throwing up and buckets and like uh, we're cleaning like buckets and stuff. And then, and then come morning, um, 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 they're like, all right. And like, so they take out the frog poison and like the combo frog and they start, and they burned holes in our arm and up on our like shoulder and stuff, or like sometimes on our chest. And they put this frog poison in our, in our arm. And immediately, like I, my body felt like it was like 200 degrees, like on fire. And I was like, I literally felt like I was dying. Like I thought I was like dying. I was like, I'm gonna die. Like I was laying down to die. But then I, every time I lay down, I'd be like, oh, like, like I would have to sit up. And then all of a sudden, like I just started projectile vomiting. And they don't, and like they, the way they believe it is like you're purging demons. So you're purging all these demons and all these. Did you aspects. have any um, telepathical? powers for all this yeah basically you're mind melding so it's everything's like mind melded but i mean uh, like when this dude's looking at you a different language whatever like you 
Like, did you know what he was thinking? Sort of. Um, inherently, yeah, because they're doing energetic work with you, and part of them, part of the way the shaman works is they they enter into you and they do like works. So basically, like they're they're on so much ayahuasca, like, but they they they're like they walk in like this void. So they they enter like this void that other people don't even within themselves don't want to enter into. So they enter into this void and start no, ripping. I, I understand that. Yep. Yeah, they start taking all these aspects out of you and but the frog poison is more a physical yeah, yeah they're just the killing, they're killing the white they're killing the white man in you um <laughs> so but the, like well my, my you know, grandmother was yeah, and they're American, and they're, so they're, they're uh like, immune to it because they did it a million times right but, but so they just have a different look on their well, face so the, but i guess my main point is the frog poison like strips your it, like you purge all the bile out of your liver like you literally like purge like bright liquid oh, yeah, yeah, green yeah, stuff out of your liver. You, yeah, you secrete all. Kinds yeah, like, of shit. yeah, it sque- it's like squeezes your organs. <laughs> and, like I just I I believe in a higher being where, um, telepathy has always been with us, and they suppress it from us, and let alone block it through um estrogen mimickers and chemtrails and all those kind of things. Yeah, the um, food anything and the heavy to metals. Block, any, the pineal everything, gland, the everything, classification right. of the correct, classification correct. of the pineal gland, and this. That's I mean, we DMT's already, made. we already, well, we create DMT in our brain, and we already right. have it. And sometimes you can release it. Not um, if your pineal just, gland's like calcified from all the shit food and right. But sometimes, like metals. you know, you crack your neck the right fucking way, you're releasing <laughs> right. some shit, right? But anyway, I I believe that this helps bring this out. You know. um like yeah, get- like um like Joe Rogan I think explains it to like uh on your deathbed you see all these visions and and these are the visions you see with these things. So Right, right. Um like let's say probably get- these probably the biggest key with me though, and that's what really freaked me the fuck out was that I could read all these people's fucking minds and I, I went nuts and they were ready to lock me up. And, um, then I realized, Oh shit, it's a secret. I gotta be quiet. <laughs> you know, well, I think um, the, the way I like, I have the way I view one thing is that if you start to like, there's one, like you, you work with these as a medicine and then there's two, you actually abuse it as a drug and then the drug starts to abuse you back. And that's when yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you start to I lose mean, your I, I definitely, yeah. I definitely agree with both those sentiments. Um, I also think like, okay, it, it, oh, it's not working. It's not working. Oh shit. I fucked up, you know, or, um, oh fuck. What did I stumble upon? Or, you know, someone like me, uh, they brought me, they explained it and then brought me into it. And I'm like, Oh shit, they're right. So, I mean, there's tons of aspects of way of looking at it and coming in and, um, but you know, telepathical power of being able to communicate telepathically and, um, you know, someone like Zuckerberg that wants to come out with a product to sell you to do it. And you already have it is fucked up. Um, definitely suppressing all the technology that's already been here for since reindeer in Russia or whatever mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. tripping on fucking mushrooms and talking to fucking deer. Yeah, and written down on fucking scribblets. You know the technology has been here forever, and they suppress it. You know. Um. Yeah. If we I'm were to the, be able to read yeah. each other's minds, would the elite tell you that, or would they just have the best shit and not tell you? Oh, you need a uh, you need a fucking brain implant. Uh, you need this. Don't buy the five dollar fucking rocket well, science fucking tablet. Yeah. Well, you I know? mean, the electromagnetic whatever they're doing with the with that neuron brain thing. I mean, I guess there is some sort of regenerative like electromagnetic like pulse rate they are connecting through technology so it's very interesting it's very like crazy to look at like yeah we're gonna be like we're two steps away from like uploading ourselves into a machine or something like a but, robot. I, but i look at i look <laughs> at you and damien right and you're way smarter than me and i say all right 
fucking Elon's gonna let me come in for free to for this free trial. Oh, or hey, five hundred bucks, mm-hmm. and I can have this brain chip. Sounds and I'm the fucking smartest person you ever met. Sounds crazy. Would I do it just to compete with you and Damien? Like, fucking right. Um, should I do it? No. Did I already fry my brain? Yes. Do I have another chance? No. Like, there's a, like there's these little things that say, do it, but don't do it, right? Um, I don't want to be fucking into it, but in Damien's mind, I already am. So, did I do it? You know, um, but what would happen if I was the smartest dude you ever fucking met? Like, that'd be scary. Probably, probably look to learn. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably look to learn something from you. I just let, I just lay my team. Well, I mean, but the thing is, man, like but, you said something, you said something earlier to me, and that's why you're smarter than 99% of the people I talk with, because you actually shared something that was emotional. Like that's some, that's intelligence when pe- people can't share intelligently, like a, in like emotion because they're so afraid of emotion. But if you like put a little, like, what's that? Like if you sprinkle a little emotion into it, then like, then there's some intelligence and then we can connect on like a human level of like real people and the other shit is all like unintelligent. To me. That's just me though. That's just my own opinion that you are very intelligent because you're able to be honest with me. And that's like, that's intelligent. Um, <clears throat> And I get spaces are fun to bullshit around and stuff like that. But when you actually really like. Yeah, I mean, I think people get immune to um, people regardless if they're in your life every day or if they're on a space or they're on uh, a social network or um, you go to the bank every day and you see the same lady or the same supermarket or whatever. Um, You get immune to certain people and you're like, you got to fun them out a little bit um, or you get sick of them because you see them every fucking day. Um, you know, like when I go to work with someone every day and they're my boss or they're, you know, they're my coworker, like you're cool at first and then fuck, you get sick of each other and then fucking 10 years down the road, you're like, oh, the fuck, you know, I got, you know, it's like worse than a marriage. Like, at least your marriage, like, at least you get to go to work every day. When you're, when you're with that, if you were with your wife or husband, whatever the fuck is, all day, every day, you're going to fucking kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when, when you're married to someone or whatever, and you go to work, at least you're gone eight hours of a day or whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah, we we well, my wife so and I kind of stick in our it, own mode, so we. we well, you really you get you catch crazy. my drift. Yeah, when you guy. go to work with someone every day, like you want to kill that fucking dude every day because you work with him every day, and um, it gets old real quick, and um, that's a fucking relationship. Like, like you're kind of married to work is is not a joke, right? Like when you're sitting on a computer all day and you're not really, and you have your boss coming around, that's one thing. But when you're like a, like a plumber like me and you have one fucking boss and then you go do HBC and you have another boss and another boss and you got to work with these dudes every fucking day. You're yelling at each other. Where the fuck is this? Where the fuck Mm -hmm. is that tool? Would you break this? No, it wasn't me. Oh, oh, who else was it? There was no one else here. Like, well, what the fuck you blaming me? Like, like it's worse than a marriage. You know what I mean? Like when, when they say you're married to your work, don't be married to an idea. Don't be married to your work. Uh, yeah, don't yeah, love it. yeah, yeah. Don't they're love saying, anything. don't be fucking yeah. married. Don't, don't well, procreate. Don't fucking do shit. I guess, I guess but, like, don't fall in love with your product. Yeah. Kind of talking to really, but, but you catch my drift. You work yeah. with the same dude every fucking day. Like sometimes I, I go to work. I love to go to work because I love creating and I love I love everything about it, right? Um, creating and ideas and coming up with you know every little aspect. Yeah. Well, um, I guess my boss they might not Bitcoin. see the difference. <laughs> they, they're like, I'm sick of your yeah. shit. Stop talking and just get the fuck to work, you know. But um, but at the same time, like it's not my wife. I'm just glad to be here. 
I don't care if you don't pay me or not. Just don't send me home. But, you know, that only comes from, like, when you spend every day at home. And you're like, I get the fuck out of here and get a job. You know, so, I mean, it comes from every different aspect of working with someone for years and years or, or days or whatever. It adds up quick. Um, so there's a lot of different views you see every day and, and um, how you aspect shit and how you present stuff. And, dude, I just fucking read this article, right, where um, it doesn't matter the, the, the type of person you are or the type of um, how you bring it up, but the way you act could trigger something in somebody that brings some somebody else out and they think it it's that and it triggers them and, and you don't know it and it triggers that person to a point where like you should just shut the fuck up and back the fuck up right and you don't know it you're just being you whatever and this other entity in in their past life or whatever fucked with their head and just does not like you does not fucking want to deal with you does not want to deal with you or talk to you because of something that happened to them in the past right and um no matter what you do you can't fix it you can't like oh sorry dude i didn't mean that you know uh is everything all right can we get back to work they're just fucking strong like they're just fucking and especially today with um people having um what's that called uh You know, where they have to take a dog on the plane, you know, they need a fucking a call. Uh, I don't know, being a wet blanket to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good term, but uh, so, like like uh, emotional like, support yeah. animal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, blanket. they need an emotional support, whatever. It's okay and, to be um, a wet blanket from time to time, but like, not like. Yeah, you know, you you like, you I'm go a out soft, in the I'm a like, soft sit dude. By yourself kind of shit. Yeah, but I'm a soft dude. Like, people call me soft, but I mean, construction here is just so long. I don't need a fucking emotional fucking nothing. But this dude does. This person does. And I can't even support him. Like, here, here's a puppy, dude. Just calm the fuck down. I can't even do that. You know, um, but, you know, being in the construction industry, where you're beaten down every day every day you're beating like literally beaten down emotionally every day to the point where all right like where they used to say you're you're beaten up to the point where you're beating someone else to bring them in right um not that I ever agreed with that, but it's there and it's not going to change. And, um, when I hired people from, let's say my own thing to help me out and I beat them down, I look at their face and I'm like, this isn't right. What, what the fuck am I doing? What am I saying? I look at them and I'm like, this isn't right. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. Um, this is just the way I was brought up in the construction industry, and I'm sorry to bring you into the construction industry. But look, dude, if you go anywhere else, they're going to be assholes. But look, you got to just move a little faster, or do this, or listen to what I say. Or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, a little softer, right? Right. Well, and, but if someone's life dude, is on the line. This, and you're this dude would safe, go like, somewhere else. This dude would, yeah. would go somewhere else and quit or, or, or give up or get fired and said, look, maybe I, maybe I push you a little bit. All right. I, I go macho man on him a little bit, you know, but at the end of the day, I'd take him out for a beer. Like, yeah, you fucking worked hard today. You took my shit today. I soften them up. I, I softened the fucking kid up, just like my dad softened me up, and like his dad softened him up. You know what I mean? And I shouldn't have done that. Construction is not easy, dude. You you work with an asshole, 
that's nothing. Go work with the other guy. <laughs> like, go go over here. Yeah. Like, could you imagine me in your fucking computer space? Like, you fucked up this code. Would you fucking hire this? You, you can only imagine those swear words coming out of my mouth. Like, it doesn't compute. Like, it doesn't go together. It is com well, completely different, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, people's lives are at risk, right? I, I, uh, I well, sometimes you got to look at that way and people, you know, you, if I, let's say I was a construction worker hiring you and I was soft and let you go. Well, then next thing you know, you're not working. You're not doing this. You know, I'm soft. Now you're not working fast enough, hard enough, this yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So these guys are mostly hard on you to get the most out of it. Well, that's, but that's most people, team. yeah, that's like team. Effort, but most right? people just they, they get destroyed under that. Like, what the fuck? I can't well, handle it, you know. Well, then they have no business being there. Well, that's they not can, necessarily they can, true. Well, they but, can try and be there, but if they're gonna do that day after day, then they don't. But if, if we continue, like, let's say I go work for Oracle and um, I'm designing on how to um, fig me how to fit your shit in the back of your truck. Right. And I miscalculate one box that's off size. And they say, well, an Indian could have done this. A Chinese guy could have done this. A fucking AI could have done this. I'm done. My only job as a white guy is to, is to check the fucking Indian code, the Chinese code and your AI code. It's my only job left. Working for Oracle. Think about that. Well, that's all they do is process of how to pack fucking shit into trucks and containers. Well, I, I feel like Indian pe like people in India can write code better than any white person. <laughs> then why? So then why I, is, I'll say that. Then <laughs> why? Then why is my people checking their code every day? Uh, and they're fucking it up because of because of, every because of yeah because of fake bullshit privilege um, unfortunately no nah, i think i think In it's the code goes. i think it's the code itself hmm. and it, they send them through their schools very quickly that is true yeah that could be true um, um if, if even if i slowly put them through and they got better they would have better jobs they wouldn't work at oracle <laughs> they'd be working at better places but um, not that Oracle sucks or anything, but yeah. at the same time, they're not taught the, to check their code, right? And they just write code. Someone else is going to check it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, it is part of competency. And do you think AI will take over all of Oracle of organizing that shit and all of them have been eliminated i do you I, think it's right for uh, us well, as americans to bring in other countries to code our shit um yeah i mean because like i'm i've worked i with mean there's teams. definitely too many white people at google but at uh, oracle like are you really well, you know well I, I i've worked with teams and structured and like you know teams that were multi-denominational and and multicultural so it's to me it's not really an issue yeah, there's good people and there's bad people i don't care yeah. what nationality you are. So, yeah, I don't care you, what... yeah okay so if you look at it like that um then yeah you work with a good team and I mean, you look work at me with... i know nothing well i mean it's good to, that we claim to know nothing and, and stay that way so we don't well, build a big I, ego i tried to stay outside the bounds to look in to be i agree with you the idea guy yeah. but being the idea guy is really tough. I think I think you're right. I mean, the way I kind of relate to it is like because you're talking about construction. Is I used to do theatrical rigging, um, and I, I was born on I was like born and like raised on like a tour bus for a bit. Like you know, my father was a head rigger for Depeche Mode and like Leonard Skinner and really Ario Speed, yeah, Ario Speedway. Yo, give me like, some fucking records, bud. Run to, oh yeah, I got the I got old Beatles. And I'm like a I'm a big Depeche Mode fan. Yeah, um, yeah, no, he's got all those. He's got backstage cars and shit. But anyways, my, I guess my point is like I was okay. raising that, and like he would, he would, he was a head rigger of these bands, and like, and and Fish as well. Actually, his name is on the album of Fish, a live one. 
And uh bag it, bag it. And so yeah, so he's got he sell it to the butcher in the store. <laughs> but um he got off the road to raise me and he started training people. But the thing is like I went into rigging and it's kind of like that, like Rigging is tough. That's a tough gig. Um, yeah, because you're yell, well, yeah, yelling you're at each chain. other. Like, yeah, yeah you're, that's, you're literally screaming. That's right at each up other. there with union work, construction work. That's well, we right are, up there. Like, yeah, we're tough in the shit. That's some yeah. tough shit. Yeah, yeah. IATSE union. Because so, like, I, I, I did a little bit of it in uh-huh. Philly, and um, okay. they were like, yeah, you, get, you can't you, handle it. Get out. Right, exactly. So that's what I was saying. And like, I'm like, I, I think can that's handle why. this. I'm a construction worker, and the yeah. dude's like, "Do you just get the fuck out of here?" Because oh, really? it, it gets worse. Yeah, and so that's just and I work with like, unions and shit, and I'm like, I trusted the guy. I was like, All right, you mean, yeah. as much as I want to be here and set up this guitar, if I'm fuck, <laughs> if I fuck up, they're gonna yell at you. Yeah, you're gonna get. Yeah, it. yeah you're not. You're Which not I gonna, can handle. <laughs> I I get yelled at every day, no matter who I work for, but. Um, I told him I, I can handle this. It's fine. And he's like, nah, well, let's get the fuck out of here. Well, so and, and, that, and I had to travel. I had to travel like the Minneapolis and do all this shit. Yeah, I'm not traveling. I mean, but like, um, I was working Ario Speedwagon. I mean, not Ario Speedwagon. Sorry, I was working uh, um, Bon Jovi before he passed away. And and uh, Bon, bon Jovi uh, passed away. Not Bon. Who is it? Who am I thinking of? Bon Jovi about? didn't fucking pass away, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Bon Jovi did not fucking pass away. Wait, who? Tom Petty? No, not Tom Petty. Um, fucking Bon, dude. How old are you again? Thirty-four. Come on, meow. Bon Jovi will outlive me, dude. And I'm 45 or 46 or some shit like that. Yeah, Bon Jovi uh, died at 70, man. Bon Jovi's not dead, dude. Oh, oh no, Alec John. Sorry, man. My bad. Uh, his ba- the bassist guy. Sorry. My bad. You mean um, hearts you just broke if they were listening to the show? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You know how many um, women would just, well, she would just cry right now? You can't say that. Anyways, he did he did a show. My point is like he did a show at Fenway Park. And I guess because you were saying like, yeah, it's like a kind of cutthroat industry. The reason is because like when I'm up in a steel grid and I'm pulling 90 pound of chain for for a light for a rigging lighting point so that I make sure this is hung safely yeah, over, that's, over, yeah. over his yeah. head. So like that. Yeah, that's fucking, fucking union kills. work, dude. That's yeah, fucking... so I don't. So I don't kill the band, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but when anyway. there's a guy, when there's a guy who's kind of not been there as much as I am, and he's oh, yeah. like, like this guy's like, this like I'm telling like a kind of specific kind of thing. This guy's like kind of like you were saying, like the kid who's like, hey, get him a beer, but then you gotta be get a little bit hard on him. Uh, yeah. But this yeah. guy's like, no, they're tall. This guy's like 180 pounds, like built more than I am, and he's scared to sit on a little beam and hold half the fucking uh, one ton chain. Cause, uh, like for a one ton hoist, I mean, that can hoist up one ton. And I'm holding yeah. like 90 pounds of chain, like, cause it's a foot a pound. So I'm like 90 feet in the air. And this guy doesn't want to hold the other the chain I'm holding with my leg. And if he lets go, that chain's going to rip my leg over yeah. the beam and like rip yeah. it out of its socket. And I'll be yeah. hanging there fucking like, and I'll probably. Yeah, I mean, it's you know. no joke. I mean, and he's I, like, I'm going to let go. On... I'm going to let go of it. I'm screaming at the guy. You're not going to yeah. fucking let go of it. You're going to hold the chain and you're going to get through this. And like, so he's like, Oh, he's like shaking. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and we got, I, we I got was, through it, but yeah, we're screaming yeah, I mean, at each other to keep each other. I was, alive. I was in a couple of those predicaments at, at, at raves, um, where I'm holding lasers and this laser is $10,000 in the nineties, which is yeah. a lot of money back then. Oh yeah, that's the other um, thing. Yeah, don't fuck the and I'm out. I'm putting these lasers <laughs> up and I'm doing this and that and they're like you're fucked up on drugs and I'm like no I didn't fucking even do anything yet. And they're like well, well you got to sit here and do this and I'm like well the fucking autograph from this DJ is not worth nothing. I don't care if you have me fucking hanging out with him and his crew in the back it's not worth it. Um. Like you, you got to do something for me like this. I don't want no money. Um, and that's when they, they let me hang out with the fucking crew, dude. 
That's dope. And I got to go to Brooklyn and do concrete jungle and do all these cool fucking things. And um, unfortunately, all my buddies sold drugs and it was bad. Um, but I got to meet the coolest fucking people to my life to this day. Um, and it, and this drum and bass crew, you guys probably never heard of, right? Um, but they're still around, man. And it's cool as shit. Um, I really wish certain people could listen to drum and bass documentaries and stuff. Um, I've always caught, like, I've always played in punk rock bands and, um, played in bands and I still play bass and, uh, I play every instrument, but if you know without drum and bass every song would pretty much suck that's how i look at it right like i don't care if you're sting or who you are elvis you can sing all day but without a drum and a bassist and they never got credit you know they never get credit johnny bottom and some of those guys could you know, let's Claypool get credit, but love less Claypool. But but without drum and bass, music sucks. And yeah. um I always stuck to drum and bass techno. Um Les well, Claypool and Cliff yeah. Cliff are my favorites as what a basis. Of, what do you think of a uh, lead basis as Les Claypool? Yeah. So yeah. That, that's what I always try to pretend to be or whatever you want to call it but well, what do you think of bass nectar man do you like bass nectar yeah yeah i mean when bass nectar came out i liked them they kind of went um full bore um and i didn't like what they were doing with the with the with the um what do they call that um I <laughs> yeah, I just had a brain for er, writer's block. Um, the um, the fuck's it called, man? I'm such a fucking asshole about it. Um, well, basically, it's half bass, it's half drum and bass. It's like the half drop. Um, the uh, um, real as well, but. It's a genre, I guess. Yeah, dubstep. It's, it is dubstep, like, dubstep. Yeah, he does kind of like dubstep. So dubstep is well, just half step of drum and bass. So basically, you're just taking drum, you're just taking drum and bass beats, and doing well, the half step. So when my it, drum and bass, when my drum and bass people invented dubstep, we didn't know, like we didn't call it nothing, right? We were just dubbing. <laughs> So when they just created dubstep, they just kind of took our shit and dubbed it and stepped it, right? So they kind of stole our shit and made a whole new genre, which is awesome. Like, I love techno. There's always new genres. And um, I love dubstep, what it did to the industry, you know, this kind of thing. But when you when you go back to the drum and bass guys that when dubstep take off, and they were like, fuck, the fuck's going on? And they started bringing their, their dub plates and their dubstep back into drum and bass. They fucking killed it. So you go back to the Destroyer um, from New York. He's called the Destroyer. Um, he fucking destroyed dubstep. You know what I'm saying? Um, because we were kind of the innovators of that. And we, not that we didn't want credit, not that we wanted credit, because I was making dub plates at that time, right? So, not that we wanted credit, but we were like, yeah, 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 for the true fans out there that followed us, um, here's our shit, like, and here's our original shit, and uh, we're sticking to it. 
you know, kind of like original Bitcoin years, right? When the Fearing came out, like, um, we're just sticking to our bit fucking Bitcoin here. Um, when you're ready, come on back. We're here, right? We're, we'll be sitting here with ancient technology that you, you know, and then you, maybe you realize what you stole from us. But at the same time, we didn't go over step with dove step, like, and that's where they started doing the drops and the dove step and, and, um, what the fuck's his name? And as much as we love the attention, we didn't get any of that attention, right? Like we're the original drum and bass people, jungle. Um, we get still no credit today. No one's coming to our shows. Um, and drum and bass has evolved every year since it came out. So, um, but that dubstep kind of fucked us up in a way where they were taking our drum and bass to dubstep. Like they weren't taking techno, they weren't taking fucking Alan Alanis Morissette, the fucking dubstep. Like they were taking our shit, stealing it, and dub dubbing it, right? And we knew it was our beats. But no one would know. Hey, I didn't know. Um, so there was no like, hey, you stole our beat. Right? But we knew, because we can hear it in our fucking ears. Like, we know what you, you know, we know you stole it from a fucking Michael Jackson album to a fucking, we, we know what beat you stole it from just by our ears. Um, and that whole fit, fat is way gone, right? Like, it's totally gone the new drum and bass is completely totally different but at that time man like we were pissed we were pissed and, and not because these people were making money um not because they took the credit or the light it was because you took our fucking record <laughs> made something out of it and and didn't say uh, oh oh thanks benji for that or you know most of us would steal shit. We would thank the fucking dude that made the original record. Does that make sense? Like, you go listen to my shit, I thank fucking Phil Collins and BC Boys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. The two records I stole. But, if that makes any sense. But these guys, they didn't give a fuck. They were dubstep. They, uh, it was on. Next thing you know, there was marshmallow. Little kids are listening to it. I'm like, well, little kids shouldn't be going to fucking raves, even though I was a little kid at 13 going to a rave, doing acid. Um, I don't want my granddaughter at 13 going to a fucking rave. Oh yeah, no, definitely you know? not. So, you know, we have these feelings, and that you can't stop, you can't block. Um, man, Damien didn't even come up that little bitch. You better come back. Well, I guess, um, I guess, like, when I was noting kind of, like, Bass Nectar is, like, I guess I was going to say, like, when I... No, when Bass I, Nectar did some cool shit. Don't get really, me wrong. It's, like, yeah, technology... It's really no, no. Like, I'm not talking shit on them. Well, no, I was gonna, I was actually going to say, like, just real but, quick that um, his his rig, when you're sitting up, like, when I was when I was running electrical for, like, Bass Nectar, um, half yeah, his, his... It's all, his it's, it's all for fucking crazy, well, dude. But that's just it, man. It's just for show. Like half of them aren't even hooked up. Like they come out there, you're unloading eighteen wheelers, and like people are bringing in. Yeah, I know. Running, I know all running, that. Yeah, like, they're not even plex. They're just hitting a. Rec you're just hitting a button. They, pretending yeah, they're fucking. Like it's yeah, Milli not, Vanilli all over again. Yeah, like I, I looked at um, like we only hooked and, up like and look, half his You don't stacks. have to say that on a recorder space. Like I'm not. Well, but his them. energy, but his energy for the bass he did have, like in uh the people and yeah, how he the people, no doubt. it was it was it was no intense. Doubt. It was really but, intense. But like when you see a DJ. Dancing around, you're not working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like he's like he's like have, standing there like a yeah he's not, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's nice not just him. Like most of these festivals, like these people go up and they don't change the um any of the DJ stuff. And someone zoomed in, like noticed that this AV player wasn't plugged in. Like nothing was plugged into the back of these units, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it makes it out there. And, and look, we don't, we're not trying to say that to the festival, right? 
Um, but us internal people are like, dude, the shit's not even hooked up right. They don't even have the AV plugged in. And and most of these artists actually go up and say, they wouldn't even let me fucking do it. They just said, here, we're playing this recording. You just pretend you're doing And they were pissed. Mm. They were pissed. And they were like, look, I know I'm getting paid for this, but come on, dude, let me play a fucking live show. Yeah. They were like, no. But <laughs> when, um, when uh my boy went up um he's like none dude i'm doing my own shit and i'm playing my other boy's stuff and that's it all right all right we'll do that for the final well it took him like an hour and a half to plug shit in because no one plugged anything in that whole show and that was fucking trent renzer before that <laughs> <laughs> so even Trent Reznor is uh I forget what the band is called um wasn't fucking plugged in like like yeah you know and that's not a conspiracy theory that's all so I mean I don't really know like plug anybody out but it's like they don't let them do that shit at these festivals man it's not their fault you know even if bass nectar is true and real or even if Skrill or any of these people are real. They don't let them. Like wrestling, right? Make it look real, but it's not real. You know? Um, and these people are pissed off. That's why they do their underground shit. That's why I've always been underground. That's why I stay underground, right? Yeah. My boys are all out in LA right now, and I wish I was there for drum and bass. Um, um, and it pisses me off because they're all like um, East Coast people. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing in LA? You know what I mean? Hmm. All right, you might sell like three more records over there and then come back. But what'd you sell? Fucking three records you made. All my boys fly out there. They're all retired, old, the older and me heads. You know I feel what I'm like saying? New York has a bigger scene than LA is kind of I right. Know. I mean, as far as drum and bass is concerned, especially with these guys, um, DJ Dare and AK twelve hundred and um, the Destroyer. Um, I mean, next to New York, you might as well go to Europe. But even my boys went over there back in the day, and and they don't give them recognition of Frankie Bones. Um, but like, I, I I go down the same path of hip hop. Like my boy, cute, cool Keith, they don't give him recognition. Um, like in crypto, man, like they don't give people recognition enough. It doesn't matter what you do, how much you do. I'll give you recognition, brother. I know where you're at. I know where your mental sassage is. Don't fucking ever expect it from these people. And if it does, just stay in the fucking shadows, dude. You don't want these fucking people's fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? You you really don't want to be a poly. Polly, as much as I fucking hate him, he's got some balls, right? He's got some yeah. fucking balls. Well, I mean, he's got some fucking balls. He's not like um, doing the development work. Like he's not. He's not actually Nobody like a developer. Is, dude. If he did the developer work, it would suck. Well, I think he. Well, I think. I think he. I don't think he's. Think even about doing, that. Well, I thought he's he, just well, a fucking like me. Well, well people. Say I don't know how to do developer work, but you want an advertiser? You want an asshole to go out there and fucking be an advertiser and a marketing fucking asshole? Well, you hire me, and I hide you, right? Uh, I thought he ripped off Ben East. A lot of people say he ripped. He needs off fucking ripped off himself. I don't know. But a lot of other people said like, "Oh, like, I, like, like he's he's he was doing the pump." You do one he's... little thing, yeah, one little a... thing, you're fucked, yeah. right? Is that what do you mean? Right? That's why I'm fucking the person. Because what am I worth to you? Nothing. I'm done. I'm a scape. Oh, well. I'm a scapegoat. That's why I'm worth something. If I can be Paulie and just keep 
pulling the bullshit out of my ass, calling people gay every day, keeping the fucking views. No well, bad gonna, publicity. Yeah. No bad publicity is good publicity, right? Well, but he's like not I really said, gonna... you do the homework, I do the fucking running. Well, I just, I just I'll don't fuck think... it up. I just don't. See, I know enough to get in trouble. That's for sure. I just but think uh, these people. It's got to be a good really... project. Yeah, I just don't think these people are gonna really be here or be anything in like the next. These people few said years. he wouldn't make it three months. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm There's saying people like, that I say think... it wouldn't make it six months. Yeah, well, here he is, in my fucking face. Uh, I mean, people like I don't know what happened with Safe Moon, but like, look, I, kinda, I can go. I I'm know. hanging out with shows with Jason Williams, Bobby yeah. Zoo, all these peeps. All these pets, nobody. They don't accept nobody. Um, no. They didn't not accept me. But do I really want to be accepted into a little fucking clan? I don't know. So, I don't know. It kind of sounds like a waste of time. It That's is, just me, though. But, it might not be I'm for learning, others. Might, I'm researching, I mean, I'm doing my shit, right? I told you that. Well, well, let me, I guess, let me, let me say this. Like, uh, it might not be a waste of some people because maybe there's someone up on that, on whoever's, you know, stage. Well, I know stage, what not to do. And, and maybe that person's like, maybe that person's like stuck in a wheelchair at a desk and I like, can't move because, and all he can do is. Like, Dude, move, I would like, love that. I would like, love that. His, all he can do is like move his mouth. And so like him being up on the space is that. like. Is not a waste. As long of time as you didn't go to F side in the island, I would love that. Because, yeah, because <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a whole other. Yeah, that's like ridiculous. Um, but, but like, as the, much as I wish I I could do what you did, or what Damien does, or and Damien's a totally different entity. So, but. so I mean, like, what I, I guess my point is like these people going on these spaces. Maybe it is beneficial for them. Maybe it's like well, it sounds I'm like it sounds to be like this the craziest dev, like or I'm not that. I'm supposed to be this fucking first person for this new coin. Mm-hmm. And I can't even talk about it. I can't do anything about it and then when I do come about it, here the space is recorded and they fucking rat me out. My own boys, my own peeps. And um uh. They are fucking cold, calculated people. Well, they and just they will, make money off of a shit coin? No, 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 no. They okay. just want you, they just want everyone else to fail. Um, well, that's impossible because um, it's not. But you hear about, what I'm like, saying, right? You hear what I'm saying? Well, they, you, fail, they don't care about f- me. Well, it's not that f- they want me to fail. They want this fucking project to fail because it wasn't their idea. They want this project to fail because they didn't think of it. Oh, they weren't behind it. Oh, they yeah, didn't they did. know about it. Oh, yeah, they, they didn't. Did. Yeah, but that's not going to make a project. Well, they fail, fucking <laughs> muted every telegram. So how are they supposed to know about it? Yeah, yeah, but that's not going to make a project fail. But put up your fucking. Even if you that muted like... your fucking telegram, like the fucking notifications are still there. Just check them. Scroll through them, um, fucking ten seconds. Who cares? What what fails and, and is teams was in. They're coming teams. after me. Like, how do you know all this information? <laughs> um, I work every day. Or, yeah, I try to work every day. Um, and I scroll through the fucking information like very quickly. Like I could read through a fucking thesaurus in ten seconds, but whatever. Um, and I grab what's real and what's there and what's not. Um. Can you at least do that? And you call yourself a dev? You call yourself this? You, you, you say you're busy working on stuff? I don't know what the fuck you're working on. But your shit that you've been working on for a year and a half, has I don't see anything. Um, you hire all these people. You do all these things. You've gotten nowhere. Maybe you should have listened to me. I, and I hate to be that dude that said I'm right or something, or you should have listened. Because I know nothing. I'm, I'm nothing. Um, but just like I shoot you ideas, right? Like I say, hey, um, you know, maybe this, maybe that, not that. I'm not saying I'm right, but 
I'm going to give you my most honest fucking opinion of if I were going to do it and if I were rich or if I could do that or if I was a program, I could do this. You know, I'm never going to say you're wrong. But I hate when I'm right. I hate when I'm right. You know what I'm saying? If I was in your position, I would know absolutely, you know, where to go. But when you're sitting on the outside looking in, you can be like, yo, I would do this. I would do that. Yeah. That kind of thing. Right? I mean, you could agree with that, right? Uh, I think for when I think of, when I look at like a, a developer standpoint, um, I really don't really look to unless i'm like re- unless i see someone like really struggling they have a good vision like they they have like a good head on their shoulder and like a really interesting vision that they, right, they right, believe right. in their and they believe in like a vision that makes well, how sense how many of those people can you name like, yeah but the, the they the, it, they typically it's like the money first and that's right when, that's why correct. I, at a developer pay correct point this is this is, this is two aspects of this because it's a double-edged sword one aspect looking at a developer standpoint and you look at teams who need developers because they need because they they because they have like money oh, yeah. signs absolutely. in their eyes. Absolutely. Because, absolutely. Because it's like then they, they're not gonna yeah. make it. So they're gonna yeah. fail right then and there. Yeah. And then the absolutely. second the second point is is that um looking for a developer and the developers asking for money right away or asking for a salary right away, they don't believe in your fucking vision either. So building a developer team is those two aspects have to be weaned out to so have something be successful. And um so so and, and no offense, but ninety nine percent of these projects. Let me just say this, and then I have okay. nothing else to say. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Ninety nine percent of these projects. It could. I can't say it one way or the other. Maybe Paulie is doing this so he could pay fucking attorney fees and shit. But he's just saying no. This is about community. And dude, and, he's uh, made so much money talking about it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so nine million might not be nothing to him. Anyways, so what do I know? I know nothing. But, you know, I could, but but it's it, it could be a point. But anyways, on the other hand, of things, that can make him better too. That could yeah. also like no such thing as bad publicity making good voice. Right. So, but I can make him another nine million. But ninety nine percent of the the projects out there. But his dad's paying for that. Ninety nine percent of the projects out there aren't going to make it, and and because they're going to have either some other issue going on to, right like to, like he put it out there wasted nine million but he got 10 mil so yeah so, so that's only one mil profit that's nothing what um, that's bad like publicity a bad publicity got him one mil to cover his bills for the year wow just traveling for lawyers well so so here's the way but i look anyway at it. here's, here's the you way can I look, look at it a million different yeah. ways and so yep, here's yep. the way i look at it um two 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 people and i you know one's one's developer and myself were developing and then uh uh, uh a friend who's working on on communications and things and helping structure for pitch deck come march um let's put it this way uh like last cohort team built team built tool within like a matter of weeks like we like kind of like like how we are and then vc funds and they kept going with vc firms and the <laughs> angel investor part they've raised 3.5 million for for building for free all right, so now they have like all this work and they're still raising capital. And then their product now has done a million dollar volume and it's going to continuously grow for lending. Right. This is called look this is called liquidium. They're like lending yeah, 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 dogs. Yeah. And they built for they built for free. So when I look so developers and I we're working for free because we believe in a vision of an right. end, of an end source that we can solve something for our customer and our angel user. Right, right, that, right. Those, and I, I call that a These cult. are tools okay. that last. When you but like something like you know, like I don't see what pond water is solving. People are like running around in their head, like staking this and like you know putting a deficit Dude, you on that. You don't want to know what I've done the last it's, two weeks. It's reminding with, me of like with, with pond and, people. And, well, and safe so, and, like drained and like and I, so I, I don't said, see. I really when I go into spaces and I say, when I oh, say, sorry, but no, when I go into spaces and I say it's a video game. It's a DGEN like video Hold on. staking game. It's a video game slash gambling site 
slash right. Gen thing. They every fucking one of them, whether they were losing or winning, agreed with me. But do and you think I that's thought, gonna be here? Let me ask this: Do you I think that's gonna be here in three years? This guy <laughs> invented something to capture these stupid motherfuckers. All right, how's that sound? Or awesome motherfuckers. I don't care how you say it. Well, this is nothing new. This okay. is happening. This kind of shit was happening. But he Trump captured blockchain. these people. Oh, yeah. And Did got it? them stuck in a video game to keep putting their quarters in the fucking oh, arcade right, game. Right. Yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. And I call that a gambling site, but it's a video game, right? And he did it. He saw something. Well, I thought... Is this dude a visionary? Absolutely. Well, I thought people said he... Is he awesome? Fuck this racist fucking homophobic motherfucker. Well, I thought I thought he ripped... Is he, is he pushing something being homophobic just to grab people? Sure. Are you close. saying that Trumpers are fucking gambling, though? No. I don't know what he's doing. Is he wrong? No. Do, do you Is know he right? He rip- Absolutely not. Do you know if, do you <laughs> um, know if he rip- Am I there? Off? No, but I will protect my friends and say, yo, get the fuck out of there. Yo, is my mic working? Yeah, yeah I hear you. Uh, um, I was, I was asking- but my friends that were in there, I was like, yo, it's a fucking gambling degenerate site. And unless you get on your mobile phone and do it, you're not getting in. Oh, oh, that's an insight, and they were hurting, dude. And I'm like, and I love them to death. I love all of them to death. I love all my crypto people to death. I don't care what you're doing. I don't want anyone to get hurt. But that's why I'm the retard on the outside looking in, right? But if I created a coin, like, would I be a shower? Would I be this? Would I be that? These people are very intelligent. They know exactly where to hit your button. And Bobby Zoo does it. Fucking Pond does it. Fucking Douchebag does it. Um, and then my boy just came out with a coin. My other boy just came out with a fucking inscription. And I'm totally against it. And I can't even say it online. Record it here. And I hate it. Fucking hate it. Wait, who the fuck am I? Nobody. Nothing. <laughs> um, if I were to go to push your coin or your shit or my other boy's stuff or my other boy's stuff or my other, they'd be like, what are you showing? What are you doing? And they would just shut it down. That's why I'm not good at advertising yet, right? That's why I'm not good at marketing yet. If it was mine, they would shut me down. You know what I mean? So I treat yours like me, like it was mine, right? And I don't trust these people. It's not me. I trust myself. (laughs) I trust me. I trust this. I don't trust these people. These people are, they're whacked, man. You are like token getting whacked. It it doesn't matter what it is. I'm not gonna... I gotta go fucking uh, Cat Williams on this, you know? I am... I am for what I I do say. Um, Litecoin, Cardano, these kind of things. Because I know... Not that they're safe. I'm not a safe haven fucking retard. But I truly believe in the science behind certain coins. And like, like dude, I fucking liked Filecoin, man. And they're coming against them for some fucking shit. They joined up with something else. You know, I, I'm a real big Serum fan. I'm a real big, like, none of these things... It doesn't matter how much... It, actually, if they actually made money, if fucking Serum actually made money, they'd go after them. You know what I'm saying? 
And they did nothing wrong. They had a fucking perfect program. But no one looks at the science. No one looks at the, the real... And maybe that's my fault. Maybe I look at the real shit. I look it up. I, I study it. And, um, maybe that's the problem. You know, um, when Solana can make that much fucking money and go that quick, it's scary shit, man. Why aren't they going after the Solana? They're going to go after my Cardano? Like, Oh, it's a stable coin. You know, it, it's this. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because it stayed there? That's like, 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 let's say they came out to Trump because it's stable. Because it stayed at the same price. That makes it a stable coin? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. You have a stable coin. You have a stable fucking thing. You have a stable price. And I don't blame. Charles, we're going nuts after this midnight. Um, and I think that's why midnight's holding off. I think they're waiting for this ETF. I, I think they're waiting for everything to blow over. But I don't think there's a, a, a program failure of what they wrote. I think it's they're waiting for these douchebags to get over something. Me and you can write a new coin every day and be awesome than 99% of the fucking coins that come out every day. And I know nothing. You know a lot. I'm just saying that's how bad it is, right? Like, you could have someone that knows nothing and someone that knows everything and you'd still be trying to sell a, bis uh, you know, a box of Triscuits and it's made of wheat, and no one likes to eat wheat. <laughs> no one eats shredded wheat, you know? Um, yeah. Well, um, I'm open to continue running spaces, and, you know. Well, I love your spaces, dude, and uh, I apologize I'm the only person here, but. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Sometimes I, I run my space and three people come in, but it's the coolest three people I know in my life. Right, exactly. So yeah. Yeah. um the fact that they didn't come and join in, they must have had something better to do. But yeah. Um yeah. you keep doing what you're fucking doing for sure. I'm not gonna I mean even Damien didn't come up and denounce you, so it's good news. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, like, whether there's zero people here, or one person here, I mean, I, again, like, I appreciate our, our, I appreciate our talks, because, um, fucking right, dude, value. fucking and alpha like, talks, dude, it's fucking you know, alpha yeah, shit, yeah, dude. yeah, and I'm just, I'm chilling here building, and, um, well, now I'm, like, taking a break from building, because, like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, like, I need to de-stress, uh, from staring at a screen. So yeah, and I'm sure I cheered you up. Oh, here's my boy. Now you got to stay on. So um, no, I was this guy will fucking anything down. I was just... No, I need you to go through your shit through this through this kid. Let me tell you, man, this guy. Much oh, as know. I hate him, I love him to death, dude. He fucking will run <laughs> through your system and let you know what you should do. So you, earlier you said, and I'm sorry to keep going here for 10 more kid. minutes. No, him. I called him a kid. Actually, actually, I, I wanted to say this, like, when I was talking about, um, <laughs> real quick, when I was talking about, uh, like, frog poison, I guess the point is, like, we were taking that for about three years, and my wife's cancer went away. And now we have we have a son, so. Yo, I love your fucking story, and I know Damien loved it. And I know you told that story before, and Damien, that's why he left. He know like that's his that's right off his story like it beats his story okay he did all that shit so I love that story and I'm glad you told it man um and it always live in my heart and 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 I will do it one day probably to kill my cancer this poor kid dude 
<laughs> His name's Keck. I have to torture him. Um, pork chop. But up, pork chop, man, dude, he's working right. on this um this coin and 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 his stuff. And I had a question for you. I forget what it was. Um, the way he was gonna run something. It needed you, and um, I do believe you guys should team up. Um, cause this guy's this guy's just working hard all day. He opens the space, and I'm the only one in here. But Damien was here for a minute, but um. He's doing this Bitcoin um, background ordinal stuff, and uh, somehow something came up. I had a question for you of how to run something, but you know, I know you're busy, pork chop, and I know I have a million projects I asked you to be in, but um, this dude's pretty fucking interesting compared I to have, uh have, what I we're interested in tech for well, several months correct he is correct but and, and it's the same old thing but it's something new and um it's man if you guys teamed up man. man if you guys teamed up like i think there'd be like a fucking powerhouse kind of thing going on but Maybe because um, you don't know what you're talking about, you should let. Oh, I know it. everything. I know everything. It's a, it's a bit late, but yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've talked to like some of the oxygen out of our brain the past two hours, man. Yeah, it sounds like it. Myself as well. Yeah, we'll get some rest. Oh, I'm just I'm just chilling. I'm not really necessarily tired. No, he said he's going to keep the space open. Doesn't matter. But um, but pork chop, dude. We had some fucking really interesting conversation earlier and uh, somehow uh, in my brain you always come up because you're the the expertise but um I can't invite you to every show and but man this guy's on to some cool shit and um I'd really like you to get into his bitcoin uh architecture um uh, he will say he can ask. Hmm. Only, only because it's more nerdy than I am. But yeah, he's not going to ask, and and, I, and and you're not going to ask. So sometimes I'm the medium, right? I'm the salesman. But well, I don't need to be part of anything for someone to ask. What? You don't need to do nothing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do nothing, but um, I. I, I actually expected you to come in earlier and um somehow I was video games with my son. Nice. Um no, I just expected uh you to come in earlier and um but I didn't expect me and his conversation to go fucking well we've been on here three, four fucking hours, dude. I don't know, I have to shut the space down to see how long it's wrong. I actually kept this guy busy for three to four hours there, poor job. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a plus for me, you know? <clears throat> Dude, we, we did discuss some fucking pretty cool shit and, and, and uh, intelligent shit. Like, I impressed myself there, poor job. That's good. And I thought about, I thought about bringing Kane in, but I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably not the best idea today. <laughs> well, he's pissed, dude. So I I try to he's explain better. to him why he was pissed. And he's was, um, yeah, but you know that um, Keck was in that show. Tech from Smith and Wesson about the you know the the, the elephant's stamp on the grass. So I was I was kind of like falling. That was last night, wasn't it? He was falling asleep. But... I was kind of like falling asleep. I was like done working and just kind of delusionally like listening. But I heard some things here and there. I heard something but, about. Um, but he was absolutely correct. Uh, about stamp on the is, stamp on the grass. So X chain is down or something like that. I, I wanted yeah, to be on this for a minute. You know, it was for, for a, a couple days. Yeah. A couple days it was down. He was doing it to prove a point that people need to get to work building. So the explorer so he's not the only one responsible for it uh, make it more decentralized all that stuff and 
yeah. he was, you know, irritated with stamps, spam and counterparty, and making the Explorer X chain lag. You know, counterparty was fine. It held up great and did everything it was supposed to do, just like always. But the protocol works. It's just the Explorer got bogged down and got laggy to the blocks. And when that kind of stuff happens, you have possible misspent funds. All right. And you don't want anyone to lose their Bitcoin in a transaction because the blocks aren't timed up with the Explorer because the Explorer works with the wallet and times with the counterparty. Stamps were spamming the fuck out of counterparty, which was lagging X chain a lot. And uh, the parsing was becoming difficult and very expensive. The server can't keep up. You have to keep buying more space, keep buying more processing right. power. You know how it goes. And, you know, counterparty's not tiny, it's not huge. But for one person to be responsible for the payment of, you know, untaxed tokens because they're free to make, it just really bogs the fuck out of the Explorer. So it gave him an excuse to throw a fit and say, you motherfuckers, I've been telling you for years that we need to upgrade all this shit, make it better, make it faster, optimize it. If we need to change the language to Rust, if we need to incorporate things like ordinals, all this stuff needs to happen. Uh, probably incorporating runes and ordinals and like inscribing tool would be uh, something there. Well, yeah, that's that's the whole thing because we're using inscribing, but we're inscribing to the off return. Right. So that's what yeah. stamps are, right? It's like the the counter to ordinals. It's just another data field in Bitcoin. So basically, you know, yeah, the whole, I mean, this has all been in the plans for quite some time. And J-Dog was kind of handed the keys to X-Chain. It's his, not X-Chain, but to, you know, being the head dev of Counterparty. So an X-Chain, because he created the Explorer. He created Free Wallet. It's his private property, right? <laughs> He never decentralized it and made it everybody's. He did make it open source so that anybody can build off of it because that's what he's been wanting is people to take the idea and run with it and start helping run nodes, do the thing. And uh, this kind of was the straw to break the camel's back with straws, which was able for him to throw a fit and be like, listen, I'm done, you know, if stamps are going to be making a shit ton of money, which they are, you know, Mike and Space sold one fucking stamp for 1.6 Bitcoin or something. And he's been telling J Dog to go fuck himself while he started the stamps thing and is using J Dog's tools to be able to use Counterparty to do his stamps. So they've been battling for like nine months. Right. And he was like, hey, and this is getting that. This is getting fucking ridiculous, and you need to chill. And yeah, I mean, we got to figure something out. Were, hold on, Benji. And the stamps people were real pissed off, and were throwing a fit because they don't want to have to pay 0.1 XCP to mint a stamp. Well, that's a like little all, cool. that's a little kind of bullshit. Yeah, go, total, go, and tell them to go over to one? fucking ordinals and like pay forty dollars to a thousand dollars to oh, do something. Oh, they're paying more to do stamps, bro. Oh, Bitcoin they? transaction oh, okay. to do basic. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Then, return is then like what's, two to three hundred bucks. Then what's wrong with point one XCP, which is like what, exactly like not even a few dollars or something. That's what it, they're just doing it to try to to go to Vegas for a week. Remember these people? No, these people that came over for stamps, Mike and Space, and those people are ETH people, and they came over, found an advantage in the exchain to counterparty protocol where they could mint free numerical tokens and connect those tokens to the stamps by base 64 description when they make the token to the op return right yeah. which is basically what ordinals are is you're inscribing a data to the witness data and they're aggregating all those ordinals from zero to this point that start with these code numbers right so it just kind of, you know, it's kind of the same shit. It's just smaller data storage. And uh, 
it's not the first time it's been done. I mean, the very first token that was ever minted properly on Counterparty without X Chain ever even being there was done by JP Jensen. And it was a, uh, uh, oh, what the fuck's her name? Gerelda or Gelda or something like that. It's like his, his girlfriend or his wife or something, right? And it was a one of one token created back in, I think, 2015, right in there, 2014. And it was created, he created the token through the counterparty protocol without a you know special wallet or any of that shit. He just wrote it directly through the protocol to create a token. And when he created the token, he had an image. He converted the image to base64 string, took that base64 string, put it in the description of the token, and then minted the token to the blockchain and to Bitcoin. And that put that base64 in the wit in the off return and it displays on counterparty as an image so it you know because you know an explorer will reverse engineer that information that the data the off return got it will scrape that data and reverse it back into an image from base 64 to visual on 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 the explorer right so it's stamps aren't brand new they've been done a long ass time ago all this shit has already been done but they came in and created so much shit in the matter of nine months that it just bogged the fuck out of exchange the explorer and free wallet works off the explorer and when you send bitcoin on there it works through the explorer to counterparty to bitcoin and if those three things are lagging anywhere, it can cause issues. So he was done with it. And then these people were threatening a 10,000 PFP project that was about to launch through fucking stamps. And he stood up and said, fuck you. It ain't happening. And he shut the whole fucking thing down. Fort counterparty to where it showed no numerical assets. So when you open your free wallet, you can see shit. No stamps, no nothing. Then he killed X Chain and brought it down. So everyone knew that basically, if with without X Chain and Free Wallet, you're all fucked. Do the work, right? So, so he's proving yeah, the point. Basically, right. was what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree, I agree with the guy. I I just didn't do anything wrong, you know. So. You don't have oh. anything to worry about. You don't create right, shit. Right, 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 right. So I have nothing to bitch things. about. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm sitting over here. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. No one said you did. But it only took a couple of days, man. It's like people can't. Yeah. I mean, I love the guy. I love everybody. And I want everyone to get along. Well, now. And, you know, and that's yeah, all I can do. What That's happened all I can do. about you got to understand money is part of this, all right? So, yeah, I'm going to Vegas. No, no, Benji, you're not listening. Money is part of this because it costs thousands. Dude, of dollars I can only imagine. I can only money. imagine what Benji, it fucking stop. costs. This costs a lot of money to run the yeah. data through yeah. these systems. Servers. Okay, and it's not just one. Can only server, imagine. It's multiple servers. Oh, it's no one now. pays for it on a steady basis. It's all by donation. There's like a handful of people that donate enough funds to actually take care of the the fucking overhead. J Dog doesn't really make shit. In 2021, at the beginning, is when John Villar died. John Villar was the head dev of Counterparty and started Rare Pepe's with the other guys he was a very very important person in counterparty and when he died it left a very large vacuum j dog had maintained and created the explorer and the wallet that works really well creating tokens dispensers dex orders interacting with all these different protocols on counterparty that have been created through one wallet 
rare Pepe wallet, counter wallet, uh, fake rare wallet. None of these wallets work the same way. There's a very important wallet and it's a very important explorer. It's all open source. It's not like it can't be recreated in a different UI. That's actually more user friendly and less eye bleeding to look at. So it's not like he's gate kept it. It's all been there. So in 2021, the keys were handed to him after John died. And he basically took over as head dev. We all at Counterparty gave J Dog 10 Bitcoin in the summer of 2021 to run for the next three years to build upon Counterparty and make it better and fix some things and make some things improved. Right. We gave him 10 Bitcoin and about $600,000, 200000 a year for three years. He sold a little bit of it to get him through the first year and went on vacation for six months. <clears throat> and then when he came back, oh, he vacation. worked on only only Doge Party. He did not work on Counterparty. Who goes on vacation when they meant to be working with working capital? Okay, so good money was thrown at J-Dog. Well, you don't go on vacation with it, though. J-Dog showed the people that threw him good money that they should never throw him money again for anything. That was a moment of realization that we just threw good money at bad money. My team when and I came are working back. Yeah, you like, got to understand. You got to yeah. understand when he came back from vacation and Doge party, he walked into a bear market. So now he says the rest of the Bitcoin isn't worth very much. So I need more. At that point, we all went eat a big fucking dick. No, you round tripped your fucking bag and you want us to pay for that? No. So there's a little bit of, you know, issue over here and and, you know, a little bit of progression over here and some understanding over here. Right. We get Did it. You even get let me ask this. Did you even get like an equity share agreement into what he was building or working on? Like you're supposed to have like equity share into it when you give working capital to someone. equity share into something that has no equity. Well, that's why he's there to build something to make equity into it. Like my team and I, we're like I'm in. I'll share this real quick. I'm in Bitcoin Startup Labs. We're building certain tooling for making uh, solving pain points for um, customer and angel users for inscribing um, in a more like cookie cutter fashion and all the hoops of like. You know, like a, a unisat but we're not trying to compete against unisat we're trying to make our own like unique way apart from it and we're still going through x versus api of indexing but we're then after we make a tooling we're going to go start building our own indexing out but let's put it this way my point is that like come march 15th we're doing demo day uh through btc startup labs and to angel investor in like accelerator funds to cut us checks like what you're talking about so that we could keep building that doesn't mean we get to go on vacation but they also have equity share share stake that we're going to build and, and improve upon this so that angel users grow only grow and so when there's no equity share like i'm just i feel sorry that like this guy no, just I, goes I, like I, i'm going to go on fucking vacation and say fuck you guys like give no, me more money that's that that's actually it. like that's that's the you thing that's it. like kind of like stressful and like why i kind of wake up some days and i'm like you know, like I, I'm just gonna go outside and and go like, you know, go live in the woods. Like I'm already living in the woods, but I'm gonna go outside and like not come back inside to this computer because I hear well, things like this. And we're number we're one, tree, well, you know? number one. We build no matter who you are, you don't tell them where you're going on vacation. <laughs> okay, so anyway, <laughs> that's just silly. Yeah. The reality is that um, you got to understand counterparty. You know, you got to J Dog has been there building and maintaining and doing really cool shit and helping a lot for yeah, over but shutting it down is not decentralization for over 12 years yeah well this counterparty project started as an experiment before anything else was here there was no ethereum this was an experiment to see creating tokens and exchange on bitcoin through a protocol using the op return but it's it's central to one guy who can shut it down. That's what's that's scary. That's what he's been saying. 
and that's why he did this. And that's this not decentralized. That's not decentralized. That's what he's been saying. This is not the way to run this. You cannot yeah. have one person at the head of this. You guys need to build. You can't just give me money and say maintain the centralized shit. He believes in that part of it as well. Well, I agree with him there, yeah. And we all agree with him. But <clears throat> I think there's been maybe some psyops going on. <clears throat> J-Dog's been there a long time. Uh, Joe Looney is the first person that built Rare Pepe Wallet. Like, he's the one that started the whole thing. He took Spells and Genesis and reskinned it. And uh, then he's he's been here the longest. He's a genius when it comes to anything dev and definitely anything that has to do with counterparty. And also Shannon, which is desktop commando from Emblem Vault. Also uh, JP Jensen, which obviously I just mentioned his name is very well known and has been in Bitcoin and tech his whole life. And we have a great core dev team. And I believe because J, uh, not J Dog, but uh, Joe Looney was hired by, well, not really hired, but paid by Vincent Vando to build upon Counterparty about a year ago. So they were already preparing for this moment. And I believe that <clears throat> Joe Looney has quite the UI and protocol built ready to go right now they're in the process of building apis well, that's themselves cool. to redo everything to get everything reconnected in a way that's more decentralized nice so all this is in the works but it's been a hell of the last four days dealing with you know my dms being full of 40 or 50 people asking me what happened you know and you know what's the deal so i had to like yeah I, can, I mean i can room, only imagine you know and you can only imagine to the it. questions you had thank god they don't question me well i i asked the question of 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 uh i think it was domo the other day who's working on the ordinals protocol um and they're working through stacks with unistat and i asked he asked them that question i, I asked him this question i said you know aren't aren't typically like stamps like more immutable than ordinal inscriptions especially when you have a an indexer that's not actually on chain for the ordinals mm -hmm. like unistat and hero system and he said well i forget what the frick exactly he said i'm kind of tired right now but but um it was a few days ago and like, i've been listening to a lot of people speak but um he, he was sharing that like stamps are i can't really relate i can't really i can tell you in my mind right said. now why so why why stamps aren't as he thinks it's a less immutable than an ordinal inscription because it's because of the utxo but i'm not sure exactly no the utxo the ordinal is nothing um the ordinal is a theory that's made up by casey rortimer yeah well i well, casey and i we were talking in cohort and he was on cohort and you know he was sitting there on call and, and we're sitting there with him and he's like, yeah, I'm, uh, he's like, he's just, it's almost like he doesn't even believe in the damn thing himself. Like, he's just right. like, I, like, he's just like, this is for shit coinery. Dude, he's this set up a poker trash. table. He's That's like, I he fucking, did. yeah, he's like, I hate fucking NFTs. Like, this is for shit coin. And Runes is going to be even more degen for even more right. shit coinery. And, but at least like, at least that um, the Runes will actually be on chain with its indexing and its UTXO data. Um, right. So, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a little bit better, but the reality is this. It's funny. It was no, funny matter, thing, but... no matter what he told you, I'll tell you the reality of it, is that the ordinal side of it is definitely, you know, scrubbable. Yeah. The inscription side of it absolutely is not. What's in the witness data is in the fucking witness data. And if anybody ever wants to aggregate that, they can. Same thing with stamps. Stamps are in the op return of Bitcoin. You can't get rid of them. They're there forever. So anyone that wants to aggregate them and index them or do whatever the fuck they want to do with it, it's there. So none of it's really deletable. Yeah. 
right? If I ran five nodes and you ran five nodes and a buddy of Benji ran five nodes and we all did the thing and we were mining, even at the small amount that we do and the small amount of hash power, we'd it's still funny be able to aggregate that's funny. all that shit. Right. Yeah. It's funny you say that. You you put you type disc off in there. And Benny has some fucking shit in there. The fuck are you talking about, Benji? Who typed disc golf in anything? Uh, I think my boy. Yeah, you're in a different world over there. We were talking about something completely different. I know, it's a joke, but... Yeah, you guys laugh thing? a little bit? Well, remind me to embed that. Uh, so, well, yeah. it, it is true. Like it, it, it's uh, and type in ten million different inscription. You know, um, right. and he not, is right. Not like really inscriptions work. and compared inscriptions. To like, Benji, type, shut up. Type, type in like a Can name. Let him finish. Uh, it's all good. I mean, no, I was not. I was saying like it makes sense. Like you know, being able to type disc golf and find something through a through an indexer, or through through like a, a marketplace that you can't really. I mean, you guess you can find it, but I don't know. It's just a mess. It's messed with 10 million inscriptions. It's kind of messy right now. Is what we were sharing earlier. It's it's a compared to like to to stamps or like X chain or something or whatever tool. Wait, or, or it's there, over 10 million, right? Uh, it's it's pretty easy to to look what you're looking for, but stamps are a little bit messy, and I think it's just because it's early on. But it can use some organization a little bit more. Where Stamp's people, I think, really I think people messy. are. Con- no, I'm not talking about stamps. I'm talking about ordinals. Like it's really kind of, is. Yeah. it's all over the place. It, it needs more like explore um, construction, and it needs like a, I don't know. Well, We're, it's just yeah. built on an idea and then built upon that idea. So it's just layers of mistakes. Well, people are building so fast because they're thinking about money, and that's where yep. it's a mistake. Exactly. That's exactly always the mistake with stamps, though. Right, and that's purposes, what we were talking about just, earlier. Can I finish, Benji? The yep, thing yep. about stamps is uh, the op return has the data in it, but all the stamps start with stamp colon. Every bit of uh, base 64 data starts with stamp colon. So it can't, it's super easy. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, ordinals obviously is very different. No, no, no. We Like, you can search anything you want. Like, yeah. We were just kind of discussing the, of how there's 10 million and, and and i can't look up like an over deck fucking um um Nolan ryan rookie card um there's just so many of them that they're not organized that you know even when me and you and d meaning we're talking the other night of hey i would really put some artwork into a light court or normal or any ordinal um um but i want it to be not that i'm trying to copy fucking um um pepe's but like if you bought a block i will submit to that that organization so that i can find it within ten thousand or a thousand or 500 or whatever um not that i want to be seclusive or anything I just want to be able to fucking find it, dude. I mean, you're fucking like when you look up my stamp or my ordinal that I created, I can't even fucking find it. Like, and I'm below ten thousand. Like, it's just retor- like I, I and I tried to uh, explain it to um heck earlier of how I used to organize my baseball cords in numbers and then even the numbers weren't right but i could like put it in a system and, and maybe i'm re- retarded like that but it, if there's 10 fucking billion fucking ordinals and i'm like yeah i got an ordinal you want to see it <laughs> like yeah of course i gotta send you the number and, and this kind of thing but like wouldn't it be cool if we had our own like block within that and said here's our stuff here we go and i can create under that and and i explained this to 
feed to me the other night about, you know, like a light point ordinal or a recursive or, you know, putting it under his block and be able to find it. There's so many of them. There's no organization. There's nothing. I, I, can't, I, I can't go through a fucking Beckett organization and see what this card's worth. I don't know what my ordinal's worth. Uh, yeah. you, I, if I, that makes any sense. It, well, it does in the sense that I can understand that um, if I were to relate it to OpenSea, where um, the reason I always say OpenSea is because um you know obviously they have the tooling you know they've been working on it for whatever long um, i remember the broke c days um from early but like you know the way they come is like yeah you can they've categorized things in a way that's kind of web 2 like it's almost like web 2 like where you know you go lo- you go on amazon and you go oh, i'm looking for sneakers and you put in the category sneakers so you go i'm looking for gaming uh, NFTs and and they have it categorized and they or I'm looking for art solely art PFPs or I'm looking for a DAO type NFT um, and they have it categorized like that so it's so early on that um, I I do believe like you know something a marketplace that can be built out or OpenSea integrating the protocols of stamps and ordinals and runes um, I'm surprised they're not really jumping on the bandwagon like um, Magic Eden is. But even Magic Eden's not really kind of like, you know, you know, uh, collectible cards or gaming ordinals or in, in allowing the inscribers to really categorize themselves through a marketplace. So that's kind of what I see needs to happen. And that will solve the pain point for a lot of angel users of, of like yeah, I mean, like stamps. I and, mean, and, uh, I'm not here to sell and or ordinals, but, but, but what's it worth? <laughs> you know, you know, and I'm here to collect and I'm here to enjoy and help everyone out so you're not, I'm not here to yeah. sell you're i just, just like well, what the fuck is worth and what am i doing i know i'm ahead of time um but maybe i can use that as like all right let's build on this and let's do this and i could do a new project and i can do new art and i can work with you on pork chop and i could do all kinds of cool things yeah. but the more you slow me down like what am i doing anything i'm not doing anything you know, the more I can do to help, I mean, obviously I can't do the science like pork top and I can't do the science like you, Beck, but is there something I can do artwork wise? Is there something I can promote? Is there, so- I'm on these shows every fucking day. Is there something I can do? <sighs> I think, I think, um, I think I was just chilling with something to do. That's, that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, I can yeah, chill. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah I can cool fucking enough, chill. I can <laughs> chill, and I can shut the fuck out. I'm sure for some fucking. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> but it's, it's more than cool, that. It's the funniest thing I've ever fucking all night. But um, yeah. but you know what I mean. Like I want to help. I, I'm here. Can I do something? Can I swing the fucking bed? Something. Um. Put anything. me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Yeah. All right, there you go, for chop. <laughs> but um, like I would love for you, you guys to to mingle. I I, I would love poor chop to be a lot of million places I'm at. I just um, I would, love, so Keck I be, people, I would love Keck to be. I would love Keck to be in a million places I was at. Um, just the fucking scientific, uh, just the science, like everything about it, and um, be 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 good, yeah. He's um, got it going on. He's doing stuff. He's making yeah, this happen. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's um, what he should be doing. Well, yeah. everyone's doing what they should but, be. But, yeah, we're not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm you're not. doing exactly what you should be. Thank you. Can I get that recording? Um, but at the same time, like I just, you know, I fucking love this. But you know, every other night I'm getting in trouble for fucking talking to Sasha. So. Um, what do you mean you get in trouble for talking to Sasha? No, Don't I mean, be fucking up Sasha's reputation out here. No, no, I'm in trouble. But anyway, um, what'd you do? I'm I'm with all these artists, and did um, you piss off Sasha? No, I don't. one of the hardest people to piss off, boy. 
No, nah, not my girl. But um, no, she's nobody's girl. I'm out here with all these artists, and people don't understand. <laughs> people don't understand these artists, and I'm trying to be an artist, and one day I will be. And I don't, you know, at that point I won't care. But at least you can understand my English now, Koi. Yeah, dude, did you fucking see my Koi fucking thing? I'm in trouble. He's gonna kill me, dude. Oh. Coit's going to burn his own house down. It's okay. No, he, he does it every time. No, dude. He listened to that show. And Damien said he's going to kill me. Like, he's coming after me now. Damien. I, have mafia. I basically have a mafia after me from another country. Damien's just fucking with you because you're easy to no. fuck with. He Coit listened to the show, dude. Koi didn't waste any time listening to the show, and he doesn't give a shit well, about Well, someone what you did. Said. I don't think he understood it, but. Koi doesn't. He's care. like, he said, Koi's going to kill you. I'm like, eh, hey, hey, hey. not one of the death with me. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have been such a dick when it was He shouldn't have pointed the fuck. I didn't, did he? He fucking set me up, and then he said. You put an idea in that guy's head. <laughs> Whose head? Wait. Mm. I'll fix it, dude. We're all going to buy his coin. No, I'm not. Right? Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. I'm going to give you the money to buy it. No, you're not. Get me off the death list. I'll send it straight to a burn address. Better not. This. <laughs> 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 I've been kind of doing like an interview question here and there. Yo, Ken, I, I need, uh, I, I do need you Wait, to go did through you just your hear shit. Him talking, Benji, did you hear he was talking? Oh, sorry, Ken. There you go. Let him finish. See. Well, I was, I was gonna ask this. What's what are your thoughts on um um? And Benji might be like, "Oh my God, you're asking this question again, man." But uh uh. Uh, quantum computational attacks on, on uh, Bitcoin's elliptical like I think structure. The, the devs, <clears throat> the developers and people at hand that are also dealing with that as well are going to figure out the quantum resistance stuff when it's time. Yeah, I already all that figured stuff out. will come yeah. with time. Yeah. I mean when you probably figured that? out some shit already too. So it's not like it's impossible. What what figured know? it out? I'm when sure you is probably that? thought about it. Um, yeah, well, my aspect is like looking at Ethereum, it took so long for Ethereum to, to migrate into a proof of stake and these consensus mechanisms of Bitcoin make it really hard for it to, to, to make changes, especially with like the, I mean, the taproot was one, but that seemed like, again, <laughs> yeah, the segue, uh, um, I think like those changes will need to lead to a hard fork for post um quantum resistance and i don't know what the theorem's gonna do I, th I think a lot of chains are fucked but again like i think the first thing we're gonna see first are like a quantum computing tax on the actual banking system itself first and we'll see it alongside and i asked it's interesting because i asked the founder of uh, startup labs for bitcoin who's and the other day casey red was there like i was sharing earlier and uh you know, uh, Bobby Lee, Charlie Lee's brother was there and stuff. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, I Bitcoin, believe. Bitcoin, yeah, hey, Benji, Bitcoin, let him finish, please. Uh, Bitcoin Vision. I'm trying to think of his name. I don't know. The founder of Bitcoin Vision guy, BSV, was there. <laughs> and um, I asked, I asked, like the guy, the founder, actually, guy. I said, "Well, what's your, what's your thoughts on like? You think it's gonna be like thirty years, a hundred years?" And he goes, "No, I think it's gonna be a lot sooner than that." And that kind of surprised me when he said that, like, it's going to be a lot sooner. And so, and so if it's like, like sooner, that makes me think like, what, 10 years, like 15 years. And like, can, can we get to that consensus to make it happen? Which is, which is really, well, would be mean, really awesome. we're talking about how, how aggressive you're like, you're going to the extreme, right? But how aggressive is quantum computing going to be to SHA-256? And remember that, you know, Bitcoin is open source and the code itself to Bitcoin is not locked in time. It's actually changeable with the right consensus. 
Right. And if things are serious, things do move quickly in Bitcoin. So when it, especially when it comes to security, um, privacy. So I I believe that they will see that these issues may be uh, over exorbitant in emotion, and then they might find out that oh, SHA two fifty six is vulnerable. So let's rewrite some code here and fix some stuff. It doesn't necessarily lead to a hard fork. It can lead to just a few changes in the code to make it work in a way that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, I also think it, it, if they say, okay, you can't do this, everybody will do that. So, you know, you can't do this, everybody will get a Cardano. Uh, you can't do Cardano, everybody get a Bitcoin. Or... You you can't do Litecoin. You everybody go to well, wait a back minute. to our... You're you're kind of going left here. It but is people, it's left the, and right. The, the the people that Keck is talking about are extremely smart people. Correct. They've been in Bitcoin Just... a long time, and the devs that work. But with these them, are the and, people they want to attack. I'm speaking. Your social skills are shit right now. So whenever these people are involved, and people actually come to a reality and things are spoken between each other the the developers and technical scientists that are involved in the cryptographic world of bitcoin are extremely intelligent and very well versed on all the things that are coming so you know have some yeah. faith in the people that are here oh yeah i feel that and his is just a just as a theory because that ultimately at the end of the day, like only the latter difference tells me the true outcome, is that they are looking for an actual quantum attack to happen. Mm -hmm. They're they are looking to have it happen first, and then and then assess. I and like build, that. And build later. So to so, so they want it to happen to Bitcoin. They want it to happen to Ethereum and things. I mean, I don't know what happened. Maybe It'll happen to right. something else first. Yeah, exactly. But like maybe Ethereum Dude, completely wrecked. I don't when I think they, Solana, when I they think hacked a fucking like... SEC fucking Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So fuck your <laughs> shit up. <laughs> you can't you imagine what Macho Man would do to your shit. Do you dude. believe that was hacked? Come on. No, exactly. Yeah, I'm really it was surprised. fucking set up. Hey, if I don't you believe understand it. Marcus, and that you was my point that to begin that, with. And I apologize. If you look at the four hour candle at that moment, You'll understand that what they created was what I call a Bitcoin head shake. Yeah, yeah. And when Bitcoin, they sold let me it. finish. When Bitcoin shakes its head and flings all the hair out and the water and everything, that means that it just liquidated and stopped, lost everybody that was in a leverage position. And what leverage does to a chart is put grease on both sides of the hill, up and down. Depending right. on the weight of the leverage, depends on the amount of movement that spot buys and sells gives that chart. So if the movement isn't there with the leverage pressure, it makes it move slower. It makes it move sideways and with less right. volatility. Right. Cogs it up. Yep. yep. Less volatility. That's what was important at the release of the ETF was less volatility. And and you weren't here earlier, poor job, but we me and him were discussing on how um there was people flooding it and there was people there was bears like me knowing this would happen to lower their price for the etf and um i don't care if it goes up or down um i'm not a fud i'm not a bear but i know these motherfuckers and these motherfuckers. You're just a conspiracy theorist, Benji. Correct. You like correct. PBR. Correct. You know, you correct. guys and, and fucking no, I'm G worse than PBR. just go sit down no, and just fuck fucking G. have a powwow. Fuck G money. Dude, fuck that dude. You guys are all the same. No, 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 no. Fuck that dude. I am on a bias. I, I have, You're not I have legitimate shit. I have legitimate shit backing me up. 
No, you don't. All your shit yeah. you've tried to bring up to Damien, he's shot down in about a minute and a half. Why does he do that? Because your facts are flimsy. Because he loves me. Oh. Yeah, they're right. You guys, you guys are just embarrassing. <laughs> salt sometimes. and water. Yeah, yeah. Salt and you water. Make, but... You make our counterparty people and Bitcoin people look bad. Oh, my say. God. Wow. Oh, it, makes, it makes for a good... You, you, you and... Uh... <laughs> You and, boy, news, right? you, you and your boy, you and your boy don't. I think, I, think, I think it makes it for a good like theory think. Um, let me let me say this like because I want to to circle back to like um, a little bit like the quantum resistant part. Um, yeah, I I did I did a lot of research and um, like there's a whether whether but I'm like thinking like because I'm thinking of like I've been, I've been thinking for like five years of a blockchain structure mainly i've been thinking of like proof of elapsed time but then i was like looking into charlie lee's uh proof of um activity model which is uh yeah you know uh, yeah miners valid uh, miners mine and then stakers uh, validate so it's proof right. of work and it goes up spills over to proof of uh, uh um, it's like a hybrid between stake. proof of work proof of stake and yeah it's, mining. A, it's pretty cool model really 51 percent attack resistant and I was thinking, and I was further researching into post quantum of uh, the lithium and uh, Kyber algorithms for actually fetching blocks. That's post quantum for for hashing it out. And then I found another bot of research over the past few months here. Uh, wait, 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 actually, wait. before you go on, can I ask a yeah. question real quick? Yeah. How do you know what is post quantum when quantum isn't even understood yet? Uh, because. Yeah, so Kyber and Dilithium were actually... Because you know it was Benji. So Kyber and Dilithium was actually put through... So there's a government document. I can share it with you. I can fetch it and I'll share it to you. Uh, uh, I documents I'd never trust. Yeah, no, but like when when I read into it, for me, I don't know, maybe I'll go over some people's heads, but for me, it, when reading into the algorithm makes sense for how it can be post-quantum because of the way... See, I don't want to lose anyone here. Um. Let me ask. Let me say, say it in this a very also. simple way. Yeah. So there's a thing called. Um, this is a little bit outside of dilithium because um, dilithium is for protecting the hashing. Okay, the hashing models. Um, of of an actual one one block to the next of a mining block. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's post quantum. So and that's that's apart from an algorithm that's that's elliptical like Bitcoin would. Um, so, and then there's another thing I've researched that is also used in encrypting emails. So that's also post quantum. Um, so when a quantum uh, attack is going to be able to solve, you know, undoing the binary code to a hashed algorithm of a of a you know a privacy a public key into a privacy key and then undo that hashing. There's a thing called Keck, which is key encryption key. And the key encryption key, and this is actually something that's been actually written in these documents, is um, a way to wrap and then unwrap um, hash privacy key, private keys for for either, mainly for like messages, kind of like email message. But when you look at, so it's kind of so, being applied. So wait a minute. So it's like encrypting encryption. It's, it's like encrypting encryption. Encrypt yeah. Encryption so it's encryption in an encrypted envelope. Yeah. So it's encrypting encryption so that a a post quantum attack would have a real hard time because by the time the blocks hashed out, you know the blocks there. Um, but yeah, it's um, like a ten. It's like a squared event. It's yeah, squared. so I can't. I can't yeah. like speak on like. So again, like I can't speak on like Satoshi's wallet being drained. You know, but if if you we were if in theory we were to build a new blockchain from the ground up, not change the fucking wheel. But in, just kind of improve upon the aspects in a new, like, take the wheel that already works, but build something from the ground back up, and with an aspect of key encryption key uh, for wrapping on wrapping, uh, that would make it really hard for, along with like certain out the certain algorithm like dilithium, like what I'm proposing here, um, it would make it yeah post quantum resistant in in theory. Um, in theory, and it would be resistant against fifty-one percent attack. And so that could be scripted. That could be rewritten into existing code because it sounds like you're just wrapping up already existing information into a new, a, a new type of protocol almost. 
Yeah, to, like I'm I'm proposing like yeah. a new actual chain, but I don't know. So I don't know how Bitcoin will fork it, or n- maybe like soft fork it itself. Have to. That's what I just said. I said well, it would be a soft the fork. script in, inside the code. Yeah, so it would be a soft fork. Um, not, not really. Well, it would be just a add in to the code that already exists. It's kind of a soft fork, but not really. I mean, mm-hmm. all the information is still there, even though the code has been changed. So a soft fork would be no information being there with just the code being taken. Yeah. No and, yeah. Um, and, and no offense, bud. This is why I wanted to talk you to talk to this guy. No, he's um, way over my head, bro. Keck is Keck is on a different level with no, his ability just, to code, but my understanding two, and knowledge together, is there with him. But he or, he understands well, a totally different level. Well, it would it would this. still take like me hiring engineers, which is what I'm kind of working for. Of course, of course, them. but just my boy, man, and yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. So yeah, it'll be again, again, like a, I think it'll be. That's why I want to ask that question. I appreciate, it. yeah, your inputs. Um, I I. Th- I feel like, and I guess that's me being like almost like conspiracy theory that um, it would they would want the quantum attack to happen first and then assess and then pick up later because I guess um, the, okay so so because the, the, the let me I'll finish this the attackers yeah. aren't going to want to dump all the Bitcoin they're going to if especially if it's Satoshi's wallet they're going to want to hold what they stole and Absolutely. then watch a fix and then they're slowly going to you know liquidate that over time because Bitcoin's going to you know have the gains um so or or whatever they choose to do it could be even a beneficial process yeah uh it could be an insider deal it could be a situation that was created by people that are yeah that's that's uh, yeah that's 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 the part i wasn't really trying to say (laughs) because right i mean it could be because it's all part of it i mean you got to understand that maybe Maybe the Satoshi wallet isn't lost necessarily, right? Maybe the Satoshi wallet's actually a bounty. Like, I like all of it. Yeah. But would it be? Like a, would it be? Would it be Google and Intel? Or, I mean, would it be Intel that's you know connected to, to freaking um, you know, uh, to Bill to, to Bill Gates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now we're now it's like cons- sheer conspiracy. Oh, now you're but, going on a different rail, right? Because you space and, and, and uh, your brain quantum. Like if you want to, you want to speak generally about it. We can, but it, I mean, pointing people at it, I think I don't know what. I mean, you know, I mean yeah. the reality of it is, is going to even become more protected because it's part of the traditional markets. So the more it gets intertwined and involved in that i mean how safe do you think ameritrade is how how safe do you think that fucking nasdaq is or the new york stock exchange in general right so I'm to saying, Bitcoin like, and cryptography would they would they tell, <laughs> if it's if that's what I, I didn't say like bill gates like I'm, that's my conspiracy no i said like someone like bill gates interconnected with in, uh, intel's like uh supercomputer um, quantum, well, quantum supercomputer. Would they want to try to run an experiment on Bitcoin first before, like, seeing what can be changed and how resistant? And then they put that into their own model because Intel has hyper sawtooth ledger blockchain, um, and they want to test it on something else to figure out where the weak Wait, points are. Does? And then, so Intel has hyper sawtooth, uh, its own blockchain protocol, and so would they want to test it? on something that's there and then figure out what the what the weak points are the pain points and then how about this even which we could be like bitcoin let me flip you how about they choose the most liquid most seen most eyes on the most vulnerable first but they're using blockchain technology through quantum to do it uh well then the attack couldn't be undone bingo and that's why that's why there's this site that that has like we were talking about this world this world uh benji you said it earlier sorry man i'm having like a blank a little bit like bitcoin's not the most liquid thing in the world and it's not the most no nah, black rock could buy it black rock yeah buy I'm, I'm saying it's like this is not what you would want to test it on you'd want to really prove a point well they want so, to test it so they see the weak point and then they put it they put they they solve that weak point in their own systems that are m- much more valuable Right. What if blockchain actually runs this protocol or algorithm better 
than putting it on a web two server somewhere and you know doing a thing that's then it's it's more trackable it's more you know the, all of the things that happen in today's world why would you want to put that kind of attack on it yesterday's world technology it depends on how much stuff they're running with an elliptical curve um, like bitcoin is with 256 sha and what if i don't know something totally different on quantum though using blockchain technology to run it yeah yeah I mean, the you government's got I mean? like a, yeah, I, I get mean, it. Yeah, that's that's we've been yeah, using the blockchain for synth for decades and decades. Blockchain's not new, it's created by the US government, the military. So, cryptographic, you know, messaging also. Well, yeah, they've been using Keck uh, key <laughs> encryption keys for a long time for wrapping that's, encrypted messages. That's kind of what I'm, what I'm getting at. And no that's one really that, it's actually what it. they use. They use a deck, a stack, and a keck. And a keck is one of the most, you know, integral parts for for encrypting the hashed um, encrypted messages. Yeah, and they wrap and unwrap it. So that's like yeah. Asana needs all these bunch of these weird government documents. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, it runs deep, man. Um, but it's like public computer science government documents it's really interesting it's like, that's the thing is it leads you on a path to think this way when really you should take all that information and divert it the other way so it yeah you want to think it's a government conspiracy and it's you know whatever is uh, happening but it's really it could be but at the same time i don't know man there's some things pointing at some stuff that may not be conspiracy theories are fun but they're draining on my brain and i don't really care yeah. to think about them that much no i wasn't i was thinking more like how can these certain protocols actually solve and um and still do things like you know a, an evm and like sharding and dk rollups um, but have like a, a good model to it turn compliant and all these things right I don't know. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. There's a lot of stuff happening, and the tech over here, and seeing the tech in Web two and all the other, you know, normal software companies and builders in the real world, compared to the way that tech moves on blockchain and and cryptography and the way things are built, is at like it's smoking meth. It's a whole nother level over here. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've I mean Italic sat in booth spaces and like, you know, Bitcoin Miami conventions and sold ETH, you know, and raised thirty one million. They built the blockchain in a year. And uh I'm thinking like, you know, it can be like I, I've put like certain contracts together through a open source Git repository to actually do like a like a key encryption key blockchain startup in a POA format. And I would do the kind of like the same thing, like tour to like um, go to Hong Kong, like go to Bitcoin Magazine, Hong Kong, like Amsterdam, go to like Canada, go to ETH Denver. And um, just kind of put a contract out there that people can mine and then uh, on Ethereum and then take those tokens and, and working capital and then uh, build out a structure that can do a, a mainnet launch that can hire engineers alongside to make a a blockchain um so i don't know i think it's a good idea i mean it's an extra step i would think but i think you probably thought it out a billion times and has seen more people than i have gone through it um, yeah i think it could be really fun and i think that's smart i mean launching an ethereum type you know token to actually do the crowdfund you know the crowdfund kind of situation to maybe stake against the original token that's created or the coin that's created for the new blockchain that has all your all yeah. your stuff in it yeah and that then makes sense the all genesis right. yeah the genesis blocks would be mined and people would migrate and get the I mean, uh, genesis block mined uh have, made that coin you, have you seen what uh the pepe coin did you know the one from 2017 that's the one that wanted to do its own blockchain or something. They already have their own block. They did that in twenty seventeen. I, I talked to one of the people there. Yeah. Okay. Or, but, so yeah, but they they, they, got, they, they were really the salty thing. that that they were really salty that like 
the Pepe ERC yeah, twenty yeah, like yeah, pumped over them. Yeah, that doesn't matter. The the theory behind what they did though and what you're doing is what I'm trying to do the comparison to. And what they did is came up with the blockchain first, did all the stuff first. First it was like a mix proof of stake and a proof of work, and then it became proof of stake. And uh then, you know, they were thinking about okay now it's 2023 and they're like okay so we need to maybe launch a token on ethereum which is what you're going to do first which i think may be a smart move because what they did obviously didn't work until now when they launched the ethereum token you could purchase a stake against to get the token you know because you're staking the ethereum token to the uh ai uh pepe ai thing right so there's this AI chat bot type thing and an AI art thing. And so you they use their old miners from their ETH days of, uh, or not ETH days, but the same miners, but they mined for their token. And uh, when those became obsolete because they went completely proof of stake, they use all those miners to do uh, the AI thing. So they're staking the Ethereum token into the ai thing for i guess the miners to earn while the people that staked it get the the protocol coin for it so there's like this whole thing but i think the way you're doing it's probably smarter and would work faster it's i'm trying to make it really like kind of like um like because i've worked in like a like a retail business so like okay like i'm a car i got a carpentry business and tools and a uh, shop i'm gonna make a garden box and i'm gonna sell uh, a bag of dirt in the garden box and it's shippable and then during COVID, everyone's stuck at home i'll, I'll put a side product of uh, bulbs and you can just plant them in the garden box and sell it and then that that makes a million dollars so then people just kind of like buy this garden box you know <laughs> like That's really smart. simple kind of thing um so when I think of like, so yeah, I just thought like, all right, which I already wrote the code to the co- to, to the token that um, have a 42 million supply um, on mainnet that halves every four years and rewards um, still have the same decimal precision um, as a Bitcoin and do proof of work for block mining, uh, proof it, of stake for block validation. So you're saying it has farming? It has a staking protocol? Yeah, it would have proof of work for... Um, block mining and then block validators would be proof of stake and for, for proof of activity and they will uh stake the right the right block and if they don't if they if they're a bad actor and they, they want to try and fork a chain or do something then they lose their block reward so then that goes on to the next block validator who's a good no, actor. i'm talking about the the ethereum token oh so they're saying, actually yeah, so using the, that with the staking protocol or mechanism that owns um, anything or is it a well i thought to tour conventions and just build just build here over the over here in q1 just build a simple like because pondo x was really really simple um on its ux ui uh, for example and so just kind of stay dumb and simple and build simple ux ui and i already have the contract structure done it's actually um at keck blockchain on on here on twitter and then the git repositories there and basically how um uh 21 million bitcoin has one quadrillion satoshi to it so for a 42 million supply um coin like a rare coin because a rare coin is not a security uh, a rare coin is a rare coin it's non decimals yeah eight, eight decimal because it's eight. because ethereum. it's um yeah eight decimal wait well, yeah no oh, on ethereum it has 18. uh but the final so let me say this um the way I structured was like a stage while well, I was thinking like stage one and I've talked with several other developers. They gave me feedback. Yeah, oh, yeah, it could work, but you maybe like lower the, the, the amount of entry ETH that people are mining the token with. So then basically release the stage one contract of <clears throat> half the supply worth of, of a lowest denominational point, which would be a key encryption key or call, call it like a stat would call it a keck. Wait a minute. Um, You're talking about mining the Ethereum token. Or yeah. the blockchain coin, mining the Ethereum token first. Oh, you're gonna mine the token. I've never people, seen that. 
Well, people... mining like Polly said mining. Right. Okay. Yeah. That he used a gimmick word, so I'm kind of relating it to the gimmick word, which is actually it's actually called harvesting the token. Well, if you live in America, you should live to that gimmick word. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't really to be honest, man, I don't really agree with it. But to get to so people understand, like they would stay with that stupid gimmick term. Yeah. Um to kind of like how Jimi Hendrix would say, like, you know, like, oh, these all these moves and me playing with my teeth, it's just a freaking gimmick. You know, that sounds good come out. good too. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, mining like Bitcoin, you know. Right. Like the, but, the, but the sound comes out either way. So it's actually in 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 terms, it's actually uh a pre it's, it's a token sale contract and it's a harvesting a token. Yeah, um, you're harvesting from, a token for a pre sale, but you're calling yeah. it mining. Yeah, so people are using their ETH. And they're using like, you know, you'll have like, you'll get a hundred billion for, um, you know, one ETH, for example, but there'll be one quadrillion tokens. So the one quadrillion tokens would equal half the mineable supply of, of 21 million. That'd be stage one. Then stage two, people take their token. So the ETH working capital is there and secured and then put it into a multi-sig vault. And people, if people were to take their tokens and be like, I'm going to make some random liquidity pool and people will bind up like wrecking each other left and right, not any of our business because we're building an organization. Um, and, the, and people will try and do other things rather to, to be like bad actors rather than following like the actual steps. It's like we're, we're, you're taking your tokens, which is fully transparent to take your tokens. And then um, you then start to burn them by mining 21 million Keck coin. Uh, ERC twenty in stage two, and then any on mind from that twenty one million cat coin is just paired with some of the ETH working capital into a liquidity pool on on a Uniswap V uh, V three position, and then people who are good actors and take and burn their tokens, uh, their cat like cat lowest denominational tokens of, and I don't think it'll even mine out one quadrillion, so the rest would be burned because I already wrote the burn function in that in that contract solidity part. Um, they would take it over, and then any spent of those uh, one quadrillion will be burned that was used, and then the Keck coin, twenty one million will be there, and then I would just keep touring, you know, v uh, conventions, talking with VC firms, and then if they want to then speculate, they can pick it up from a V three position while we have the working capital to actually, to start on, you know, build out teams, uh, scale team. I continue marketing uh, through conventions and also work with team. And then we launched the mainnet blockchain. So, and, that, and put that post quantum, my theory is a post quantum in there. Um, so, I don't know. I think it's something that can be fun um, and can actually do like bounty hackathon to, to have projects come and build out of Ethereum uh, from their EVM to have a, fork evm into a, a like well i'm calling it like the kecknum blockchain and uh k-e-k-h-n-u-m and it has for the h is for like hash he hashing hexadecimal hashing um of numericals for the n-u-m and with key encryption key which i shared with you earlier um for wrapping on wrapping right and so and, and like maybe have bounties and like projects that would be interested in building um and deploying their contracts or migrating their contracts and from like a and if possible and that's like this is where it becomes over my head can i meet engineers can i hire engineers yeah that, that's where i was about to get right can i hire engineers that could actually do a sharding mechanism to actually achieve a higher yeah. tps and to build all the stuff incorporated with that into a blockchain that that runs smoothly with it yeah and that's i a, yeah yeah that's a it's, monster it's, that yeah. sounds like a fucking you know everything up to where it was like burning to mine you know for the the keck token or whatever the the coin for the blockchain is like that's where it becomes like here we go because now you have to have that other side built to be able to build the highway between the two to connect them with the protocol or contract or whatever you're trying to do. Yeah, there's botanics. You're going is... ERC20 to right. your own blockchain. Right. So there's a thing called um look look into botanics because botanics was on our cohort and they talked and I actually am, am like a bit of an ambassador with them in their Discord, which just means I get like a little badge. <laughs> Discord is kind of funny, 
but um they're using a, what's called spider chain protocol and so they mm-hmm. have a spider chain and what it is what that means is they have an evm fork so they're evm compatible but their bridge is from bitcoin so you bridge your bitcoin into an evm compatible spider chain and now you can deploy smart contracts by using your bitcoin so that sounds like ethereum yeah so they In so that's what they yeah so that's what they so they yeah so they so their bridge so botanics labs is um is they're already in testing i already been testing with them um i bridge you know bridging bitcoin and on testnet <clears throat> into their botanics through their spider chain and deploying a smart contract i deployed a smart contract through their through their evm compatible um protocol with with bitcoin btc uh, from testnet so it's a very interesting time right now and i think that could be the, that's how i'm staying in touch with them for the groundwork of people bridging their basically eth uh smart contract out into a main net um of a blockchain launch like startup that would inherently like mine the genesis blocks for 21 million there'd be 42 million supply over time because um you know having having half mine but i would think like it would be resistant against a 51 percent percent attack even having a half mind amount because so many people from all walks could just like you know be get this tokens as the starting point as an erc20 so a lot of people could put a little small amount of eth in some people could put like whatever they want in vc firms could put a stake in um for speculation and for helping in like working capital and by talking with vc firms or whatever and you know basically that spreads it out so once staking happens and like a mining pool happens, you know, it's it's already resistant because it started from, you know, a spread token offering um, that, that would have so many people have. It would be hard to kind of get the power, even with 21 million already circulating upon a Genesis launch to being so people can start staking to begin getting validation rewards to mine the other 21 million out um, over like yeah. what, like, you know, um, but I think the. I think the sharding thing was like the most interesting part to it, try to achieve like a, a higher TPS and uh, Ton's got the highest TPS right now. Um, and their, and their sharding is actually like, just like, it's like sharding shards and like, which, um, I don't know. It's just, I can't even, I started to try and delve into their research, but it's, it's pretty vast. How a Ton blockchain is doing that telegram thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, man. There's a lot there. Just, uh, you know, I mean, if you've looked into BIP 300 and 301, those are uh, Bitcoin improvement protocols. It's for, the, it's for the incorporation of drive chains and side chains. Oh, okay. Basically, to Bitcoin, like uh, um, using a double pegged, you know, uh, pegged in, pegged out Bitcoin. So there's a synthetic Bitcoin on the drive chain that's pegged to the price of Bitcoin. But using the Bitcoin on that drive chain is what you use, but going out and coming in is the same Bitcoin, same price, same everything, right? So it's not a shit coin, it's not an inflationary situation. And the drive chain has to stake the bit has to hold the bitcoin has to back the bitcoin it has on its synthetic chain right that's what i was about to say it's got a volume yeah yeah it has to have the amount or ask like does it have to stake that real bitcoin not more securely but it has to back it okay it has to be there in a wallet that backs it so uh i'm sure there's some there's more intricacies that go into that wallet but yeah uh so leaving yourself open to that ability to be able to incorporate yourself into that sort of situation to write off the side as like a privacy chain that's you know quantum resistant and whatever and all these things may suck itself into the bitcoin protocol you know it might actually just bleed itself in and then there you go you're part of bitcoin so some things can happen whether it remains a drive chain or it gets incorporated into what bitcoin runs and how it runs could be an interesting i mean it's a speculation move but yeah that's where we live we live in a world of speculation here 
this tech moves so fast. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a graveyard of great tech in here that people just don't use that people built. And that's that's unfortunate, but it's what it is. So leaving yourself open to different opportunities in the future is kind of the way to go, you know, so that you have like that possible, okay, you know, yeah, it went up and then now we're down again. But, you know, maybe in the future, this thing could come back or whatever. At least you have that opportunity. So, you know, leaving yourself open to that is good. And then moving with the direct goal at mind, which you have, but giving that direct goal different off ramps that are possibilities in the future that may happen. Just a thought for this kind of tech, because I see it happen every day. It's just great shit that takes years and years for people to even see it. And then finally, you know, but if you can get absorbed into something that's happening at the time because you fit right into that keystone then might as well build yourself for that possibility too. Because that's what it sounds like you're doing to me. That's the only reason I think about it. It sounds very interesting. I'm definitely going to research that. Um, it sounds a little bit, yeah, it sounds like something that could be rolled up with like a ZK. I know they're doing, I know right now what's happening is ZK rollups are building upon Bitcoin. So there is... There so there's one, so um, the founder of the startup, BTC Startup Labs cohort, which I'm a part of, and they, they had, over, oh, like I guess, like over a thousand applicants, and they only chose about 40 of us for this winter cohort. Um, and the last cohort uh, is doing, is called, uh, last one of the last, co I think like two teams like went out of the cohort, and one one's raised like, I don't know, they raised whatever they raised. They raised some millions, and uh, but they, they're called Liquidium. So basically, they're doing lending of like ordinals, like um, Bitcoin frogs are being lended. They've done like over a million volume already in the past like month or something. Like a lease? Yeah, like you're able to oh lend your. God. Yeah, you're able to. Yeah, I've Bitcoin. heard this so much in the past three months. Yeah, so they're like the top one. They're the last cohort uh, team that came out of there. Um, so I don't know if it's the same thing you're hearing, but it's the only one that's really kind of evolving right now. But right now there was another cohort team and they came back and they're doing and there's several different people working on zk rollup but i guess the founder was talking with me because she was like well what can you i was like you know what i really don't one i don't want to do a dex on bitcoin because i one i don't want the sec knocking on my door being like hey you have securities trading on your dex on bitcoin um i really don't want that headache and so that's why i said to him i'm not really interested in building out a dex for bitcoin sorry and also we can't really build out dex right now because again the on-chain there's no on-chain indexing right now so it's like that so it's like without without with using like an xverse wallet for for like off-chain indexing is not you can't do that with a dex um so until like which i guess like domo and these people with like unisat they're building like a smart contract to do on-chain indexing but runes is already going to kind of solve that by having on-chain basically yeah. the on-chain indexing rolled up with the utxo yeah the layer. tech on ordinals is all about who comes first with it yo thinking of that swap thing have you ever used changenow.io no i never heard of it um Check it out. I think yeah. you might find it interesting. All right, change now. Yeah, I'll check that. I'll check that out. I did pin for who has the white paper to the top. If anyone's interested to to read, is my... this yours? Yes, this is. Fuck white yeah, paper. Man. Bookmark right away. Um, yeah. So kind of what I shared here, but more not. No, I want to know paper. when your uh, when your your fair launch pre-sell slash mining happens i mean i could build it out in like three days but i'm not really rushing anything no. yeah well i'm not a whale or anything but i'm just you know yeah. want to know because i think you're a smart guy you, you've done things you know people you do the right stuff you have a good head on your shoulders so i would be one of those people that would be absolutely in not only on the profits but just to see where you go it just sounds interesting Army was like, yeah, I wrote all this stuff, but like, do I want to do X? I can do it. Do I want to go do it? What's though? your follow through with all your other projects? I know you're incorporated with one big one that you've mentioned. 
Uh, I worked, I worked on mainly. I just to be honest, like I um, helped the Tron blockchain start and a little core dev team. I was one of their node builders at a testnet, and we launched into Genesis. And I built a seed to sale ledger DAP on Tron for cannabis for seed to sale growth of cannabis to like for the licensed marketplaces. But um, I did hackathons there and with another developer and basically they just kind of like shut us down because um they want to like do like oh gaming is the thing that makes money and so they would like the gaming things that were actually the like things. Some, God, the gaming things well That's i mean so i love video gaming but like some of these people it's not it's not the video games themselves it's like they were trash anyways but it's actually the people who were like yeah we're gonna do this building a video game and they were like known scammers <laughs> like they were like just known scammers like and then being like we're doing this and they would get a hackathon and it would ignore the actual like industry utility that would have a real world stance which would be you know a seed to sale ledgering for a multi-million dollar marketplace of licensed medical cannabis um whether because it's not federally legal or whatever why they why we didn't win hack hackathon bounty awards there like after me doing two seasons of it I kind of like walked away from Tron blockchain and my grandmother passed away. So I was like kind of distraught there. And I walked away from out of like a trauma stance. Um, and I went up, I went back over to Ethereum. Um, I actually kind of did nothing. Actually, you know what? I took this when safe moon scam launched, I, I ripped their contract apart. Cause it was kind of like, you know, it, it was kind of a little weak. Like they couldn't upgrade routers to like new V2, V3 routers of pancake swap. And so, um, myself and um, a friend, we ripped their contract apart and integrated the ability to upgrade routers um, from like different routers through through uh, pointing the contract at a new router of instead of being stuck to V1 on PancakeSwap, you could point it to V2 and a V3, blah, blah, blah. And so a bunch of tokens started using that crap. And, and I'm sure probably like 99% of them were just scam, pump and dump, you know, trash tokens um, and, B, and BNB chain. <clears throat> So then I kind of just went out of there and went back to ETH. Um, I was running a retail business before COVID hit, had to shut it down, um, unfortunately. And in just some of my local area. And um, so I kind of jumped on a project that was noted in the Rolling Stone al- alongside Basie, which was um, like a like a comic lore thing. I think the like a women in Web three led yeah comic lore. I did their contract. I did the UXAI. I think they're making their comics still and whatever it is. Um, and then I saw DAOs like the failures of DAOs as far as like you know like proof pass with Moonbirds like how it's like <laughs> like they're they're kind of like weak points and stuff. So I I thought maybe do DAO and um so I started doing like manga art and pixel art because as an artist part and animated pixel art and just kind of floated around um i was running chillier you know art spaces for independent artists to come up a lot of them were tezos artists um so they were just sharing art and and whatnot and i was doing those spaces and uh yeah i kind of basically just really thought of um i, I heard of bitcoin what's up pulse former um i'll bring it up here so yeah i just uh, i saw btc startup labs and i saw ordinals and i did some i made the like a brc20 token for fun like yule for no absolutely no reason at all but for winter solstice for good tidings which no one really cared about so it just sits there and anyone can like mine the token or mint the token or whatever it is uh, as a BRC20 still. And I threw away the keys to the wall. I was like, uh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> I just threw away. Anyone can mint this token. Here's Yule for good tidings. And it's still sitting there on Unisat or whatever, or inscribed to the like, really early inscription parts or whatever. Um, and then I saw BTC Startup Labs and started put forth like an inscription tool, which we're doing demo day on March 15th. And we're, um, but otherwise in the past, I've kind of even shifted away from that when I started was like looking at quantum things. And I said, well, I'll put it together a a white paper here for um, what I've been wanting to do anyways, since I got involved in Tron and the problem with Tron is delegated proof of stake is susceptible to bribery. 
and me running one of the the delegate nodes at the time i couldn't be bribed by millionaires and stuff because i wanted to do charitable work with my node and by basically take all the block rewards from the node and the delegate the people who freeze their tron and vote for my delegate node all the block rewards would go um minus one percent for the server cost itself would all go to um charitable works around the world and so that didn't fly with anyone <laughs> because they're all <laughs> because they're all like greedy people and they want and they're they bought they bribed like the biggest biggest node stakers there at the time alongside myself um and there are genuine people who participated with me but then like the the money talk on the way and so they bribe people saying you're gonna take you know like maybe like 10 20, you know 15 percent block rewards for yourself and your team but we're gonna put our five million ten million dollars into your into your node your delegate node and you're gonna give us 99 percent of and this was like backroom talk and they're, you're gonna give us 99 percent of the block rewards basically right and so they're making all this money from tron and then binance stepped in and then like you know all these other people stepped in and binance wanted to launch his chain so it put a chokehold bottleneck on tron by being the lo largest you know st uh delegate stakeholder node on the network and basically just heavily kept shorting it down so bnb grow grew in value and tron has just sat at 10 cents it did a pump to 30 cents but now it's been sitting at 10 cents for like four or five years never really moved so um, mad sure short you... pressure on it huh yeah, so that's the failure of delegated proof of stake model, DPOS, DPOS. Um, <laughs> it's just highly susceptible to bribery. Get um, that hill really greasy. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> um, and um, whether it was planned and whether Justin Sun, you know, I don't know, who knows? Those things like I toured around with Justin for a bit and like, um, you know, nice guy and everything, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, I just kind of, left to back to ETH because it was a stronger chain. And we were talking about, it was still proof of work, but I was like, we were already talking like four years ago for Tron, I mean, uh, Ethereum to switch to proof of stake. And it took four, it was supposed to happen in like, I think like a year and a half or two years. And it wound up taking about like four, four and a half years for it to actually happen here. Oh, um, it's still not even done. Yeah, they want to do, yeah, they're doing these upgrade, other upgrades, but, um, um, which I, again, like I've kind of like fallen out, I've stopped like kind of paying and you attention. you think Bitcoin's slow. Ethereum yeah. just is fucking slow. Well, we were supposed to solve the, the, the fees with these migrations and the fees are actually even more. Like it's almost like it's not, it's just exactly. a, terrible. Huh? It's on ETH. Maybe burning, but the fees are still more. Well, yeah, it is burning more, but uh, Vitalik was thinking about putting a cap. I heard maybe in theory on the supply of Ethereum, which is kind of yeah. a little bit bullish there, but, um. So Everybody right should yeah. compare Bitcoin to Ethereum at this point because Ethereum is finally a little bit of age where it has some pubic hair on its fucking pelvic bone. Yeah. Don't so, get me going on Solana, though. I, I can't oh listen God. to that stuff. The man. only thing Solana is good for is shit coining. Yeah, it's Gross. just trash. Um, Transaction fees are so low. Everything is so easy. I, I feel the wallet's good for it. It's perfect. I, I found it, I laughed because Benji said like, they just reset their chain when it broke. I knew it broke, but I didn't know he just, re they just like reset it to zero, which is No, they fully... just unplug it and plug it back. <laughs> That's like, what? Like you just, yeah, just plug it. Uh, yeah, unplug it and plug it back in. Like, like, um. Yeah, it's like yeah, a cable company it. when you call because there's a problem and they're like, have you unplugged it and plugged it back in? So Wait you have a problem, seconds. so unplug the whole chain again. <laughs> Sir, what's oh, up, Bulls? I said, like, have you plugged it or put, or you said, have you plugged it or plugged it back in? And I said, uh, like, and have you waited 10 seconds? Like, you know what, you know, like how, uh, how like normally how it says, Comcast like, cast used to do. Yeah, yeah is the router like blinking? Is, a, <laughs> is, is the router like blinking still? Is yeah. it still a green color now? Okay, we can probably, yeah. we're probably back on fetching blocks again. <laughs> From a zero point, yeah, wow, yeah, that was amazing. That's amazing that I didn't know that. Never heard that, of that before. Scary. <laughs> oh man, wow, yeah. Um, so I think because of these weak points, um, I'm not saying I still think Bitcoin can has some really strong points. Um, and and uh, and with what's going on with it is very interesting to me. I love it as an OG chain. I, I just I don't know. I've been thinking for the past four years of like, since I saw Tron, I was just like, I really just want to start a blockchain, but I didn't really see the vision until like the past, you know, several months here. 
And it took me all this time to find a vision like that. So, well, if you find it, it makes sense. Go for it. So you're. Hi, I'm Paul Former, by the way. I'm following Benji around. Uh, I heard you say like you're an artist or something. Yeah, uh, artist, yeah, right. Yeah, I love doing art. Basically, de-stressing, de-stressing thing. But yeah, nice. Never really made money at it, but and half my stuff I don't ever share anywhere. That's all. But yeah, man, how you doing? Uh, just floating around, man. Just uh, got done arguing with like three Karens, so that was fun. But uh, post chain. That's the. That's the. That's um. God, what's his name? Richard Hart. Hart. Richard Hart. Yeah. Yes, sir. I've watched some videos with him and. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto himself. I wish. That was, did he say that? He can, Wait, no, see if that? he can move those twenty Bitcoin. Oh, did he say his? No, he said that. Uh, no, yeah. I mean he never claimed to be Satoshi. No, he didn't. No, I'm just oh, okay. I was gonna say, but if he was, no, that's the guy or from what? BS, like... It's the guy from BSV. What's his name? Fucking. Uh, uh, yeah, the I'm guy that claims he's too. Satoshi. Uh, yeah. Oh, so... okay. Yeah, Richard called him out like face to face or something during like. Yeah, uh, but, uh, but what's his name? He was he was just on call in our cohort the other day oh, through man, BSV. Killing me. Um, Roger, Roger. No, it's not Roger Ver. It's not Roger. No, it's um, not. That's BCH. That's B trash. Um, I'll I'll find it because BSV. BSV. Oh, man, he was just he was just talking with us the other this past week. I can't recall his name, so I don't know. It is Craig Wright. Craig Wright. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I don't Jesus, know how we didn't think about it. Yeah, there it is. It's it's this late at night. Well, it's four in the morning for me, but um, yeah, Craig Wright. Man. This fucking guy. Yeah, he was talking with us the other day, which it kind of like went in one ear out the other. I don't know exactly yeah. what he said. I was kind of busy. He's, but... he's a psychopath, narcissist. Yep. I heard I heard Jimmy Song and Roger Ver like argue with each other about like which chain's better and stuff, and like it was like it was so unprofessional. That was this was years ago, but it was like oh, it gets ugly. Yeah. It, it was it was like a it was like a your mom's a slut. Fuck was, like, you. Yeah, like a scratch. Yeah, it was like it's such like a. <laughs> oh man, it was embarrassing for any professional industry Wall Street person to like kind of be like, "Oh, this is a, I'll watch this to see, you know, what's going on." And what, <laughs> like you know, in in on behalf, they're they're on a yacht, you know, of course, like in like their swim trunks, you know. Uh-huh. Tough life. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know those yachts. It's a hard life to live. <laughs> Uh, what's the thing about the guy from Cardano? Oh fuck! What is what? There's some story about this guy. Why can't I remember it? It's so good. Cardano has come a long way. I will say that. I'm surprised, but it's, it's cool, I guess. It's gonna drive me crazy too. I put all my Doge in like a when I first had I had like a bunch of Doge and I put in a Doge light wallet and then they stopped doing the Doge client for the light wallet and I lost all my Charles Doge. Charles Hoskinson. Yes, there's a story about this guy. Oh yeah. That I'm sorry he left, to hear that he, part. He, well Benji and I were talking about it. he left ETH, which I remember, I vaguely remember that. I don't know why. I don't know, I vaguely remember it, but he was involved in ETH or something. Yeah, but there's some fucked up story. God, why can't it why can't I remember what the fuck it is? It's so funny. It's just been years since I've thought about it. Um, so you a Pulse Maxi? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. I heard people tried to bridge their tokens and got, like, stuck. A lot of tokens just, like, disappeared or well, on, the, on the bridge. No, or something. What, <laughs> what happens is, um, let's say you take USDC and you send it over the bridge. Disappears. Um, no, it gets a different contract address. So people try to go looking for the original USDC contract address, which it does exist over on Pulse Chain because hard fork. Um, yeah. But they're they they're just not looking at the right or looking for the right contract address. Yeah. Oh, Pulse Chain uh, hard forks from ETH. Is that what I it is? grabbed? Yeah. I grabbed all okay. my. I had a grip of Pepe, the six nine contract, and when Hex launched pulse chain i went over there and sold it all 
Nice. <laughs> and then brought it back over to Eve. Why did hey, it prompt or something? We did that on purpose, bro. We were trying to uh, create that was volume. our way of trying to drive adoption. So yeah. a lot of us bought up. So when Pulse Train launched, there's a market maker bot that went and took liquidity out of uh, un- all the other dexes and put it into PulseX. So there's like a shit ton of Pepe there. Well, people that didn't have it bought up a bunch of it and, uh, you know, put it into liquidity, added liquidity with it. And then we started advertising it. And then all y'all came over and dumped it on us. It left. <laughs> <laughs> I was like day two. Oh, uh, dude, it was so funny. I, uh, I remember uh, when once Rich... I saw that hack, I was like, oh, it's over. <laughs> Let me go do this real quick. Which hack? Oh, the that selling bridge. Pepe. I was scared or, to bridge uh, anything over there because I thought I was, I, some people were saying things were disappearing, whether I was flat or not. Well, like if, it was you it over to, if you brought it over to ETH, it, it called itself a copy. If you brought Pepe over, if you brought uh, Weth over, it was a copy Weth. But if you brought yeah. USDT over, it wasn't. It's referred to as like USDC from Ethereum or exactly. Pepe from Ethereum, right? It, your Pepe goes into the bridge on the Ethereum side, and on the Pulse, tri- Pulse Chain side, the bridge poops out uh, mints USDC Some paper from Ethereum, shit. right? Yeah. So, um, well, but USDT I remember T didn't. I remember Richard Hart some years ago. I don't know how long ago. Is don't quote me on this, but when he launched the hex, I thought I'm pretty sure he launched this in ERC twenty at first. I thought. Yeah, Hex is an ERC. He did. It yeah, is a complete okay. copy of, of the right. theory. Yeah. Well, okay. Does it has no like has no like higher TPS or anything? Is there anything improved or is it just? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of improvement. Of, there has been. Oh, okay. I have. Yeah. I mean, research. It's it. basically I'm, a like, hard fork of Ethereum and then improved with yep. what they call an improvements. <laughs> Home improvements for Hex. I hey, mean, um, okay. anything's anything's an improvement to a broken foundation called Ethereum. Yeah, that's true. Central. Probably that the most notable thing piece of shit. is uh, the gas fees, and that was okay. because okay. Of the, there's a million times more pulse than there is Ethereum. Oh. Right? That's probably one of the biggest things. But yes, they did they did make a lot of improvements. Did you uh, sacrifice your hex? Not all of it, but yeah, I sacrificed for pulse chain and pulse X, Yeah. All right. I've been interesting, here. interesting guy. Um, I, I didn't know where he was going with it for the longest time. I had the opportunity to, to get his initial tokens when I was, you know, during that time. And I just was like, I just don't. I, one, one, he was sitting in like a chair with like skulls and like big candles around him and yeah. <laughs> like red velvet <laughs> and like red velvet. So I think that kind of turned me off. As like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he does turn off a lot of people with that. Um, I'm going to take your money. Yeah, and my soul, and my soul along with it, or something. Like <laughs> yeah, like I don't blame it. Like I don't blame people's perspective on that at all. Me, I personally, I love it. Right, I love the. Uh, I no don't doubt. know. No, uh, no, that's cool. That's cool. It's basically yeah, a meme. Right? It's yeah, a it's meme a meme of thing. Ethereum. It's a meme of Ethereum. It's just <laughs> yeah. like and he like, kind of launched it the same way, but not on Bitcoin, but through ETH. He copied ETH completely, and yep, you know, did Hold the same. Project. Yeah. Right. And uh, it's just a better doge. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty nice. Wait, is it proof of stake or proof of work? Did he proof keep the of proof, of stake, proof, proof of stake proof of stake model? Okay. All right. Yeah, I didn't you know can, he went to the proof of work. They'll be able model, but... any like upgrades that Ethereum has, yeah. they can they can just put that on they can just apply it to pulse chain. Yeah, and there's right. maybe faster. Yeah, they just forked yep. the EVM. They're gonna take all the EVM. They're just gonna update their Git repos. Yeah. Yep. The EVM. They're gonna do a my sequel, but so that's where I was kind of arguing, like, <laughs> and, and like that's that's where I was I was in all honesty, like, God willing, is to still do a fork of VVM for what I'm putting forth, but that um into like a Kecknum KVM is again that's just it. It's like key encryption key of the hashing of and unwrapping of of privacy keys, and that's the difference uh, for deployments of contracts on a on the what I'm proposing as a KVM uh, compatible with EVM. So, yeah. Hey, man. 
I mean, it's passion it's, about it, pursue it, right? Yeah. That's the vision. That's the you vision. You create something fucking amazing, right? I just <clears> like. <throat> the, I would just like the 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 aspect of needing of like. That's where I think like you know working capital is not to go on vacation. It's to <laughs> it's to it's to have engineers uh, for Im- implications of sharding. So, uh, yeah. which means you must pay them. Yes, so that they can go on vacation after they're done coding. Right. At least once a year. Yes, they get. Um, I got my own like team of devs, like myself, and uh, <laughs> my whole team of devs, like myself. <laughs> no, like, like I like. We're building shit on Pulse Chain, right? I got a team of devs, and we built shit, right? We have. That's cool. Yeah, and uh, dude, these guys are. I don't know how they consider the computer like that. And like, I, I don't know. I've never, I'll never be able to code, but like, they're like wizards, man. You just say, Hey, I wanted to do this. And they're like, okay. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to see the amount of talent that's here. And I, I work with this guy from, web two that's got a real estate company and he's a you know multi-million dollar holder of a bunch of different things hundreds of millions and uh, he wants to build this whole new you know website type thing for real estate for developers and real estate agents and brokers and maintenance people and everyone to be able to get on there and do things and make things happen because it's a clusterfuck to find people to do things right so in all the different states and countries you're in and he wants to incorporate crypto into it for tipping mechanisms at this point so he doesn't you know have any legal issues so if people want to you know thanks for doing this thing and want to tip somebody he wants to incorporate you know the wallet connect and the ability to connect that wallet to someone else that may have started their account that said yeah i have a wallet for that here send it to this and the little that they know of what's going on over here like that is a huge deal to him is to have that in there that's so easy yeah <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, but they well, think it's I, this cool, grand, man. <laughs> big, beautiful, amazing golden coin at the end of the road. It's like, bro, that's like the very beginning of the road. You have no idea. Yeah. So, so, oh, yeah. You know, having somebody that's capable of doing those things and building a proper team that have those capabilities. Yeah. And you understand the format and the way that a certain production of 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 a project needs to go. Not a project manager, but to understand the footsteps so people don't get on left hand turns over here to fix that. But this guy over here is on a right hand turn to fix it. But you're like, no, 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 wait. You guys are. It's like herding cats sometimes to keep people like focused on the one thing, so they don't try to fix something that's not even an issue yet like you know work one step at a time and get it done because some of these people are wizards but they stew a brew that is just fucking yo chill you know like slow slow the fuck down for a minute you're moving too fast and if you want to make money move slower a little bit because these people don't know what the fuck they're getting into and they think this is amazing so make a little bit of dough on the side at the same time right you don't need to build the world for them in seven days six yeah i think a lot, i think a lot i think a lot of people are scared to not have like this like hard cap mentality or like soft cap or something at least as far as like uh towards like building with it with a working capital and i guess and and i was kind of like in that same boat until recently uh, they basically said like, and like all these VC like million, multi million people, and like you know Charlie Lee's brother Bobby Lee was on call and stuff, and they basically were telling me and and some other cohort people they're just saying, um, yeah, raise more capital than you need because it's better to have more capital than you need 
and and inhabit there as a safety net and can and, and to build your protocol and then you can you know put bounties out with your with your overhead capital and continue like in a larger marketing budget to have more um angel users of, of what you're building of what you built so I, I guess that's something i've kind of changed mentality like okay i i don't I, I feel like at first i thought like well that's greedy but now i feel like i see the logic in that because you can hire more team and you can support more livelihoods and to pay their families and, and to feed their families while they help build out something better and more efficient and maybe one of those people are like really really brilliant and actually bring something good to the table whereas if, if you didn't have like a, like oh i raised more capital than we needed um yeah okay great and, then fine <clears throat> then we're doing more good in the world and we can build yeah, more wells we can build more wells really, like benji said or something yeah and i wouldn't be helping this guy if i didn't think he had a, a pretty cool idea that people aren't incorporating in day-to-day -day life it you sounds know, I, I understand the logic of it yeah i do it makes sense especially and, for the real estate you know, he's he's a, a, a uber wealthy guy that also has a vision for something interesting that incorporates the world that we live in. So if he yeah. wants it, why not give it to him? I mean, it's, yeah, it, who knows what could happen? It's just funny. He has he has that innocent stance of like, well, it connect and like all these. Yeah, but all <laughs> he wants is Doge. You know uh, what I yeah. mean? He's even okay. having a problem timing the the fucking price from USD to ETH to be able to time a mint for a certain, uh, if oh, you want to mint about... this certain token. Uh, I don't think uh, about that shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like that simple shit, bro. That's like basic. It's not even an Oracle. It's just a fucking, I don't even think of like, I don't even think of the Pointer. cost of Bitcoin because one Bitcoin's one Bitcoin, one ETH is one ETH. So like if there's ETH equity capital there for working capital, like the developers and team oh, and, and marketing is like still one ETH is one ETH. It's not oh, like we're yeah. not, we're not thinking I about agree the, with that too. There's but government what he's value to about it. about is real world people saying, I want to tip this guy, you know, 10 right. bucks, or I yeah. want to do this for this person for a hundred bucks. And they say a hundred dollars in Doge, but, then nah. they want to be able to just say that. And it incorporates right. the difference in price to the Doge at the moment to send it to the wallet. Oh, right. God. Yeah. So it's yeah. just simple shit. It's like basic stuff, but they don't understand that. Well, so it's what what he should invest into, which we guessed a lot. What he should team. invest into is a team, of people that can do it. Right. And and also to to build a stable coin on Doge through a Dogeinal. <laughs> like to the dollar. Is what That's I, have to what say. I already told him that. <laughs> I told him that like a month ago. Well, he he do very well. I can tell you what stablecoin is a, uh, you know, it's, we're it's it's something that several protocols are looking to do on yeah. Bitcoin right now. Um, it's it's there it's definitely, and there and the you know the person who comes out with the stablecoin on Bitcoin is going to be the the next sliced bread for the stablecoin. So yeah, it's just I, I there are there's certain teams doing it, and it's one one actually tell me about the cohort. it. He's like, yep, stablecoin. So. You all want to hear something crazy? Yes. The uh, yes. So yeah. all the stables got copied on Pulse yep. Chain, and there is a sub community that thinks that Dai, the copy of Dai, the worthless, valueless copy of Dai, is going to be a dollar and peg there. Oh, DAI. Yeah. I don't even know what it is. I I don't. I know. I, I, I forgot what it is. It's a fake stable. Is it? Okay. They, they think that they also think that I'm going to include USDC and USDT in this as well. They also think that those are going to peg to a dollar. Um, how crazy is that? I don't believe it. By the way, without a backing, um, you know yep. they got they got to work around some like pegged APIs or something. But that's kind of a little shady. But um, if they have the actual backing, which I don't, I don't know. Yeah, how are you going to bridge something without? staking it on the other bridge that's actually liquid into like a like a, a pork chop you were talking about this actually there's a having bitcoin staked um man my mind's kind of fried by now well maybe i should be more specific they think that the price is going to appreciate 
Oh, I don't know. To a dollar. <laughs> because it's there, it has value, right? Or it has a number, right? They think it's going to appreciate to a dollar and then state it. And they it's, uh... somebody launching like a hundred different contracts in a month. Yeah. I feel stupid at times because I'm like, die? Like, what's die? And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, die. And I'm like, I just don't. It doesn't make you stupid. Like yeah, it just yeah, it just, your, your brain's thinking too fast. Yeah, my 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 attention's like under a rock. I feel that. It's almost like four thirty here in the morning too. Yeah, I want to hear a fucked up story. Um, uh, this is a recorded space, so you know, just be okay. mindful. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's not. It's something funny that happened today at my uh, sister in law's wedding. So, uh, sure, yeah. I guess. I was helping her get into the car so they could drive off from their wedding, you know, like at the end of the wedding or whatever. Oh, that's cute. Cool. Man. And I was kind of like holding the her wedding dress, right? Like the back of it because it was rainy outside. And uh, so she gets in the car and I go, do you want me to stuff the, do you want me to stuff you in the front or the back? Yeah, that don't sound right. <laughs> What's up? That don't sound right. Yeah, I was referring to like all the extra dress, right? Yep. From the yeah, yeah, dress. yeah. But like after I said that, like the next sentence that came out of my mouth, like immediately was like, I did not mean to say it like that. It was funny. I don't know. It was funny. I feel like I should like rug this space now. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, if you do. Uh... So what do you? Let me let me ask this though. Actually, I am getting pretty tired and probably need to get some rest. Um, this was a cool session. Uh, oh yeah. Well, we can keep this going. Um, I mean, I'm but... tired myself. Yeah. Do you do you want do you want to reshare your pork chop rugged out a little bit? Do you want to reshare that? Yeah. Sorry about that. My phone died. Because uh. It's up for you, man. His sister got married today. His sister got married? Yeah. Oh, you want me to tell the joke again? Oh, I don't know. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't so know I if I want you to, but I was just joke. saying it's it's open ended if you if you'd like to. I want a joke. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. I can't. I, I, got, okay. I got a riddle after. How about that? I got a all right, all right, all right. So it was wet and rainy outside, and I was holding holding the bride's gown right to keep it from like getting wet on the ground while she was exiting the wedding to go into her car to uh uh to like drive off with her, her new husband right well i was helping her get in the car and i go which uh do you want me to stuff you in the front or the back <laughs> like <laughs> refer like right in front of her and her new husband and like I was like, I like that. I was like, I did not mean to say it like that. I was referring to your dress, like you, because there's just right so much you, dress. Right after you said, "Do you want me to stuff you in the front or the back?" You should have said, "Pause." <laughs> I should have. Dude, that would have been so good. <laughs> Pause. And then you drank too much champagne, then, right? A couple of minutes later, her, uh, her, I don't know. Apparently, her boob slipped. I didn't see anything. But I was facing their direction, but I didn't I didn't see nothing, right? But the second she said that, like I was looking at him and I was like, uh, oh, and I turned around, and I was like, that's a nice Chevy. And just like pointed <laughs> at it. <laughs> so I think I saved myself on that one. Oh man. Yeah, today was wild. What a mess. Well, congratulations, man. Yeah. Hey, it's it's great. Her husband's a, a really good guy. So I'm happy for him. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I got I got a riddle. Um, there's a there's a boat full of people, but there's not one single person on board. How is that? There's a boat full yeah, of people, but again? there's not one single person on board. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's not one single person on board because there's a lot of people. Is that it? Is that the answer? Well, no, because there's still people on board the boat. Yeah, so how's there's one but single how, but person? how is it that there's... Uh, but how is there... But how is there not only one single person on board? That's the, that's the riddle. You're answering my question. 
How is there well, you're... one single person on board when there's many people on board? No, I mean like I mean like this. There's a boat full of people, but at the same time, there's no one on board because there's not one single person on board. Kind of thing. Like kind of like think about it like that. Like how can there be people on board but still not one single person on board at the same time? What's the, what's the Cuz you're saying there's no there's no if one the, on board. If the word but board, that's not the, but that's not the, that's, if, you're saying there's no one on board, if, but that's not the if answer. If the word riddle. board means the same thing in both contexts, does, yeah. then there is no riddle. Well, you're saying there's 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 no one person on board because there's a bunch of people on board, but that's still not the answer to the riddle. I'm just saying. I don't know, man. I even asked ChatGPT. <laughs> Nice. What's this day? I, 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 you just broke Chappy DBT. It's going to be down for like weeks now, right? Yep. No, uh, um, it, because it's a all... similar answer to what Porkchop said. Okay, so, so do y'all want the answer? Sure. Okay, because everyone on board are all couples. Yeah, but to make a couple, you um, have to have a single. No, there's no singles. So everyone's like either married or in a relationship with each other. Yeah, they're all couples. There's no singles. But individually, they're still all singles. They die individually. But that's the riddle because, I, I, I mean, is it inten- does it intentionally not use the word individual? Well, here, here in the lifetime, not on the deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. What if one of the couples is fucking another one of the couples in the other room? And that, now oh, well. that knocks the ratio off. Then that's called that's called a swinger oh, party. <laughs> no, because yeah. both of them have to be doing it. <laughs> then there's there's swinger couples. There's one cheater out of the whole bunch. Yeah, if it's not consensual, yeah. No, it's uh, consensual. It's just one cheater. Just one couple breaking it. Uh, Humans are well, fallible. So are dolphins. Sure. And maybe penguins. Okay, then, all right, if they're lobsters or penguins, I'm there with you. So it's, uh, yeah, it's like 4.30. I started the space at 5.55 p.m. That's Jesus. almost like rolling on, man. Almost Sorry, rolling man. on 12 hours. Holy shit. I think he was trying to get out of here when I came in. No, oh, I, I didn't, I didn't ever thought anything. I was just kind of like, well, actually, I appreciate our talks. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. It was um, nice to come into a space and not get shit on for the chain I like. Yeah, whatever. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't. I, I just kind of. Um, It's really cool that it's doing this thing. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, Richard Hart is a total douche. I agree. <laughs> but I'm not going to over personalities, right? Well, I try to separate the man from the tech. Right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. You know, I can admit that people hate Richard Hart, but I can still like the tech. You know, if you so, like Ethereum, you should like the tech. I mean, it's the same thing. You know? <laughs> it's cheaper, you know. That's right. So, but I hey, mean, you know, hopefully you're holding some more spaces. I gave you all some follows. Uh, it's a good conversation. Yeah, man. I don't Especially know what's going on. It's like getting yelled at by Karens. So you know, uh, I don't know what's going on. It's like I'm not. I'm not seeing follows. I got one. Oh, here we go. I can actually go go to the profile, but my notifications haven't been telling me like someone follows. Yeah, follow you too, Park Chat. Um, and uh, John Carby, Jonah Carby. What's good, creative person? Yeah, Jonah's good people. Cool. Hell yeah! All right, I'm gonna skate on out, guys. Hopefully, I'll see y'all around. Cheers, man. Yeah, I'll be running space here. Uh, I do push this up onto YouTube. Um, format. Sometimes I'm right. live, sometimes I'm live streaming the video. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. I'm like doing our, our building or something. On yeah. Twitch on Twitch in here, and then it goes up to YouTube. But I think just the recording will be on YouTube and Keck Experience on my YouTube. If anyone cares, uh, if you if you want to object, I'll take. I won't. I'll I'll block it out or edit it. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. Uh, it's all right, man. I don't care. Makes for good. What'd you say? I'm gonna hit your YouTube real quick. Uh, what is it? 
Uh, it's in my, oh, yeah, I took my link tree out of here. Uh, it's just youtube.com forward slash Kintoshi, K I N T O S H I. I do, I like wake up and I'll do like, I'll like read blockchain news, you know, here and there in the mornings when I can. I put it up. Yeah, like, um, for what's new, like, uh, and like blockchain NFT and a crypto piece of news and then a tech piece like of news. Got like uh, koi fish? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. Nice. See you around. All right, guys. Cheers, mate. Stay safe. Yep. Yeah, man, good night. All right, Keck. Get some sleep. Yeah, Keep I'm going to put some... Yeah, hey, man, I appreciate your talks. God bless your kind heart. I'm going to put some binaural beats on. I think Benji's sleeping. Yeah. I'm going to kick out. Cheers, mate. Stay safe. All right, brother.